had the world is valuable. And Americans in particular, these people are coming because they were fear of contagion by the COVID virus or because they didn't have it. In any case, small businesses are gone. Probably 80% of all small businesses will not be open because the landlords are not giving a grace period of any more criminal minutes. The salaries of people, and they're barely getting by with the salaries that they had. What are you going to buy food with? And the COVID virus is not covered. Treatment um, under the end of these current medical plans, so you're going to go bankrupt. So you can realistically expect greater bankruptcies than any time in American history, probably more bankruptcies this coming year than the last 30 years combined.
Morning. Hello. You've got to unmute your audio or join the audio. So I'm getting ready for the meeting. Um, I'm gonna just go about my business and if you could turn your audio out and let me know, Randall, who you are. Oh, okay. So Curtis. No audio. Oh, so your audio is on, but I don't see any video. And you've identified yourself as Marilyn. If you might want to fix that. Does anyone have any audio going? It'd be nice to say hello.
Hey, Curtis. Can't hear you at all. No, I can't see you. No, I can see you. Oh, God. Something's actually working. Okay, cool. Yeah, fine. Okay. Let me turn it off. Though. Okay. Ah, I see your whiteboard. Wood World Wife. Okay, you might want to cover that up. <laughs> okay, it looks like you deliberately muted now. I don't know who Randall is, and Randall is not responding, so it's your job to figure out who he is. Oh. Are you going to be using Ubuntu? No. I, I, headphones get rid of headphones make it really simple and you don't have to worry too much about feedback. Oh my God, what the heck can I do? Usually you have multiple sources of, do you have multiple? Yeah, you have, you have another device, your Curtis Bolton device and then the Maryland. So you're logged in twice. So one of those, I'm guessing both of those have the speakers turned on. So if you could turn the volume down on one of them. Preferably the one that doesn't, where you're not going to use the microphone. You're muted. I can't hear you. No. Is that better? Yeah, when you unmute. Do you, um, okay, so the, that's interesting, that spelling of Maryland. That's just an, just an alternative. It's just pronounced like Maryland, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm using my okay. wife. I'm gonna admit Kevin. I don't know who Kevin is, but here, here he comes. See, I didn't. Morning, Kevin. You got to tell me who you want to be, who you want to be today. Do you want to be the Maryland or do you want to be Curtis Bolton? Which one should I make host, uh, co-host? Curtis. Okay. But I, uh, why do I, hmm. okay. I can do it on this one then. I, mean, I think I could make both of them co host if you want. It's interesting, these people that are joining. I think what most people, oh no, Kevin's got his microphone turned on. I think he's got, I think he's got his video camera with a black with some tape over it because it's just black but it's turned on mm -hmm. i don't know who he is we should have some preferred etiquette people you guys could just tell us who you are it'd be nice Oh, I hear a keyboard. 
Yeah, I'm trying to chat with Randall. Okay. Except the keyboard isn't working. What the heck's going on? Is it a Bluetooth keyboard? No. It's a direct connection. <sighs> okay. Yeah, just take your obviously just take, take your time and relax. We've got time. Me off though. Hmm. At least with me, it helps. Just, just, oh, wait a minute. Just slow way wait, down. Wait, wait, wait. I know what's going on. So, somebody did something. Somebody just left, or somebody came in. Kevin's gone. Kevin left. Okay. Got bored. Now it's working. I gotta look at the right device and the right keyboard. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember when I used to have multiple keyboards and you're typing and you're thinking, why isn't this working? You're actually on the wrong computer. I know. Not a good feeling. So I'm gonna ask you to, when you admit people, please tell them to sign in, but Ask me about what that means when you're more relaxed. No. I'm not exactly sure what to ask them. It's like, what's your last name? <laughs> Seems a bit. How did you find out about the meeting? Oh. Um, you know, just, God, I just, just make conversation. Oh no, wait, I see what you're saying. You can't talk to them. What I think you should do is open up uh, the equivalent of notepad, you know, an editor and, and type in some generic questions because you're just going to have to chat with them. Well, I've, 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 I'm in, I've got a chat started with Randall, but I don't know what to say. <clears throat> um, yeah. How did you? Um, well, I'm assuming he got the email. It's well, oh, no, you need to get them to do some sort of story. They could be, yeah, I guess that's a good question. What do you want to uh, ask them? Um, well, how about basics? Um, what's your full name and your uh, email addre address? And would you please sign in? Yeah, your full your full full name. Okay. No That's the part I don't have is the sign in. Where the heck do they sign in? Okay. So you ready? Uh, yeah. So I'm gonna. Sh okay, you got another one. Oh, cool, Julie. Let her in. The name is good. Just let her in. We can say hello. Or should I let her in? I can let her in. Okay. I don't have her. Oh, I made you co-host Curtis Bolton. All I'm, I've got is I'm Curtis Bolton. Her in. Okay. Curtis Bolton is a co-host, so you but, should have you should have the right. Julie, but if I look at but if look at my participants, well, not anymore. You don't have her, but yeah, you have to look at participants. Yeah. But it, it wouldn't allow me to to let her in, whereas last night I did have something come up that would. Uh, may, oh, I'll bet you I know what it is. It's because I was looking at the wrong one for participants. That's why. Okay. So, Julie, can you join <laughs> via audio so we can just talk briefly?
Yeah, this seems to be a pattern. People join and then they don't, we don't hear their audio at all because they, they're not used to Zoom. Yeah. <clears throat> they have to click um, something to indicate, oh, okay. Or maybe they have sound problems on their device. Oh, cool. So we can see you now, Julie, but we, yeah. <laughs> Just can't hear you. You can, uh, you can chat if you want to chat. But basically, we're still just getting ready. So uh, we have a sign-in sheet. Yeah, we're trying to work out a routine. Uh, so this is all back-end stuff, Julie. But yeah, I really um, met Paul Cienfuegos and I'm all in favor of the community rights stuff. It's awesome. So I'm I'm working on the voter list stuff. Oh, are you ready for me to see my screen? Or do you want me to? Oh, you're talking to me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I sent it. Oh, I turned on the. Oh, oh, Julie says she turned on the mic, but it didn't work. Yeah, that's like uh, everybody has trouble with our audio. It's just, that's just normal. It takes six months to learn how to troubleshoot all the different problems. If you're on <laughs> Windows, um, now if you're on Windows, go down into where you search for things in Windows and search for sound and you might be able to figure that out. Maybe you just have to turn your volume up. Or, um, but yeah, we almost need one person just to help people with audio. Um, okay, so let me show you. Can you can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. So I go to the live website. Do you see this this button here? Spring spring get. Okay, you gotta let somebody in. Uh, okay. Who is it? Monty. Oh, cool. Okay, um. Monty, be careful your audio. He's coming in and I don't hear him. I don't hear you, Monty. So I'll share my screen again. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so this is the front page of the website. Okay. So you got to think of some language to explain what these things are. Um, they call them a top nav and nation builder, but I don't know. They're just buttons to me. They're buttons up at the right. top. So there's a button that says spring gathering. And then there's a drop down there. And the first drop down just says spring gathering again. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're not looking though. I can see. I'm writing it down. Oh, I see your eyes. I'm wondering. Yeah, see the. Okay. Drop. And then you, so it's like a stutter. So the first drop down is Spring Gathering 2020. So you click on that. And then, mm -hmm. believe me, we're just winging this. I, I've never done this before. Yeah. Um, then. I think uh, I heard Monty. Oh. Hey, Monty. Yeah, I heard him. I hear a grunts in the back. Yeah, I hear a. Oh, sorry. I, 
thought I was muted when I started moving stuff around on my desk. Okay, so we got Julie. You could maybe help Julie troubleshoot her audio. She's joined and she's having trouble on, we need like generic audio troubleshooting help. People are generally coming in, like Randall came in, we don't know who he is, and his audio is not turned on. I think generally speaking, that seems to be happening. So, so Monte, um, can you see my screen? Yes. Maybe we should be mentioning right up front that uh, that they need to go to the microphone and 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 hit the up arrow to see what 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 devices they're using. I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe you should write it up or something. Um, so Curtis. You know, I went to the Wisconsin Green Party website and I don't have the same page for some oh, reason. That's interesting. So maybe I didn't maybe I didn't share it with everybody. So yeah, Monte, can you look at Oh man, I got mine's different. It's like it's there, but There's... I've got to go back I gotta go back to the home. I'm not going in on the home. I don't know why. Monte? Oh, that is yeah. the home. Can you go to the home page of the website? Uh-huh. And <sighs> tell me if it looks like what I have or not. Well, you're looking at the back end, right? No, I'm trying to look at the front end. Well, here, let me share my screen. Okay. Oh, I can't. Wait, wait. No, let's, so should we do the... Should we let's do a uh, yeah, that's what I'm seeing right there. Are you seeing the spring gathering drop down? Yeah, yeah, you, you are. So if you click on, uh, but see, I'll, I don't have those buttons on the top for some mm -hmm. reason. Uh, can you try it on Ubuntu? You might want to do yeah. that, yeah. Because the tablet might be different. He doesn't really need the navigation buttons, though. Well, no, I'm trying to get people to. Here's the point, Monty. There's a sign in sheet, okay? Oh, right. And so if they oh. click on Spring Gathering, it says, please fill out our Spring Gathering 2020 sign in forms. That I haven't seen yet. Yeah, see, yeah that's what I'm getting. You're getting that. Oh, wait. Too. No, I'm not. When I clicked on that link, I got the. Uh, Oh wait a minute. Let's um let's try let's mess this up right now and let's try doing uh Google. Let's do the a Google video call. Might as well get some chaos going here. All right, I I need a moment. I just had a sudden emergency. I'll be back quite briefly. All right. Well, we need to get Julie taken care of. I think that's Monty's first thing. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, cool. So we can simultaneously have Google this Google Hangouts video going because what's good about it is we can share our screens bi-directionally this way. Um, and if it, there is a chance it could screw up the audio, but Monte and I have pretty much been okay with it. So if your audio gets screwed up, you can just drop out of the video call. But I, I, um, I created a sign-up sheet, and I'm trying to get people to sign in when they join. Uh, it's a Google form. So I was going to share my screen on Hangouts. That's why I started this. And then Monte's taking a bathroom break, I guess. But Julia, Julie, how do you pronounce? Sorry, Julie's Julie, uh, Tara. Thank you. She's listening I don't know. right now. Um, so I'm not pronouncing your last name very well. Actually, she may have dropped out, but she joined, I think she's troubleshooting her sound. What we're seeing a pattern of people having trouble getting their audio to work in Zoom. So 
should I go to that link that I was provided last night for Zoom? Oh yeah, uh, just right. And then also look at the, which, can you look at the front page of our website? Uh, Hang on, I'll do that. Okay. Yeah, I, I get your page when I go with my- uh, Ubuntu? With my, yeah, my best big desktop, but it's a different page if I got a tablet. So you're, you're not hearing, I'm hearing Curtis through Zoom. That's why I'm talking to somebody you're not hearing. So he's confirming he's okay. I see that we've got a live update pitch and we've got, um, I don't know, at the thing that we've had up this whole time. Oh, Greg. For the spring gathering. All right. I just brought Greg in. All right, I'm gonna, I gotta do some housekeeping. That's cool. Well, Greg should know how to get his audio going. Yeah, it's going. Yeah, most people don't seem to be able to we need tips for first time users of Zoom. They, they come in and their audio is muted and they don't know how to get the audio turned on. Morning, everyone. Good morning, morning Greg. Hi. That's still going to do it. Sorry about that. Morning, Monty. So, Barb, do you see, um, yeah, where it says, you see the welcome, some connection issues, et cetera, et cetera? Uh, hang on. In the Hangouts video call. I have a lot of windows up for a sec. All right. Okay, um, Hangouts video call. I'm getting into Zoom. Oh, you're okay. going into Zoom. Okay. I got Barb here too. Connection issues. Yeah. I see it on your screen. Yeah, on my screen. And um, so I got, there's a drop down here called Spring Gathering that I added temporarily. Mm. So hopefully you see that too. So the committee sign up is the, is the document you're talking about? Oh. All right, somebody. So, so the, is, is that better? I know it my opinion. Yeah, so when that happens, somebody can do a mute all and then unmute and then uh, unmute the speakers, the presenters. Oh, Barb, so if, did you join Zoom? Yes. Um, I'm okay, so we need to make you, I'm going to stop sharing on Zoom and then make oh, you a, oh, never mind. a co host. So, so watch, uh, I'm, right now I'm going to make you, Barb, a co host. Hmm. Uh, so Julie's mic is enabled, so she should be able to talk. She's just not sitting at her computer now. Okay. That's way better. I need to take a quick break. I'll, re I'll be back. Ploof. <laughs> Ploof. <clears throat> I don't know, should we admit them? Well, you're the co-chair, you let me know. I guess so, I don't know. Yeah, we can't make a way forever. I, I say let them in and then ask them who they are. Hello? Uh, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. The names as I see them are me, Tom R, Monty, Julie De La Terre, Ploof, and Randall somebody? Yes. Marilyn. Randall is connecting to audio. 
Uh, Jeff, if you want to, I'd like to ask you to please right click on your name in the bottom left corner of the display of your face and see if you can put your actual name in there, please. Do you see what I'm saying, Jeff? He's muted. Yeah, I see. And I can't seem to unmute oh, him here. Oh, is Jeff. There's two places you can unmute yourself, Jeff. One is by, the easy one to find is the mic in the bottom left corner. There we go. Okay, I got that. Okay, now right click. And also Marilyn Bolton is here too. Yeah, oh, but go on now. Oh yeah, I was going to say, isn't that Chris? <laughs> yeah, that's Kurt. <laughs> it is. Okay. Yeah. I can't get the the flu stands for Prairie Lakes uh, UU Fellowship. So there we go. I yeah, it. there you go. I knew you'd get it. That, I, the only reason I'm really asking is because it's not that hard to do. <laughs> for me, anything's hard to do right now. <laughs> I could kind of relate, but probably for different reasons. This is all brand new. A few weeks ago, I wouldn't have even been able to do anything like this. Well, to me, this is this is the whole upside right here of the whole uh, coronavirus is we're finally gonna. It, well, us and a whole lot of other people are gonna finally join the twenty first century. Uh, and, Monte. Yes. Can you join the Hangouts video? I'm the only. Absolutely. One. I'm sorry, I forgot about that. Uh -huh. Okay. Barb got in, which is good. But right now I'm looking at video feedback, which makes me dizzy. Okay. Oh. Oh, and I'm. Somebody had a screen on there. Yeah, I'm sharing my screen, right? So. Um, You're coming across really loud in here. Oh, I'll, uh, huh, that's an, okay. Then I'm going to mute myself in there. So, Monte, can you valid? You can valid. Did you look at the sign in? Did anyone, Monte, can you look at the sign in form and see if you object to it? Um, I will darn well try. So, I'm not finding the link to that. Oh, can you share your screen and I'll walk you through it? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, we got echoing. You got your, you got. Yeah, this has got to go. It's likely due to me trying to use my external speakers. I'll fix that. So this isn't good. We're not getting, we should be getting people coming in. Uh, Well, you know, you can be fashionably late too. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I okay. I see the link to the sign-in form. Yeah. yeah, I didn't seem to fix that. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm waiting for you to share your screen. I'm sorry. I'm still wanting not to be so obnoxious in there. So that's interesting. I think you're creating that high frequency feedback. Okay. So yeah. So go into the spring gathering 2020. Oh. So even though it says Barbara Dahlgren, I should fill in my own information, right? Oh, you you, you can read right here. So, so Monte, um, if you click yes. on Spring Gathering, no, no, not there. See the, here. No, up. It's a, it's a button. Oh, right, right, up here. No, not the committee. The, Just the, this one. one. Yeah. Now look at the Spring Gathering sign-in. Yeah. 
and see if you, so wordsmith that, think, see if you, no, no, don't fill it out. This, you've got edit rights. You, yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, you guys have edit rights. The only way you can see it, how it's going to look is to open up a separate browser that doesn't have your uh, Google authentication. So like, open or do, yeah, like if you have Opera or Firefox and you don't log into Google, then you'll see what other people see. So right now. I wouldn't change much, saying, you know. but I would but do I would this. this. Okay, yeah, thank you. And that's about all I would change. What about the disclaimer up at the top? You think that's okay? I thought that was pretty good. Good. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that's totally sufficient. Now, I'm not getting why I'm echoing now that I'm on the headset. Well, you've got, um, you must have another speaker somewhere in your. All I know is when I, when I muted. Now you're completely. Oh, this time, this time it did fix it. Uh, well, let me try hanging up Google. See, now it's gone. But I had myself muted in Google. Yeah. So I'm not understanding no, how it's, going it's on. Yeah, it's Google. Google's output is going somewhere else. That's the problem. Oh, yeah. I'm one. just wanting to avoid being there if that's going to happen. Particularly if more than one of us do that, the, the meeting will become unusable. Uh, I think you might be able to change the output. Yeah, Dennis Boyer just joined. Hello, Dennis. Good to see you. Oh, wait. I got an idea. So what you can do in Hangouts, go into Hangouts and you can change from speakers to a different audio device that... Oh, that, yeah, let me try that. Yeah, Dave just joined too. Okay. <laughs> Recursion. Um... So it's the gear. It's the gear icon in Hangouts, and change and change the speaker to something. Ah, that is the issue. Hello. I don't think I can. Can't you have it to go to your headphone? I just turned off the volume. No, it's still echoing. Yeah. What are your? Can you? Sh what are your choices on the gear icon? Uh, too many. Some of them don't exist. Yeah, that's what pick one that doesn't exist. That's a trick in computer software is to pick null devices. Yeah, but I mean, see, my my when I don't want to use them, my my displays have mics, and the rest of the time I can't use it. I don't quite get that part. I'm talking about your audio settings in Google. Right. right. Yeah. yeah, and the displays have mics. I can't can't I can't not use a mic. I'm not talking about the mic, I'm talking about the speaker. Select something. Same thing. Select something that's bogus. I just don't have anything in the list that's bogus. That's the problem. Uh, here, here, how's that? Test. test. Say something. Yeah, see, now this is, this, yeah, this is the same thing. Well, we, we had this working yesterday. But yes, that, that's, but I'm starting to think I don't have any choice but to not be in, it, it, now, have it's, these. now it's good. Yeah, because I'm I'm muted in Google. All right. I think we're running out of time. We need to stop troubleshooting me. Um. Yeah, I I don't. I I'm gonna have to. You're gonna have to ask me for access in Google by chat or something. But I don't see. And then I'll silence myself in Just here. Silence yourself, and then we'll yeah. yeah. Which I'll try to stay muted as a. Quick question. Are we live streaming today, Tom? I have another computer set up in my dining room. I thought maybe I could try it, but I haven't. So I, I can try it, but I haven't even set. 
Ugh. If I do that, I'll just be dis I'll disappear for a good half an hour. I'll just be gone. Do you want me to try it? Okay. Um well um, 40 minutes. Oh, I gotta make you I'm gonna make you a co-host right now. So I remember there was talk about using OBS. I'll just it's easier for me to just try it, but then I'm gone. Uh, well, so but I don't want that. I don't want I don't want you to leave now. I mean there's, there's a native so, a native ability to stream it from Zoom without um we're not going to using OBS, but I don't even I can't remember where the button to turn it on is. I can get it to work with OBS. The question is of dropped frames. So if I use the laptop with a lower resolution monitor, I might be in better shape. I'll I can go give it a try. And I guess I can join this on my phone. So I'll just, I'll be in the other room, but I'll join the meeting as myself on my phone. So I can kind of listen in. Does okay. that make sense? Just, why would it take 40 minutes? I mean, that seems a little, that seems like a long time just to set up a live stream. Yeah. Well, it's cause Tom Rodman's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, um, yeah, yeah, I'll give I mean, you a, a, no, in the, that's, if it's fast, it could be faster. Uh, but I, I'm starting, I think I should just be quiet, go do it. And, um, I'll try to kind of lurk. Um, so I think you guys all have enough power. Um, there's a sign up sheet that I created as one of the buttons on the main website so people can sign in. And I'm asking uh, Curtis to have people sign in. And then there's also a committee, um, um, committee sign up sheet that people can use. It's just a Google form. And Monty knows about that. So I'm going to mute my. Um, well, it's in the same drop down. Oh, okay. Then I know. Okay. So I'm gonna uh, mute myself and uh, join us on my phone. Bye. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Well, we've got five minutes to go till uh, I think it's gonna be Dave takes the controls. All um, right. Is anybody having any unresolved problems at this issue at this point? Um, good morning, Samuel. Good morning, Jennifer. Howdy. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> good. So, oh, Samuel. Okay. So uh, where are we supposed to go to uh, sign in? If you go to the WisconsinGreenParty.org, you'll see at the top of the page uh, in the navigation, there's an extra button for the spring gathering. Oh, I if see. you drop that down, there's a committee sign up, which is completely optional. But if you hit spring gathering 2020, that'll give you a, a please sign in form in the next frame. I mean, you got to click the link to get there. Sure. Thank you. Hey, Nana, thanks for asking. Hopefully everybody else is uh, catching up with that. I got a bunch of people to admit here. Oh. Barbon? Yeah, she is. Sounds like Jennifer's on too. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> One person has a phone number. Maybe we should um, check who that yeah. is and edit that. Yeah, well, I'm getting on that. Okay, thanks. If I can get there. Thank you, Curtis. Curtis. Also, Jeff, do you want to throw your last name on there? I think we've had multiple Jeffs uh, RSVP. <laughs> Okay, let me go ahead and see if I can. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't get that one. Yeah, I'm not. Let's see if I can. 
Okay. I cannot seem to click on that. So if you um if you go to yourself, rename should be an option in the uh, in the sidebar window. What do you want for your last name, Jeff? Reese, R E E S E. It's just not. I can't seem to click. Hey, clicking and it's not doing anything. There we go. Okay, great. All right. Okay. Oh, the, okay. The phone number is just a phone. It's not a video thing. So I don't. Right. Um, you can check the database though for phone numbers. So we should be able to match it with someone who RSVP. If I could. That's fine. Does the yeah. phone number have an area code of 612? Yes. That's me. Oh, who's me? My name is Farheen Hakeem. Do you need me to spell that? Yes. Okay. Let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. As I said, Frank, <laughs> A is an Apple, R is an Ralph, H is an Harold, E is an Emily, E is an Emily, N is an Nancy. So F A R L H E E N. No, <laughs> F-A-R-H-E-E-N. Yep. It is seven letters. Okay, F-A, okay, got it. I can, I can change that. Farheen, it's good to finally meet you, so to speak. Who's that? Monty. Oh, hey, Facebook friend, how are you? Yes, uh, I guess that is the best way to describe it. I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I was it was interesting to see your name and join the group uh, last night is what I noticed. Yeah, I can't really participate because I have a toddler, um, so I will be doing a lot of muting and listening. Cool. Thanks for joining. Um, who's a V Tech R V A? And is it possible for you to click on these? Hello? Hello. We've got a few more people Hi, waiting. Can you hear me? Oh, this. Mike, Jeffrey. We got a lot of people with, with no uh, video. It's starting to look pretty good up in here. Hey, all. Hey Mike. Hey Mike. Hi. Uh, Jeanette to my left. Always. Yeah. Yep. Hey Jeanette. <laughs> Hi. Always a pleasure. Oh, there's Kevin back again. Who's this? <laughs> All these people on the RSVP list. Um, so not to worry. Oh, good, because I don't even know where the RSVP list is. Sorry, I didn't reply either. <laughs> All right, and we've got some folks with who don't have last names, so we just, I mean, we're about to do introductions, so I guess um, we can remedy that as we go. Okay, I see Tom Rodman on here twice. That's okay. Yeah, that's fine. It's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. thing is, I only um, have room I'm in the dining room of my house, and I'm also in another room. It'll, re it'll, re it'll shift around and make room. Tom is doing tech support, so he can call in as many times as he wants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I might end up in here more than once, too. But I hope not. The only problem with having somebody on here twice is I only have 16 screens, and so. Uh, oh, it'll, it'll again. It'll expand as soon as more add. Oh, yeah. I'm seeing uh, four by. I got 23 up. 
So if you're limited to 16, that could be an issue. Oh, yeah, there's more than that. Let's see what you... All right, I mean, if you don't have enough uh, screens, so to speak, you can switch to speaker view. Yep. So that way, whoever is speaking will pop up on your screen. Top right corner. Oh, okay, there we go. Okay, that, that might work. All right, a couple more in the waiting room. And then why don't we start with introductions since it's 10 o'clock here. Um, so we're going to make this brief just so we can, you know, get right into the agenda. Uh, we've got a busy day planned and, you know, we want to respect everyone's time and try to stay on schedule. Um, so there will be plenty more time to talk later in the day and sort of, uh, you know, discuss things and talk about where we're all coming from. But for right now, we want to keep things very brief. Uh, so um, for this round of introductions, please give us your first and last name, uh, where you are calling from, or, you know, where you're located in Wisconsin. And then just say, you know, is this your first time at a state Green Party meeting or have you been to one before? Just to give us a sense of, uh, you know, who all is in the room. Uh, so I will start. Uh, my name, oh, also if you are an officer or elected official, um, then if you <clears throat> identify yourself, that would be great. So my name is Dave Schwab. I'm in Madison. <laughs> I am a co-chair of the Wisconsin Green Party. Um, and this isn't my first state Green Party meeting. Uh, <laughs> so next up, um, we'll go to Tom. Rodman. Tom, are you there? I'm gonna unmute you. All right, well, Tom is doing some tech support stuff now, so we'll come back to him. Barb, do you wanna introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, I'm Barbara Dahlgren. I'm a co-chair of the Wisconsin Green Party. I am here in West Dallas, Wisconsin, which uh, is right next to Milwaukee. And um, I'm really happy that you all could come today and I really appreciate seeing all these great faces in the Green Party. Awesome. Also, um, just a public service announcement. If people are able to um, in the sidebar, you should be able to rename yourself. And if you can add both your first and last name, that would be very helpful. It's kind of like a name tag. Um, and we have had people RSVP, you know, many people with the same first name. So, you know, so as not to get everyone confused and you know, just to get a sense of who's here. Uh, Curtis, you want to go next? You can also edit yourself by right clicking on your name in the window that you display it. Thanks. Yeah, my name is Kurt Bolton. I'm a sec recording secretary at the Wisconsin Green Party. I don't have Franklin. And uh, yeah, I've been attending a few Green Party meetings and looking forward to talking to other people who want to see things change. Right on. Uh, Monty? Uh, my name is Monty Laterno. I'm calling in from West Dallas. I'm on the IT team. <laughs> This is not my first uh, state meeting, but I haven't been to many in a very long time. Thanks, Monty. Uh, Eric Hildeman. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm Eric Hildeman. i um, been active with the Green Party now for uh, not quite a year. I'm uh, uh, the candidate for the Wisconsin State Assembly District 17, and uh, this is going to be interesting to see how that turns out. Awesome. Thanks, Eric. Uh, Jeff? Jeff Reese? Jeff Reese. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm Jeff Reese. Welcome to my home. I'm, uh, I'm, in from, uh, I'm from Fond du Lac, and I've been with the Green Party now for four years, um, when at that time I was saying any, anybody but Hillary, <laughs> and, um, uh, but I'm very happy with the Green Party, and so uh, regardless what happens, I intend to stick around. So, 
Awesome. awesome. Thank you, Jeff. All right, uh, Jennifer Kudrowski. Yeah, I'm Jennifer. Uh, I'm in Burfield. And this is my first spring gathering. Um, awesome. Right. <laughs> Thanks. Welcome. And, and also, uh, you know, if, if we say anyone's name wrong, me or anyone else, feel free to uh, correct that. Um, Mike McAllister. Hi, uh, I'm Mike McAllister. Uh, I'm the co-chair of the Greater Milwaukee Green Party, uh, former state secretary a while back. This is not my first gathering. Uh, and uh, 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 I live in West Dallas as well. We almost can start our own chapter now. Yeah, we're Right on. Jeanette, do you want to introduce yourself to uh, yeah, Jeanette McAllister. I uh, have been a Green since 2000 uh, and uh, in West Dallas here. I'm looking for the Green Party to, to grow and expand and become part of a, a larger party on the left. Awesome. Okay. Um, so, Joe Nathan Kingfisher. Hey, everybody. Hey, do you want to introduce yourself real quick? Say your name, where you're from. Zavisen Disnakas, Ogishki Manisini Nidotam, Zagaranin Donjibai. My name is Joe Nathan uh, ZB Kingfisher. And uh, right now we're in Ashland, Wisconsin, and my family is from Lac de Flambeau and um, Old Wass Wagon. Awesome, thank you. Um, so next up, uh, Farheen. Hi, I'm Farheen. Um, I was with the Green Party from 2002 to 2013, and I literally did almost everything. But I did it all in Minnesota, um, and I've never been in a Wisconsin Green Party meeting, and I live in Milwaukee. Great. Thank you. Um, so, Jeff Salzman. <clears throat> Jeff Salzman, are you there? Okay. Can't hear anything from Jeff Salzman. So um, hopefully everything's okay with your audio and everything. But we'll uh, Jeff has written in chat. This is Jeff Salzman from Oshkosh, and he doesn't have a My name is Jeffrey um, Jacobs. Can only communicate. Jeff Salzman from Oshkosh? Oh. Oh. oh, yeah, there, we have at least oh. three Jeffs right now, so. <laughs> I was just surprised to say the one from Oshkosh, too. Okay, yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. Nice. That's so, awesome. uh, Barb, do you want to read what Jeff Salzman wrote? Yes, in chat he says, this is Jeff Salzman from Oshkosh. Do not have a webcam, and he says, new member. Right on, welcome. Yeah. Um, okay, so... Uh, Jeffrey Jacobs. Hi, sure. Hi, I'm Jeffrey Jacobs. I'm uh, also a Jeffrey from Oshkosh. Super neat. I didn't think there'd wow. be one. Um, um, uh, I'm 29 years old. I've been a Green Party voter. I was a Green Party voter in 2012 and 16. The only election I haven't voted in uh, was for Obama when I worked for the Obama campaign. That's why I'm a Green Party member. I live in Oshkosh, and I'm uh, putting together a candidacy for the 54th Assembly District to run against uh, the minority leader um, of the Democrats, Gordon Hintz. Right on. Wow, so we have uh, two Jeffs from Oshkosh and one from Fond du Lac. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we could have a Jeff's caucus. Yeah, um, <laughs> great. Well, welcome. Uh, so let's see. People are moving around in the order, so I want to make sure not missing anyone. Um, Steve Carlson. Yes, can everybody hear me? Yep. Yeah, um, I uh, 
have not been actively involved with the Green Party in the past, although I did vote for Jill Stein in 2016. Uh, I am the former statewide coordinator, volunteer coordinator for Progressive Democrats of America. Uh, had pursued their inside-outside strategy in trying to change the Democratic Party since as far back as 2008. And with the <clears throat> recent uh, clearly unfruitful efforts by the Sanders folks to change the Democratic Party, I'm interested in exploring alternatives at this point, and that's why I'm here today. Right on. Thank you. Welcome. Um, so, uh, Bill Bryan? Yeah, Bill Bryan, uh, active with the Milwaukee Greens State Treasurer, re retired member of the United Steelworkers Union, lifelong socialist. Glad to be here. Been active with the Greens for a number of years. Awesome. Thank you, Bill. Uh, so, let's see. Uh, Dots is Epps. Hey all, um, this is my last spring gathering with the Wisconsin um, Greens. Uh, I'm still in Wisconsin. I'm calling in from Madison, but um, we are building a tiny house on wheels and we'll be moving to Michigan um, June 1st. And so um, I've been with the Greens for a while, serving in a variety of capacities, and I am currently um, the co-chair of the diversity committee at the national level. Awesome. Thanks, Dasa. Okay. Um, let's see. We've got a long list here. So, yeah, remember, let's try and keep the intros short and sweet. Um, so basic information, your name, where you're from, uh, any officer or elected position or candidacy, and is this your first state meeting? Um, and yeah, we'll have plenty more time for discussion later. So let's see, uh, Jim Young. Good morning, uh, Jim Young. I live in Madison now with my wife, Susan. And I've been a Green Party member since the beginning in Wisconsin. And so I was at the first uh, gathering and this is my first spring gathering since about 2003 or four. All right, thank you. Okay. Um, Julie De La Terre. Julie De La Taylor, are you there? Are you muted? Okay. Not hearing anything from Julie. Uh, so hopefully your audio works all right. Um, we'll keep moving for right now. Uh, Patty? Yeah, hi everybody. I'm Patty Ashby. I'm in Milwaukee. I am. Uh, I became um, in, a member of the Green Party uh, in 2016, and so I've been attending the gathering since then. Um, I am the membership outreach committee chairperson for the state uh, party, and also the membership chair uh, committee chairperson for Greater Milwaukee Green Party. Um, so I'd just like to say thanks everybody for being here. Welcome. Thanks, Patty. All right. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, okay. Jordan Martin. Hi, uh, I'm Jordan Martin. I am new to Wisconsin. I just moved here about a year ago. Um, I'm in Madison, and this is my first Green Party meeting. Cool, welcome. All right, uh, let's see, Dennis Boyer. Hello, this is Dennis Boyer. I'm in Niowa County in Southwest Wisconsin. 
uh, had my first Green Party meeting in 1987. Quite a few gaps since then, though. So I'm glad to be here. Thanks. Thanks, Dennis. All right. Okay. Greg Banks. Hi, I'm Greg Banks uh, from Milwaukee, or living in Milwaukee, I mean. And uh, this is not my first Green Party meeting. Thanks, Greg. Um, Keevan. I'm Keevan Poise from Eau Claire, first Green Party meeting. Welcome. Jose. Uh, Jose? I don't think we can hear you, Jose. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, testing. Testing. Good. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Now we can hear you. Okay. So this is Jose Flores Ugalde. I'm from Madison, and this is my first Green Party meeting. Awesome. Welcome. Okay. Justin Seis. So, uh, last name is Seis. Um, yeah, this is, I'm calling from Stevens Point, and this is my second. First was in 2016. Great, thanks. Um, Marilyn. Yeah, that's just me. Um, on a different computer. Uh, the other thing I did want to say too, uh, Kurt Bolton, by the way. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say is that there is a, a sign-in form that we hope everybody would take the time to, to fill out. Um, and you can get there by going to the uh, Wisconsin Green Party website. Uh, on the top of the page, there's a, a button for the uh, Spring Gathering 2020. And when you get the drop-down menu, there's Spring Gathering. 2020 again, and that should get you to uh, the Spring Gathering 2020 page, and then there's a link under uh, the top welcome line about signing in. So if you could do that, that would be appreciated. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Kurt. And also, if you could put the link to the sign-in sheet in the, in the chat and Zoom, I think that would be helpful as well. Uh, Mary? I'll give it a shot. Yes, hello. I'm very happy to be here. It's my second Wisconsin Green Party meeting. I joined the Greens in February 2019 uh, because of the monetary uh, link in the national platform, and I am co chair of the Banking and Monetary Reform Committee, but I live on the committees in Wisconsin. Super happy to see 30 people here today. Uh, thanks. And can Matt, you tell us your full name, where you're from? Uh, it's Mary Sanderson. I'm from Columbus, living near Madison. Awesome. Thanks, Mary. Okay. Uh, Dave, Dave could, yeah. I just say, could I just say with the sign-in sheet, it asked me to, where was I going to send it to? So I had to type in an email there. So I sent it to... Barbara? Yeah, uh, so Bruce, it looks like you have shared your screen. I, I'm not sure if you intended to do that, but. Um, I'm not even sure what it means. It means uh, we're all looking at your, at your desktop, Bruce. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> How do I get out of this? Uh, Let's see, Monty, are you able to um, undo that? I think so. Let me try something here. Okay. There. Oh, yeah, what I did was I shared my <laughs> screen and then I didn't. Okay, thanks. Great. Okay. So we have just a few more intros to go. Um, Might so be a good we'll time to meet Bruce. <laughs> yeah, real quickly. Bruce, do you want to <laughs> quick uh, introduce yourself? I'm Bruce Hinkforth. Can you hear me? Yes. 
Okay. Is this, does this have to come over my phone or can I come off my computer? I'm not sure. Never mind. You're fine. Um, yeah, you're good. I've been with the green. I've been with the green since 1987. So I live in Oconomowoc. So this is definitely not my first meeting. <laughs> Thanks, Bruce. Uh, okay, um, Nero. Hi, I'm I'm Nero Grot Gallagher from Appleton, Wisconsin, and this is my first meeting. Awesome, welcome. Um, so, Patrick. Hi, this is Patrick from Milwaukee. I've been to a couple of Green Party meetings. This is my first convention. Cool, welcome. Um, Randall? Hello, Randall, are you there? All right, not hearing from Randall, maybe you could uh, check your audio settings. Um, if folks don't know, on the lower left corner, next to the microphone icon that says mute, there's a little arrow, and you're able to test your speaking microphone. So, um, or change your selection. Right. If you can hear us, then your speaker is working fine. Uh, but if we can't hear you, there may be a microphone issue. So, uh, you can just test your microphone and hopefully we'll be able to get everyone's working. Um, so I think, um, yeah, we've had a couple people who we haven't been able to hear from, but I think Samuel is the last one on the list. Oh, wow. The last one. Uh, I'm Sam. I'm from Madison. Uh, long time voter. First time uh, meeting. Attendee. Awesome. Well, welcome everybody. Uh, we're so glad that you could join us. Actually, uh, real quick, I think I called on everyone. Uh, is there anyone who either didn't get called on or uh, didn't have a chance to introduce themselves before? I didn't get called on. This is Barb. Oh, hey, Barb. Hi, everyone. Um, I've been with the Greens since 2000, since the NATO campaign, off and on. Um, great to see so many people from all over the state and um, old and new greens. I'm the Milwaukee, um, Greater Milwaukee Green Party treasurer. Awesome. Great to be here. Yeah. Thank you so much, Barb. Um, okay. So, and I know Randall and Julie uh, both had trouble with the, oh, also there's a, a Moto Z. <laughs> Okay. Um, well, yeah, I think aside from Randall and Julie, we were able to hear from everyone. So hopefully they're able to get any audio problems worked out. Um, but for right now, just to keep us on schedule, we'll keep going with the agenda. So every, um, thanks everyone for those introductions. And again, welcome. Uh, my name again is Dave Schwab. Uh, Barb Dahlgren and I are the co-chairs of the Wisconsin Green Party. And um, so we will be facilitating the meeting today. Uh, so just a couple quick statements about how uh, our facilitation works. So um, when people uh, want to get on the, um, well, when they want to say something, we have what we call a stack. So you want to get on the stack if you want to speak. Um, in this Zoom meeting, the best way to get on the stack is to put in the chat. Um, so you can just write stack or you can write your name stack. That will show um, our secretary that um, they should add your name to the stack. And then people generally, will be called on to speak in the order that they got on the stack. 
Um, however, we also practice what we call a progressive stack, which basically means that people who haven't spoken much um, will be prioritized over people who have been speaking more. Um, so yeah, um, nothing personal. That's just how we do it. Uh, so generally, you just wait your, your turn in order. Uh, there are only a couple exceptions, and we, we try to keep an orderly stack. Um, you can s say a direct response, um, and we try to reserve that only if you have an answer to a question, particularly a question that was asked directly of you um, or directly of your department or your local chapter or something like that. Um, so. We don't use direct response just because I want to speak next. It's more because, oh, there's information that someone requested right now and we want to give it to them. Um, and then the uh, other important thing is point of process. If someone has a, a question or a point about the process that we're using, um, then they can say, point of process and we'll, uh, you know, we'll try to clarify that issue. Uh, so we don't use that one very often either, but it may come up. Um, so most of our decisions today will be made by secret ballot um, and all members will be sent a ballot uh, that they can vote on. We'll talk more about that later, uh, but generally we practice a um, a modified consensus type of decision making where uh, we strive to reach consensus on decisions. First, there is discussion, or sorry, first people can ask clarifying questions, then there's discussion, um, then there's a chance for unresolved concerns to be aired. If there are no unresolved concerns, then we assume that we have reached consensus. Um, if there are unresolved concerns, we attempt to resolve them. Um, if that is not possible, it's possible to go to a vote. Currently, uh, to pass something by vote, uh, we need a two-thirds majority of people who vote yes. Um, so uh, those are just a few quick words about our process. I won't uh, you know, go into any more details about process because uh, I think people are here to talk politics and, you know, to talk about the current moment that we're in. Um, so Barb and I, as co-chairs, will just say a few quick words about that. Uh, the very first thing I want to say is that Donald Trump is a symptom of the deep rot in our corrupt political system. Uh, Trump is the symptom, not the cause. Uh, Bernie Sanders... Um, made a huge impact uh, by proposing to reform the system with a platform that was very similar to the Green Party agenda. Um, and as we've seen, that agenda, which we've been running on for years of uh, things like Medicare for all, things like a Green New Deal to put millions of people back to work and prevent climate crisis, uh, things like ending student debt and uh, making a fair economy for working people, ending the war on drugs, ending the endless wars in the Middle East. Uh, these are actually extremely popular positions. And once the public is exposed to them, they embrace those positions. However, the Democratic Party establishment used all its resources as in 2016 to stop him and prop up a corporate establishment Democrat who's woefully unsuited for this moment in time. Um, and so the Sanders campaign, on the one hand, it showed the potential of a populist progressive movement that's funded by small donors and grassroots energy, uh, the sort of thing that we've been saying in the Green Party for a long time now that we need. Um, unfortunately, it also showed that you can't have a revolution in a counter-revolutionary party. Um, despite doing everything right, the grassroots organizing, the, the huge small donor fundraising, um, you know, the message, uh, even having a politician, uh, you know, who in many ways is a career politician, but 
who doesn't have any uh, major scandals or you know has very little in his background. Um, still, the Democratic Party establishment, with the help of its friendly media and its uh, sort of loyal cadres, was able to crush that. Um, you know, even that movement for reasonable reform within the Democratic Party. And, you know, we see in the, the Biden campaign, uh, just perhaps even more so than the Clinton campaign, just the complete embodiment of the corrupt establishment and the corrupt political system that has led to the current moment um, with Donald Trump in power and uh, the, you know, American uh you know, not only the country, but also the empire in sort of a state of chaos. So what we need to do is to replicate the grassroots model, uh, you know, that Sanders was able to deploy effectively, but outside the Democratic Party, so that the DNC can't crush it and can't co-opt it. Um, and the Green Party is the largest independent progressive party in the country, and it's the only one that has survived the establishment onslaught for years. There are many other parties that have tried to do uh, the same thing, but they've either been crushed or they've been co-opted. Uh, and trying to take over the DNC has been a dead end for over 100 years. We could go all the way back to William Jennings Bryan and the death of the uh, Populist Party. Um, we could talk about how the Democratic establishment stole the VP nomination from Henry Wallace in 1944. Uh, and you know, basically that was the beginning of the end of the New Deal. Uh, the Jesse Jackson campaign, the Dennis Kucinich campaign, Mike Ravel, Bernie Sanders. Um, there are always these figures, uh, these progressive figures who are allowed to go only so far to keep people putting all their time and energy into the Democratic Party. And then uh, at the last minute, they pull out the rug from under it and they say, well, you have to vote again for a right-wing corporate imperialist Democrat, uh, but maybe next time we'll give you some concessions. Uh, so letting Democrats take the leadership of the anti-Trump resistance uh, has also been a huge mistake. Uh, you know, as we've seen, their version of resistance has been mostly talking about Russia and Ukraine and issues that are uh, basically meaningless to the majority of people in this country. Um, you know, instead of talking about the actual material conditions of the country, uh, instead of talking about climate crisis, uh, instead of talking about the, you know, the endless wars, um, instead the Democrats have actually gone further to the right and revived sort of a new McCarthyism and a new Cold War. Uh, and they had bigger protests against the firing of Jeff Sessions than <laughs> against anything else that Trump has done. Um, so, you know, we really see that lesser evilism is, uh, is leading to greater evil in the system. It's leading to all the things that we were afraid of. And uh, so the system can't be reformed. You can't take over a two-party system because lesser evilism will always be there. Uh, at the end of the day, they'll always say, you have to vote blue no matter who. Um, you know, otherwise, you get the Republicans. It's a good cop, bad cop situation. So for that reason, one major change that we need as soon as possible is ranked choice voting. So we can vote for what we want. Um, and the state of Maine is showing the way forward. They've already passed uh, ranked choice voting by popular referendum twice. Um, and there are cities around the country that have done it as well. So there's growing consciousness and growing pressure for ranked choice voting. And I also want to say quickly that Wisconsin does have advantages for the Green Party uh, and for Greens. We don't have huge ballot access hurdles that keep us off the ballot. Uh, we have local nonpartisan elections where Greens have historically done very well and have won over half of the races that they've entered uh, since the late 80s. And, you know, we've won uh, seats in city councils, county boards, school boards around the state. Uh, we have the Wisconsin Conservation Congress, uh, which is a great example of uh, grassroots democracy. Although its powers are limited, 
uh, we have managed to get many greens on the Wisconsin Conservation Congress, and uh, it's a way to make a difference and also to show that you know, we are engaged and we can win elections, uh, no matter how small. Uh, and there are many gerrymandered districts for Congress and state legislature that aren't even contested by one of the two corporate parties. And that's a chance for Greens to get in those races, promote our platform, and we, you know, in a two-way race, you can get impressive numbers and show that uh, you're the second party. Um, so by electing Greens to local offices and building a network of office holders and activists, we can lay the groundwork for competitive runs for higher office. Uh, the majority of Americans want a new party. Um, the polls for several years now have shown that around 60% of Americans agree that the two major parties are doing such a poor job of representing us that we need a new party. And the Green Party, I think, is in the best position to be that alternative. Uh, just given that the historical development, where things are, uh, the Green Party analysis has been correct uh, about pretty much everything. Uh, there are many activists who were um, not necessarily Democrats, but they were giving the Democrats a shot because of the Bernie Sanders campaign. Um, and many of those activists are now completely done with the Democratic Party, and for good reason. Um, whether the Democrats lose to Trump or whether they win with Biden, they're going to disappoint a lot of people. Um, even if they win, they won't bring the change we need. Uh, just as one example, Biden's climate plan was given an, an F minus uh, by the Sunrise Movement. Uh, we don't have time for more lesser evil, um, much less for the rest of our lives, which is what the establishment wants. Uh, so the green platform is what we need. And we will face a lot of attacks and scapegoating for the failures of the two-party system. But our voice is badly needed right now to call out that system and present the way forward, um, which is electoral reform. So we have a real democracy with a healthy multi-party system and independent politics to get us there. Um, so I will stop right there and I will pass it over uh, to Barb uh, to give her part of the introduction. Hi everyone. Um, I think I'm just going to unmute everybody for a second because I've got a, a question. How's everybody doing today? Good. Doing well. Good. Doing great. Doing well. Real good. Yeah. Real good. Fine, thank you. <laughs> awesome. Still breathing. <laughs> uh, we had a few people come in. I think Tomas, if you want to introduce yourself real quick. Hey, Tomas Ward, living in Plymouth. Uh, Sheboygan County and um, enjoy outdoorsy stuff. Good to see everyone. Awesome. Thanks for coming. Alex, yeah. uh, do you want to introduce yourself real quick too? Yeah, thanks Barbara. Yeah, Alex Brower from uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin here. Uh, really glad to be part of the meeting today. Thanks for putting this together. Thanks. Thanks for being here. Did anybody else come in that I didn't see? All right, so um, I think Dave got to really the heart of a lot of our issues. Uh, great job with presenting all of those facts. I don't think that I could have done a better job myself for sure. Um, we're at a critical moment in our history. I think that we've really never seen anything like what we're living through right now. Um, and. I've been very privileged to be able to study some of the uh, movements that America has had in the last 100 to 200 years, uh, how our grassroots democracy has worked. And um, it's true that every time that we've had um, some really good progressive changes, that movement has had about 5% of the electoral vote. Uh, that movement has had about 5% of some kind of population that was uh, charted in history. Uh, Eugene Debs was one of those figures that got over 5% of the vote. Um, the farmers movement in the late 1800s got over 5% of the vote and uh, had a lot of grassroots elections going on. And guess what? We're seeing that right now. We're seeing the grassroots elections happening. We're seeing a lot of progressive folks getting elected. Um, 
folks that we never thought would be elected. Um, whether or not they were in our party, uh, AOC has been very inspirational to a lot of people on the progressive side of politics. Uh, and the, the fact that she was even considered uh, and elected is something that, that we ought to look towards as a success that um, will bring us the success that we need uh, as people looking for that 5% this election. Um, and, and I don't think that we should just look for 5%. I think that we could win. The whole idea that the Greens are totally unelectable in every election, because it's not just the um, presidential election they tell that to us in. In 2018, when we were petitioning to get our gubernatorial candidates on the ballot and other candidates um, down ballot from there, people told me all the time, a vote for your candidate, whoever they may be, is clearly a vote for Trump. Now, Trump wasn't in those elections. Clearly, it couldn't have been a vote for Trump. Couldn't have even been a vote for like any anybody who was like a Trumpian in their circle. These people weren't going to be on the ballot. Um, it's this whole idea that's fear mongering. And I think that this party is just so incredibly inspirational and necessary in this moment. Um, I know that because of uh, COVID-19, we're constantly looking at death statistics and looking at the worst things that could happen and feeling this incredible fear. And I think it's important for us to um to really triumph over that fear and consider ourselves the inspirational movement that will bring people forward uh into a future that um we get the the program that we need you know what would be great to have in a pandemic is a uh, universal health care and it would be great if it wasn't a pandemic it would be great in every single situation we're on the right side of that conversation, whether or not there's a pandemic. You know, it would be great to have in a society with or without a pandemic, uh, justice for everybody. That It's just a given. Uh, we don't need to have pandemic circumstances in order to argue our points, because we're always on the right side of that. Um, so we need to continue to be that inspirational push forward into a future where uh, more people get to have access to education, to healthcare, to all of the benefits that the wealthiest of us um, are entitled to. They should be entitled to all of us. Um, and continuing to fight for those things is never a losing battle because we're on the right side of history there and we're going to continue that forward. So, um, I, I don't really have a whole lot more to say. I think Dave has really said a whole lot of great things today. And um, also we should just continue moving forward for today. Um, but I really appreciate everybody being here and uh, really being that inspirational force in your communities. I know that we have a whole ton of activists here. If we look around the room, we have uh, activists who've been with us for uh, literal decades doing this work, uh, work in the peace movement, in um, the environmental movement, all of these different movements. And we have young people who are just starting and coming together to make sure that the work is not in vain. Um, while we're distracted uh, with a lot of pandemic things right now, a lot of greens are out there saying, you know what we need? We need uh, people to be taking, people's housing to be taken care of. You know what we need? We need the, the EPA to be on point because um, you know it causes a lot of uh, health issues is having pollution running rampant in your, in your neighborhood. So um, greens are really out on those fronts and, and we absolutely need to be out in front of that fight and be great leaders in our communities. And I think in Wisconsin, uh, we see all of you guys helping us out doing that um, and more Greens who were not able to make it today. So I really appreciate all of the work that everybody does. And I wanna give a special thanks to uh, Monty 
and to Tom and to Patty, um, particularly, and to Dave, of course, for getting all of these things set up. Um, you all have done a huge amount of work to make this happen. And it's really important that we thank all of the people that really uh, help us come together and, and make all this stuff work. So thanks everyone and uh, let's get on with it. <laughs> thanks Barb. Great, so um, next we'll just have a few quick committee reports and also I know, you know, once we kind of start talking politics then probably a lot of people um, sort of have burning thoughts and would love to jump in and so I just wanted to say again that we, you know, we certainly will uh, later in the day have a lot more time for discussion um, and to get into some of those issues. Uh, just for right now, again, we want to try to stick to the schedule and, and respect people's time. Um, so we will try to keep things moving for now and uh, later on, particularly after the presidential candidate forum, uh, there will be a lot more time to open it up for discussion. Uh, so let's see. Uh, next up, we have um, the Elections Committee report. So, uh, Barb, I will hand it over back to you. Yeah, in, in my introduction, I totally forgot to mention that I'm also serving as the current Elections Committee chair. Um, just a quick plug, we're always looking for more great uh, people to serve on the Elections Committee, either to be at the meetings and help us coordinate everything or just to volunteer with the committee to do things like petitioning or coordinate that those petitioning efforts. Um, so if you'd like to do that, we have a Google form um, that people should be able to access on our website in order to sign up for the committee. Um, our elections committee has been fantastic. Um, everybody who has signed up pretty much is always attending the meetings and really doing great work to help us out every month. Um, and since the last um, gathering, we've had two elections happen. It would have been three if the Wisconsin Conservation Congress had a, a, an election, but it was canceled due to um, the circumstances. So um, I wanna thank everybody for helping us out with those elections. Um, we got a bunch of people on local ballots for the spring election last December, including Alex Brower, who's here and will speak with us in a little bit. Um, we had, we endorsed a bunch of folks, uh, including three school board candidates, um, I believe three county board candidates, and um, a number of other folks as well. Um, I know that Madison had some locals. And the way that our state, just for everybody's information, the way the state committee works is that we endorse people who are not able to be endorsed locally. So um, if there's a local um, Green Party, they may elect, um, endorse certain candidates that are local um, but we would endorse through the state any local candidates who don't have a local or um, endorse those statewide candidates. So uh, we've endorsed a number of candidates and helped them out with their campaigns, um, mostly doing email and, and phone calling this time because of uh, door knocking was a little bit less available to us this season. Uh, we've also been checking in recently, this is an ongoing effort to figure out how to petition for our statewide candidates um, this time. I called the Wisconsin Election Commission the other day and they're, they have a, sort of a, an, an unhelpful kind of answer that people can send in their petitions. Um, to people over the e over email, have them sign it, have them consider themselves their own witness, and then send it back. And the legislature is really not helping us out with uh, petitioning. So we're working on an effort to push that, um, push petitioning 
forward so that we either have to petition less in the state this time or um, have it be removed altogether as a burden. Uh, luckily in this state, the Green Party does not have to petition more than other parties do. However, uh, the Republicans have um, a good reason to stop any efforts to get petitioning um, canceled. And that's because they already are in most of the positions of power in the legislature. So even if um, some of them had some trouble getting on the ballot, it's not going to be as bad as um, incumbent or for new candidates who don't have as much money or resources in order to get on the ballot. So that's kind of what I'm suspecting is going on, why the Republicans uh, did not want to have any uh, amendments to petitioning. But that's something that's ongoing that uh, I think is really important that everybody should know. Uh, presidential petitioning doesn't start for a little while, so we have some extra lead time on that that starts in June. So um, we would hope that everything would be kind of back to normal by then, but uh, it's very chaotic and, and we don't know. Um, as for other things going on in the elections committee, uh, we're always working on our database of categorizing uh, folks who are interested in elections, uh, candidates who could be green candidates, people who were past green candidates. Uh, over the last 20 or 30 years, we've had a lot of history of candidates, but not all of them have made it into our database. So we're working on that. Um, and we're uh, always working on organizing more people um, for these big drives because we're going to have a few of them this year. Um, do we have any questions or comments on this report? All right, well, um, it might take a little time for people to, to get on the stack in the chat. So yeah. why don't we just keep moving and with committee reports and uh, you know, if, if we do get questions, maybe we can go back. Um, but yeah, thanks a lot, Barb. Uh, so next, um, could we hear a membership committee report from Patty? Hi, hi everybody, um, welcome. Um, I thought for my report today, it would be really helpful, um, especially for those who are joining for the first time today, if I just talk a little bit about the membership outreach committee and our, and our duties. Um, the Wisconsin Green Party membership outreach committee meets um, on the first Thursday of every month through Google Hangouts. Um, the committee is currently comprised of nine members um, and we've recently welcomed two new members to the committee, Monty Letourneau and Joe Nathan Kingfisher. Um, the committee um, responsibilities are centered around building our membership statewide and also supporting existing members. Um, when we have our membership hats on, our duties include, include um, maintaining the Wisconsin Green Party database, uh, tracking membership and dues and running membership campaigns for annual dues renewals and recruiting new members. The committee in partnership with the communications and IT committees plans and organizes the annual gathering spring and fall. Um, and then changing over to our outreach hats, the goal of the committee is to recruit new members, um, assist with the formation of new local chapters, by providing um, education and resources. Over the last year, the membership outreach committee has been working side by side with the IT committee to clean up the state database. Um, we've also been working um, on developing a new member welcome pack and membership cards, which are nearly ready to go to print. And um, we've also produced a local chapter organizer pack. 
Uh, the annual membership renewal campaign is currently underway, so um, I encourage current members to please go on to the website and renew your membership. Or for those of you who are interested in joining, please do so on the, on the website. Um, it's wisconsingreenparty.org. You all have been on there. Um, the Wisconsin Green Party is the third political party in the U.S. And in order to grow in strength, we need to grow in numbers. And you can support our mission and that cause by either becoming a dues paying member and an active member, but also volunteerism is, is encouraged and enthusiastically welcomed. We have committees um, and you can see just for what I've gone over with the membership and outreach committee, um, how busy we are and um, how devoted we are to growing the Green Party. So we welcome anybody who would like to volunteer um, time and also, of course, um, paid members are, are always appreciated. Um, the Membership Outreach Committee is currently seeking volunteers statewide to assist with updating the Wisconsin Green Party Nation Builder database that's um, something that you can do in your homes. Um, obviously, it's a good time for some of you. Um, you may have a little bit more time to um, help with that. Phone calling to, to reach out to those on our database to see if they still want to be on the database and on our contacts. And we desperately need help for that. So um, we'd love to, to have any input and any assistance that you can provide. So I'm going to put my, um, the, the Wisconsin Green Party membership email address and my phone number in the chat. And so um, please don't hesitate to reach out and um, thanks everybody uh, for being here today. Awesome, thank you so much, Patty. And thanks for all the work that you've done to organize the meeting today. Um, and so also just wanna make a quick announcement uh, so the, the sign-in sheet um, that we were sending around, it looks like it accidentally got edited a little bit. Uh, so some people may have run into that and, you know, it been a little confused. So um, I just reposted the link in the chat. So if you had any issue with the sign-in page, try that link and uh, it should be okay now. Um, all right, so we are pretty much on time here. Uh, it's one minute to 11. Uh, Bruce, would you like to give us a, a brief national committee report just to say you know, what's going on with the national party? Okay, uh, not a whole lot right now. We just got through uh, going, voting and discussing 24 different platform amendments that were presented this year, 16 of which were approved. Most of them are not, are not huge changes. Actually, a lot of them are, are changes in wording and a few new issues. Those will be, well, I'll be putting those together into a draft platform amendment, uh, just basically collecting all the, the different amendments together that will then be distributed to all the delegates who will be going to the uh, presidential nominating convention in July. Now that's probably uh, the biggest issue right now, but there's not really much being discussed about it. And I just went through um, the archives of the National Committee listserv, and I haven't, um, the secretary of the party has been Posting the agendas for the steering committee meeting, but I can't find any minutes for the steering committee meeting, so I have no idea. And there's been no discussion on the votes list or the affairs list about where we stand in terms of whether or not we will be having a convention in Detroit. Well, we may end up having to do what we're doing right now, and that's we're not. The convention is not going to be 30 or 34, 35 people. More like uh, five or 600 
Um, so how we can do that online, I have no idea, and I don't know if anybody has any idea. We may be able to postpone the convention to another date that was discussed earlier, but uh, haven't seen anything on that lately. Other than that, there's been um, a recent discussion on dues, having national party dues, which I have favored, and I think most people in this state would not have a problem with because we're a dues-paying party. However, there's a lot of controversy about it, especially coming from those states that have party registration, places like California and New York, where you get to register what party you belong to. They count those as being Green Party members, whether they've ever participated in a meeting or contributed in any way. And the algorithm that's used to determine the number of delegates that get sent to the National Committee is very much weighted in favor of, of the uh, party registration states to the uh, detriment of states like our own. Anyway, I would like to see a national dues because we, we operate on a budget of about two or three hundred thousand dollars a year. I mean, there are local organizations, volunteer organizations in Milwaukee and other places that have more money than that. I mean, we have like a one and a half person staff. Uh, that's about all we can afford. So until we start getting a steady flow of income and asking for contributions, obviously hasn't been working, hasn't worked the entire time that I've been on the national committee. So I'd like to see uh, maybe some people in Wisconsin would mind talking about um, putting together a proposal. Because right now, nobody's discussing it. Nobody's actually, I mean, well, people are discussing it, but nobody has ever come up with a proposal. And I think to move this thing along, we need, we need at least need to get a proposal to go out there so we can vote on it and just see how many people would be interested in going to a dues paying structure for the national party. And uh, other than that, I think that's about it. Not much going on national level. Bye. Okay. Great. Thanks, Bruce. Um, and yeah, just one more quick announcement about the sign-in. Um, it does seem like there was some issue with the previous link. So if folks could please just sign in again real quick, um, you know, just to make sure worst case scenario, you sign in twice, but um, it seems like with the previous link, we probably didn't get the sign in info for a lot of people. Uh, so we want to make sure that we record that accurately, um, you know, to make sure that we have quorum for decision making. And um, yeah, it's just important to get an accurate count and, you know, list of, of who signed in. So I posted that link again in the Zoom. Sorry for the, uh, for the hassle there. Um, Dave? I'd like to say real quick that there are seven people who we do have results from. And I'd like to read their names so they don't have to do it twice. No, let's not do that. All right. uh, let's just have everyone. And I'm getting a private message. The forum is no longer accepting responses. Um, I'm getting that from two people. Well, I guess I'm full of it. Okay. So, um, if, okay. Yeah. So several people are getting that. Um, the form for some reason is not currently accepting responses. If you could work on that and let us know when you have an update. Yeah. Um, and also I, I'd like to ask people, um, I think everyone here is RSVP'd already for this meeting on our website. Uh, if you haven't, then, uh, please do that now just because and we'll share that link in a second here. That way, you know, we can be sure that uh, we at least have your contact info. So, you know, if there's something um, funky about the registration or anything, then, you know, at least we can get in touch with you. So I will post that link now.
just to make sure everyone's RSVP'd. Sorry again for the little technical difficulties. Uh, we usually have a paper sign-in sheet. <laughs> uh, so this is, uh, this is an experiment for us. This is the first time that we've, we've done this, so thanks for bearing with us. Um, okay, so, so thanks again for those reports. Moving right along here, we've had, um, let's see, at, at least three people that I've seen join us. So um, welcome to Josh Anderson, Tiffany Anderson, and uh, Angelito Tenorio. I hope I'm saying your name right. If not, please do correct me. Um, also, if, so Josh and Tiffany, if you could introduce yourselves real quick um, with your names, where you're located, and is this your first Green Party meeting? And uh, Angelito, we actually had you up next along with our other um, office holders, candidates, and um, let's see, uh, office holders and candidates, I think was, was up. oh, and recent candidates as well. Um, so we have some folks who just got done uh, running and you know, we'd love to hear uh, in brief about their experience. Uh, so I will turn it over to Barb, uh, our elections committee chair, uh, just to facilitate that. And um, yeah, take it away, Barb. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we had a question come in anyway about the elections committee. Uh, first of all, I want to recognize that the people on the elections committee are, bes besides me, are Dave, uh, Adam Kasalki, Barbara Eisenberg, uh, Jeff Reese, Dennis Boyer, and uh, Tom Rodman. And we're often joined by the Greater Milwaukee Green Party co-chair, um, Mike McAllister. So thank you to all those people. And the question was, uh, who is who run for office and who is in office, which is a great introduction to the folks who uh, are about to speak with us. Um, so I am an elected official in the Conservation Congress. Uh, so is Mariah Robinson for this year. Her term should have been up, but because of the circumstances, uh, next year there will be a lot of extra elections. So if you or anybody you know is interested in environmental issues and would like to dip your toes into running for office, this one is a really good one to run for. Another person we have here today who is in, who is holding office currently in the Wisconsin Conservation Congress is Julie De La Terre. So thanks to all the Greens who are uh, in that office right now um, and people who are interested in the future. We also have Bob Peterson who we ran last year for uh, Greater Milwaukee or Milwaukee School Board and won. Uh, Adam Kasalki ran again for school board this year in Greenfield. Um, he did not place, but uh, we suspect that there were some voting issues besides just the general chaos. He said that at least 60 people who are going to vote for him told told them that they didn't even get their absentee ballots until after the election. Um, Alex Brower, who you will meet in a minute, uh, ran for city comptroller uh, just this February. Eric Hildeman, who you will meet in a minute, is currently running for um, 17th District Assemblyman. Tiffany Anderson, who we just met, ran for Lieutenant Governor a few years ago. Um, in Madison, we had several people run last year for city council, including Satya Rhodes Conway, the mayor, who is currently the mayor. We also had Ali Muldrow, Ananda Marilli, Patrick Heck, Matthew Mitnick, Diane Farsetta, Grant Foster, Marsha Rummel. Uh, all of these people ran for office and uh, most of them won their seats. Um, and if you're interested in hearing more from them, we actually have links back from uh, last spring's meeting where they all had, uh, they came to speak to us about running for office and how, um, how it is uh, actually serving. Um, we had Bobby Gifford run this uh, spring again. He's been on the, uh, he's been 
on the county board by Stevens Point for years, and he is one again. Uh, Todd Allen Price was a new candidate for Kenosha School Board. Um, Jim O'Neill was also a new school board candidate. So we, we have lots of candidates running and many of these races people are either continuously winning if they're already in office or winning for the first time. So congratulations to all these people um, for, for giving it their best shot and for all of the votes that they're winning for first time runners. Um, and congratulations to all the people who actually win as well and um, and continue on to make those differences. So um, with that said, I think I I will first introduce Alex Brower, who ran for Milwaukee City Comptroller. Uh, Alex, take it away. Barbara, thank you. I really, I really appreciate the invitation. I uh, was honored to be endorsed by the Green Party uh, from my election this spring. I ran for city comptroller for the city of Milwaukee. Uh, to my knowledge, Milwaukee is the only city in, in Wisconsin that does elect a comptroller. Um, and it's a very unique uh, position. Um, unfortunately, I didn't make it through the February 18th nonpartisan primary. I came up just a few thousand votes short of moving on to the April 7th general election. But I think there's um, some victory to look at in there too. Um, despite the electoral defeat, I ran as a, um, uh, open socialist in this race, and I received 26% of the vote in the primary, 15,248 votes, um, which to my knowledge is more than um, any other socialist has received running for citywide office besides Bob Peterson last spring. So we're really, you know, making a lot of difference. In, and in my election, I talked about, um, you know, issues that we care about. Uh, last summer, I, uh, when I was formulating my campaign. I had the privilege of sitting down with Barbara and she invited me to join the uh, Green Party here and I decided to um, decided to do that and to, and to run as a Green Party endorsed candidate and I really I don't regret that at all. I think it's really important for us to be developing alternatives to the corporate system right now and, and people are looking for that. Uh, uh, Dave Schwab, you really said it well earlier um, in your address that the that the people are really looking for alternatives. And so I think that while I didn't wasn't successful in my race, um, we really did raise a lot of issues. The issues that we raised were issues of using the comptroller's office to fight for um, uh, an economy that works for everybody through public banking. And we also were advocating for the Green New Deal through the replacement of our utility, We Energies, with the municipal one. And those are both ideas that uh, were, were called extreme by a lot of mainstream folks, um, but we were able to, to win a significant percentage of the vote in the primary. So did I touch on what I'm supposed to address, Barbara? Yeah, you're doing great. <laughs> okay, cool, thank you. Well, and so, and I really, you know, the, the folks in the Green Party, um, we, it was a tremendous help to my campaign. And I'm really glad that I, um, of, of Besides, setting aside DSA, the Green Party was one of one of the organizations that really came um, to help out my campaign, and I really do appreciate it. Thank you all so much. Seriously, we got we got to keep fighting. We can't stop. We've got to win this. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming, Alex. And um, Dave, did I cut you off? Nope. I was just saying, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, and I, I just want to say, I was at Alex's victory party, and it was like a victory party. People uh, were not, didn't feel as as defeated as you might think. Everybody stayed so long that like we all had to get kicked out at the end because the building was closing. Um, everybody was still talking about politics the whole night, being like, so what are we going to do now? Uh, what's the next step? and really continuing those uh, relationships that we all fostered through uh, Alex bringing us all together in that, uh, in that campaign setting. And even so, it's lasted uh, much longer than that. And I, I think that all these relationships continue on and really that is the grassroots work that we uh, always promote. So 
thank you, Alex. And um, I think that we should move on to Angelito Tenorio. Thank you for coming. And um, I'm really excited that you have just become my first district uh, alderman in West Dallas. So congratulations again and go, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, Bob, for inviting me to speak. And thank you so much to the Green Party for supporting my campaign. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, like my family, I'm the son of immigrants. My family came to the United States um, in hopes of finding a better life. And they came to Wisconsin and they came to West Dallas. And they just fell in love with the community here, the neighborhood here, and decided they want to raise a family in West Dallas. Um, and they really instilled in me like the value of giving back to the community, being altruistic, um, and supporting the people around you. And like to me, I did my undergrad at Madison, so that's where I first got interested in politics. And actually something a lot of people um, don't know about me, when I was a student at Madison, I actually ran for, I was a Green Party candidate for Dane County Board in Madison. Um, and I, I, I lost that race four years ago. Um, so that's why I think it's really important to just keep going at it. I, I encourage the candidates who may not win their first election to keep going at it because like the issues we talk about, the values that we have is really important. Um, and I learned a lot from that race and the skills and what I learned from that race, I brought to my race back home here in West Dallas. And to be honest, like I know a lot of people don't enjoy um, knocking on doors and making phone calls, but it was such a rewarding experience for me. And it, it always will be just, just being on the ground, talking about what we care about. And for me, that's like the environment, anti-racism, um, um, social justice, grassroots, participatory government, um, where everyone can get involved. And that's why people supported um, my campaign and, that, and that's why we we're able to just gather around a common cause and and that, that inspires me moving forward because like a lot of people get caught up in partisan politics but when you talk about the issues and our common values that's what brings people together so I'm super excited about all the great work we'll do here in West Dallas and I'm really grateful to have the support of the Green Party because I, I've, I've learned a lot um, since I first ran for office four years ago in Madison and to where I am today here in West Dallas. So thank you so much, everyone. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Angelito. And um, again, uh, it's really fantastic, all of the people that Angelito brought together uh, in, in his race as well. Uh, for those of you who d are not really familiar with West Dallas, even though we are in Milwaukee County, it's not really part of, of like the deep blue uh, area that is Milwaukee. Uh, we have a lot of very conservative people in this area. And for those of you around the state who live in these conservative districts, I don't want people to be demoralized to think that your neighbors wouldn't support the issues that we have um, because of that. In fact, they're probably more inclined than some folks who are deep blue to support um, clean water and uh, other kinds of environmental issues that you might have and, and justice issues that you might have. So um, really, it's incredibly encouraging to see that we're winning, not only in the places that we find to, that seem most progressive, but also those, those areas that are a bit more conservative. And with that, um, let's move it over to Eric Hildeman who uh, is just beginning his campaign, and uh, he can tell us a little bit about what he's, he's working on right now. We can't hear you, Eric, you're muted. <laughs> Is Eric muted? Okay, can you hear me now all right? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, one moment. Uh, I apologize, I've kind of been multitasking a little bit. Okay, there is uh, another video conference I've got going on that I set up beforehand concurrently. Um, my name's Eric Hildeman, I'm running for the uh, 17th Assembly District. Uh, 
in Milwaukee. And this is a very interesting race because uh, essentially um, this was the district that used to be held by uh, David Crowley. I say used to be held because uh, he technically has uh, won the election for county executive. Uh, well, technically he did win. Uh, and that means that uh, he, although he is still the assemblyman uh, for District 17 and will be to the end of his term uh, in the beginning of 2021, his uh, victory means that uh, he may be wearing two hats up until the time that he's done with. And so far, I have not seen any information that indicates that anybody in the Democratic Party has yet uh, submitted uh, their bid for District 17 to replace him. So it's possible that I might just win this by default, being the only candidate. Um, that means that I have to work very hard on getting enough signatures to get on the ballot. And uh, boy, would I appreciate any help there. Am I coming through? I'm not. Uh... Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> there was such a pause there. I was wondering uh, what was going on. I thought Barb was going to say something. Uh, but yeah, thank you, Eric. Okay. Yeah, great. Yeah, thank you for running. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today. I, feel, I think that we took you away from another meeting at the same time, too. I, I apologize about that. <laughs> no, that's quite all right. That wasn't your fault. And uh, I'm happy to participate in both. And uh, uh, it's... Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll leave it at that. So uh, just to let everybody know, uh, Eric went through our candidate um, vetting process, which basically he filled out a questionnaire. Um, that's just our general questionnaire. Then the elections committee uh, reviewed that, um, made a recommendation to the coordinating council. The coordinating council uh, voted uh, in a approval and that's what made him a green candidate specifically. So uh, if we were to have primaries, we could possibly have multiple green candidates running in the same race, but that's it's uh, not something that we've really had to deal with too much yet. Um, either way, uh, that's really the process. So if people are interested in running, uh, that's the way to go. Also, uh, if anybody's interested in helping with Eric's campaign uh, with the petitioning or just help with the elections committee in general, look to the chat and I will put my information in there. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thank you again. Thanks for coming. Oh, I'll be hanging around for a little bit, okay? Uh, the other video chat that I've got going on right now is not going to last uh, beyond... Uh, probably 12.30 at the latest. Okay, so I'm gonna be with you guys all the way until the end. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so. Eric, can uh, you say what you're running for again, please? Sorry, I was distracted. I'm running for District 17 for the Wisconsin State Assembly. Um, and uh, I've got a three point platform that uh, starts with election reform. Uh, the second is uh, reproductive rights, and the third is just ending the right-wing lies that uh, the right-wing media has been getting away with for so very long. Awesome, thank you. All right, thank you. All right, awesome, thanks. And as I think Barb mentioned before, uh, our elections committee has been very active, and um, you know, if folks are interested in, in running for office, then uh, please do get in touch with us. And, you know, we have just a sort of simple process uh, for seeking the Green Party endorsement. Um, so, yeah, let us know. And, um, you know, thanks everyone for uh, sharing your stories. Um, so, right now we are almost on schedule. Uh, so why don't we keep going here um, next up, we have voting on party business and then, you know, we had planned to take a lunch break at 1145, uh, and then reconvene at 1230. We're going to try to stick to that. So very quickly, we'll talk about voting on party business. Um, so first of all is how to vote. Um, so everyone who is, has, 
uh, RSVP'd for this meeting and who is a member in good standing, which means that they are a dues paying member um, and their dues are current, they've paid within the last year, uh, is eligible to vote. Um, so um, everyone at this meeting, uh, as part of the registration process, uh, hopefully has had a chance to um, pay your dues. Um, if not, then now is the perfect time. And you know, maybe someone could put a link in the chat. Um, and so every member in good standing will be sent, a, will be emailed, I should say, a ballot um, that they will be able to vote on. There are three things that we're voting on today on that ballot. Um, one is your um, preferences for the presidential nomination. Um, another is uh, your preferences for delegates from the Wisconsin Green Party to the Green National Convention, um, which is also our presidential nominating convention. And uh, the third is a proposed amendment to our Wisconsin Green Party bylaws, um, which has to do with lowering the threshold for voting um, or for decision making from two thirds to 60%. So I mentioned that briefly before. Um, we'll have a little more discussion on that in just a minute. So the way that we vote is uh, called rank choice voting. Um, hopefully many people are familiar with it. Um, if, if anyone is unfamiliar with it, the brief explanation is that you rank your choices in your order of preference. Um, so your number one choice gets your first rank. Uh, you're not, then you can rank a number two choice so that if your number one choice um, does not win and then is eliminated from the running, uh, your vote will still count uh, for your number two choice. And if your number two choice then is eliminated, then your vote can still count for a number three choice, and so on and so forth. So this means that you know every vote counts. Um, you can vote for whoever you want, and if you don't get your first choice, then hopefully you'll get your second or your third. Um, so candidates aren't splitting the vote. No candidate can win without uh, support from the majority of voters, and. Um, yeah, basically that is, um, how we encourage voting in all of our elections. So we practice it here in the Green Party. Um, we also have an option that has been a source of a little bit of confusion. So I'll just touch on it briefly. Um, we give people the option to vote none of the above. Um, that can be a little confusing in the context of, of ranked choice voting. So you can think of it as none of the below. Um, so for example, you can put your first choice first and then your second choice second, and then your third choice may be none of the above, meaning that you would prefer no candidate to any of the other options on the ballot. Um, so, um, if anyone has, has questions about that, uh, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, and hopefully some of our party members can, you know, answer those in the chat. Um, but it's never been a, a big, uh, source of confusion or problems before. So, uh, hopefully it won't be a big issue today. Um, so we have, uh, a ballot with our, okay. So there are questions coming in. I'll, I'll ignore the temptation to read them. Uh, hopefully people can answer them in the chat. Um, if there's still confusion, then. Uh, we can address them. So um, we have, again, our presidential nominating convention we'll hear later on from uh, at least two of our recognized presidential candidates uh, who have agreed to come here and speak with us today. Um, and also uh, we will open the floor uh, basically now for self-nominations for uh, to be a delegate to the presidential nominating convention. 
Um, so maybe uh, I'm not remembering the, the exact dates off the top of my head. It's in um, uh, mid July, I believe. Um, uh, the weekend of the 12th. Okay, thank you. So yeah, July 12th, 13th. Um, it was originally scheduled to be that weekend in Detroit. Um, now with the pandemic, as Bruce mentioned before, the National Party has not yet made a decision. Um, okay, and we're seeing from DATSA that it will be virtual. Um, so I think, uh, thanks DATSA. All right, so um, if the meeting is virtual, then it is less important that um, people are able to actually attend in person and more just they're willing to make the commitment uh, to attend the virtual uh, presidential nominating convention uh, the weekend of uh, July 12th and 13th. Um, and it actually goes for, uh, it typically starts on Thursday afternoon, goes through Friday, and then um, I believe the, the vote is usually on Saturday and then it ends on Sunday. Um, so ideally, people would be willing to attend for multiple days. Um, but the, the most important thing is the ability to attend that weekend. So um, people are able to self-nominate as delegates uh, to the national convention. Um, your name will go on the ballot. You can uh, you know, make a brief case, either uh, speaking or you can just type something in the chat. Uh, about uh, why you would like to be a delegate, why you uh, you know feel that you could do the job, um, and the official job of our delegates, uh, as I understand it, is to cast our presidential preference votes uh, at the national convention. And um, so, the question: How many delegates are we electing? Um, I believe it is four, is that correct? Yes. Okay, thanks Barb. Um, yeah, so we'll be electing four delegates. Um, and also, um, at least in the past, there's always been the option to attend, even if you're not a delegate. Uh, and I, I believe that will also be the case this year. Um, although, I haven't been part of the, uh, the planning process of the virtual convention. Uh, I do believe that other people will be able to attend, even if you're not elected as a delegate. But if you definitely would like to go and you definitely would you know, want to participate in that way, um, Bill says, how about nominating someone rather than self-nominating? Um, that is also an option. Uh, they would have to accept the nomination, obviously, to be placed on the ballot. Um, yeah, but also please don't be shy about self-nominating. We do it all the time here. Um, so uh, I want to give people just a few minutes to think about uh, whether they want to self-nominate to be a delegate to a national convention. And so we can touch on the last item that will be on the ballot. Um, so this is a proposed change to the Wisconsin Green Party bylaws. Um, currently, our method of voting uh, is that if we um, can't reach consensus on an item, we can call a vote. And to pass the item, it takes two-thirds yes votes, or at least two-thirds yes votes. Um, so, for example, if you have three no votes, you would need uh, six yes votes for something to pass. Uh, abstain votes are, are possible, but they don't count towards that calculation. Um, so with 100 people voting, you would need 67 people voting yes to pass an item, uh, as one example. Uh, this bylaws change would change that from 2 thirds to 60%. Uh, so for a decision to pass, it needs at least 60%. Uh, yes votes. Um, and 
Yeah, so using the same example, 100 people voting, you would need 60 yes votes um, would pass the item. So uh, I'm not exactly a neutral presenter here because I proposed this amendment, <laughs> uh, but I'll explain the background and then we can open it up to a little bit of discussion. Uh, I still do want us to get a lunch break at 1145 so people can feel free to um, you know, go and get lunch at 11.45. Uh, if others want to stay around and have some discussion and make their voice heard on this issue, then that's also an option. But we, you know, we wanna make sure that we um, give people both the break and give people a chance to, to discuss. So anyway, I will give the, the pro case for um, this bylaws change. Uh, so, Originally in the Wisconsin Green Party bylaws, uh, the process was to try to achieve consensus, um, but if a vote had to be called, then you needed an 80% vote to pass something. Um, so in recent years, we've had discussion about how, while consensus is ideal, um, it often doesn't work as well in practice as it's intended to. And what you get instead of consensus is um, sort of a, a process that is inherently conservative and resistant to change. Um, one way of looking at it is that if 80% of people vote for something, then it, you know, it's very popular and that's sort of like democracy plus consensus. But what that also means is that, you know, just 25% or 21% of people who are voting can block change. Um, and sometimes change is, is needed. Uh, so, but we basically, um, in the party, we did have consensus to lower the threshold from 80% to two thirds. Um, and the discussion has continued since then. Uh, people have brought up that, uh, Okay, so I see Bruce is on stack, um, but I'll just finish what I'm saying here. So the National Party uh, makes decisions based on a two thirds majority and uh, as well as some other state parties. And there have been problems with that too. Uh, for example, there have been votes where uh, an item will get over 60% yes votes, but fall short of the two thirds majority. Again, you can have a case where basically 35% of people overrule the will of 65% of people. Um, and, you know, I think there still is an understandable case for not going to just a bare majority uh, because especially numbers and attendance can fluctuate. And if you have a situation where people can um, you know, make changes with just 50% plus one, then you can get to situations where the party is more split and uh, you know, six people can overrule five people and um, you know, that, that can discourage consensus building and encourage factionalism. Uh, but at the same time, we don't want to be overly conservative and sort of empower um, people in the party who want to prevent change when it's clear that a sizable majority uh, does want change. And we've had um, you know, a number of things, including changes to our platform that had over 60% support, but didn't pass for that reason. Um, so uh, we have some people on stack, but I think you know, I'll, I'll just close by saying I, I believe two thirds has worked well, um, but you know, it still is a little bit um, extreme for where we need to go, especially as we grow. And, and I feel like going to 60% um, is, a, is a good move that um, most people can be happy with. So I'll, I'll pass with that and we can go to the stack um, so have Bruce and then Greg. Bruce, you want to go ahead? 
Okay. Um, I'm a trained consensus facilitator, trained by one of the best. And also, I've studied Robert's Rules of Order. Actually, got a three credit course in it. Uh, consensus works very well with a number of groups, but you need to have very strong common bonds. It can't be a group that's that's has very lot of diverse opinion in it. And the other thing with true consensus is it takes time, and we often don't have that even at meetings like today. So I have no problem with going to a lower threshold. And uh, I agree that uh, just a sure majority vote would probably lead to some factionalism. But the actual thing is that in the entire history of this party, the state party, very seldom have there been any really controversial issues that uh, most of the time we just agree by consensus. You know, uh, maybe once we start getting meetings of four or 500 people, but uh, this is meeting online is pretty nice because it's like one of the biggest meetings we've had in a long time at a statewide level. So uh, I'm in favor of this proposal. Oh, and the other thing is that the National Party uses a two-thirds majority for most of the important decision-making, which I will agree with David. makes it very hard to change anything. All the rules, all the platform positions, everything requires two-thirds. There are some things that require only a simple majority, but those are very few. So the idea I brought up earlier about uh, going to a dues-paying national party, which is favored by Holly Hawkins and a lot of people, uh, will be very difficult because we'll need to get two-thirds of the delegates to change our bylaws for all that to happen at the national level. Pass. Thanks, Bruce. Um, so we have Greg and then Barb on the stack. I'll pass. Okay. Uh, so Greg passed, if I heard correctly. Um, and then Barb, go ahead. Yeah, uh, well, just in context, um, a lot of us, uh, whenever these meetings come around again during the year, we start looking through our bylaws again. And just like any other written document, it's moving towards perfection, but it's not quite there yet. So a lot of people have been thinking of different things that could um, really be improved. And um, we've had situations in the past where things get very contentious over uh, small pieces of language change, uh, whether or not it, it really was a huge change uh, in context of the whole document or in context of how we run. Uh, but these things can take a lot of time and we only get to meet a couple of times a year like this. So um, with that said, really this kind of change could move our process along a lot quicker so that we we could make those changes um, and really feel like we accomplished a whole lot during meetings like this. So I'm fully in support and I'll pass. Thanks. Thanks, Barb. All right. I see we also have some comments in the chat uh, from people. So I encourage everyone to read those. Um, all right. So right now we're at 1145. So right on time, I want to give people the chance to take your lunch break. Uh, we'll reconvene at 12.30. Um, so uh, I believe there's no problem if you leave the Zoom meeting going, uh, if you're okay with that. Or you could leave the meeting and then call back in at 12.30 if you prefer. Um, so um, yeah. And if people want to continue speaking about this or have any other questions, uh, they can feel free to stick around for a little bit. Um, there's a question, does anyone want to speak against this proposed change? Or you know, does anyone have any unresolved concerns? Uh, second question, has the sign-in sheet been fixed?
Um, so that's a question probably from Monty or Tom. Has, has the sign-in sheet been fixed? Uh, <clears throat> Tom Stack. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, so uh, yeah, there were multiple issues with it. Uh, and uh, I think I've moved forward. However, um, I need somebody to test it. It's hard for me because I got too much you know, in the way of power. Um, I can do that. Well, you have to, yeah, to do it as a anonymous person. Um, so yeah, why don't you wait and we'll give you an, an update. Yeah, uh, I was just hoping, you know, ideally we can all get signed in over lunch. Oh, and then, uh, right, one other thing, I don't know if people are aware that we, the streaming is apparently working to YouTube, uh, and I put the link in the URL, and I mean, I'm sorry, in the chat, and I also put it on the Spring Gathering page on the main website. But okay, when, when we're done, the uh, entire meeting will probably go up on Facebook and the uh, YouTube as well. Greg Stack. Go ahead, Greg. Uh, on your first question, Dave, if we're going to have a discussion about consensus, I would hope that it wouldn't be during lunch period where some people would be there and some people wouldn't. Pass. Okay. Um, so, I mean, regarding the, the current rules change, um, I, yeah, people are, are sort of free to continue speaking about it if they want. People are free to put their comments in the chat section as well. Um, and we're encouraging everyone to read the chat just to see what, what everyone is saying. Um, but yeah. I will say, you know, we did tell people there'd be a lunch break at 11.45, that we're going to reconvene at 12.30, um, you know, and we are trying to respect people's time and stick to the schedule. So, uh, yeah, so we're just trying to balance being able, you know, everyone being able to be heard with being able to get to all the things that we need to get to. Um, so, right. and because this is such an important thing, you know, this is our decision making process. I'm just hoping that we could, if we're not done discussing it, that we could discuss it after lunch. Okay. Um, so there will be a little bit of time after lunch. We'll reconvene. Then we have uh, some announcements. Um, those shouldn't take terribly long. Uh, then we will talk about a call for volunteers, committee members, and local organizers. If there's leftover time before the presidential forum, then we can continue this discussion. Uh, but we do have to start the presidential forum right at one to, you know, respect the time of our presidential candidates. So hopefully um, that'll work for everyone. So... Um, Okay, so people really want to leave for lunch. So let's adjourn. Um, just, well, Barb is on the stack. So let's hear from Barb and then let's adjourn for now. I, I just want to quickly remind everybody that um, because of the way our bylaws changes work, we did already have a discussion period for this topic last fall. Um, pretty much we had the same discussion that we had today, except for some concern that um of the of the a possible like um slippery slope that we could end up with uh less and less people needed uh for a, a vote to pass that was I, i'd say that's a pretty uh that's kind of the characteristic of what happened last fall but pretty much we had over an hour conversation about this last fall so I don't feel like we have um, we have to take all day on this topic. Everybody has the cho the chance to vote on it. People can put things in the chat. We did ask for um, any comments, and people stayed pretty quiet. So um, I think that our plan is 
is good. And if anybody is uh, really compelled to speak about it, we will uh, we'll probably have a few minutes after lunch to speak. But thanks, everyone. And um, I'm ready for lunch. <laughs> yeah. And if, if you really want to share some comments, please put them in the chat. We will encourage everyone to read the chat, but we also want everyone to, to get their lunch and not feel like they have to stay for more discussion. So, so thanks everyone. Um, um, I'd like to say one last thing. Uh, it looks like the, uh, the site in form is working. Uh, please feel free to do so over lunch. Great. If you could post the link one more time, that'd be perfect. Absolutely. Um, actually, Tom, can you do that? I don't know how to post a link that doesn't give edit. Sorry, so everyone can leave, but I wanted to answer also a question about the none of the above thing that came in earlier um, because I realized we didn't get to that yet. So it said, if you select the none of the above option, if you only want to vote for a select few of the candidates rather than ranking all of them, that's a great way to put it. Yeah, if, if you have a first choice and then a second choice, but then you say, well, I don't have a third choice. I would rather just have no one than any of the other candidates. Then you would put none of the above third. Um, so I hope that clears it up. And voting will happen uh, later today after we get self nominations for delegates to the, to the national convention. Then we'll have all the information we need for our ballot and we'll send it out to all members in good standing. Um, so Hope that helps. Um, any other questions, put them in the chat and enjoy your lunch. Yeah, I have a, this is Kurt Bolton. I have a question for 612, 612-64913. Six one two nine six four nine one three. I don't know who your name is. Could you identify yourself? Yeah, my name is Farheen Akeem. I keep getting cut off and oh, Farheen. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll make um, sure but uh, hey, listen, I actually don't have access. Hello. Hang on. Yeah. Hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. Let me just shut my, shut my phone off, Farheen. What was that again? I don't have access to any of the links on the chat. Like, do I have to go to a computer to do that? Or is there any other way I can, because I, I wanted to donate so I could become a voting member. I wanted to like sign up, but <laughs> it's the only way through, because I, I only sent an email to Barbara, like, hey, can you send me that? And uh, I didn't hear that. Okay, uh, why don't you give me, do you want me to send you an email? Yeah, that'd be great. With the links? Okay, what's your email address? It's a uh, hijabi cycle at gmail.com. I'll spell that for you. Wait, what's your name? Kurt Bolton. Oh, I don't have email. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I have Monty's email. I don't have David Schraub's. So, so anyways, my email is hijabi cycle. H is in Harold. I is in Iowa. I'll David tell you Joker. what. For me. Yeah. You want me to have Monty you give you the information? That'd be great. Okay, you were so you were looking for how to donate. Uh, yeah, and, I want to become a dues paying member so I can vote. Okay, Stay. so you want to know how to donate, and what was the other question? Sign up. Sign up. Okay, okay. for oh the sign up form. Okay, I got you. Yeah. All right, I will I will get in touch with him and have him get back to you. Thanks. All righty. Bye bye. <laughs> I see the email. I'll send her the link to. Oh, I don't thank have to you, ask thank Monty you, then. Thank you.
But if anybody wants me, I am still available by audio. Hey Tom, hey Monty, Curtis, how are you guys doing? Pretty oh, good, pretty good. good. Is that you? Is that you, Mary? It's me. Yeah. No, nobody's getting sick over there. Y'all staying well? Uh, I, I tell people uh, I'm ninety six point eight, and that's not my IQ. Okay. <laughs> almost, uh, almost. Wait, am I? Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> almost all my social world is just like this. <laughs> yeah, me too. My job is just like this. Um, I'm actually doing today. I'm doing something very similar in a way. I I support uh, Comcast security systems over the phone from right here in my house. Wow! And uh, so this is just a, a complex uh, trouble call. I mean, uh, the, uh, what do you call it? Super cool. Uh, I can't remember the core word for what it is I do. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's just, just, just it's putting things in chat and looking things up and making sure I checked every window very much when it worked, which is kind of nice because I could actually enjoy it and I feel like I know what I'm doing. Well, staying home for your work is all right with you. Yeah, the commute uh, of five or six feet here is is the <laughs> bed. Is is pretty nice. It's hard to argue with, even in well, particularly at you know twelve below January mornings. But uh, especially like right now, I, I'm still drawing a check. You know, nothing's changed for me, except that uh, I'm not going out to protests and green meetings and. So I, I'm I'm actually pretty happy with the way this is forcing half the country to get more used to Zoom. We, <laughs> uh, even if we don't use Zoom, uh, I think we lost Julie. Oh, she let it go. I don't see her anymore, and and she's she's, she's wanting back. something more secure. Yeah. Um, as far as I'm concerned, if somebody wants us wants a record is bad enough, they're in the meeting. You know, it's not that hard uh, to get a plant into the Green Party. So I don't, I don't tend to worry about that unless Tom's it's... Muted. What? Tom's lips are moving, but he's muted. Yeah. Tom, you're muted. He's probably talking to somebody else then. Oh. But that's that's kind of what I mean. Like, it's like work. Is I'm, I'm used to having all these back channels while I'm dealing with the front channel. And uh, by the time I do this again, I'll be good at it, but we'll probably be doing it totally differently. <laughs> well, 
I just wanted to check in for a minute. I'm going to go do a lunch. Oh, oh, good. Yeah, I'm trying to cook my dinner without burning it now that you mentioned it. <laughs> All right. Take care, Mary. Back at you. See you in a little while. All right. Yeah, it's kind of weird how when I'm in this zone, even though my kitchen is only 10 feet away, I, I forget I'm cooking in there. Burn stuff all the time. But I got to say, this has got to be getting uh, people stir crazy because even I'm feeling that way now. And I'm used to staying home and doing nothing. The biggest issue with this virtual background thing is it won't display the entire picture unless you pick one of the pictures it comes with. I'm not sure how to fix that. I stand corrected. You just have to have a picture of the right shape. I'm going to turn my video off so you don't have to watch me eat money. Oh, that's all right. I was kind of planning on having to say a thing happened. <laughs> but maybe I'll just join you in that. Yeah, just I hear you. Figure out how to. Well, at least I finally figured out how to get a picture display right, and that is to make it the right shape. <laughs> and flip it. If you want it to have tags, you got to flip it. So, oh, kill, kill, right. kill. Luckily, you can delete these real easy. There's a D phone in the waiting room and I'm letting them in. Hello, D phone, can you hear me? Hello, new member. Hello. 
Yeah, I just wanted to say hi. Um, we're currently at lunch. We're taking a lunch break. Uh, oh, okay. And I was hoping to uh, edit your name to represent who you are, if you don't mind me asking. Uh, this is Dennis Lambert. Oh, thank you. And let me get that done for you. Well, welcome aboard. Um, if you look at the uh, agenda, I think we're on. I, I, I haven't. All right, I don't well, let me just tell you, a lunch break was at uh, 11.45, reconvened 12.30. Okay. I wasn't too sure what uh, time zone you guys were in. That's why I'm a little late getting to the phone call. Oh, sorry. Central. I just <laughs> realized why I recognize your name. <laughs> <Damn> <laughs> nice to meet you. Uh, it's nice to meet you, too. My name is Monty. Monty Latrano. Okay. Um, do you have a way to come in with video? Yeah, I'm driving right now, and I just don't want that additional distraction. Oh, heck no. Uh, heck no. <laughs> I'm actually going to go get an oil change because I've, I've been on the road for the last month and uh, haven't been able to uh, do well, regular maintenance on my vehicle. Well, if you get a chance, uh, before we bring you on to talk, I recommend you try to sign in with video, and please feel free to... He signed in twice if that's more convenient for you or not. Okay. And of course, if that's not possible, uh, about half our half our attendance is by audio only anyway. But we are putting a, a video on the uh, uh, what well, we're streaming live on on YouTube and and putting up the result when we're done on uh, Facebook, just so you know. This is me driving. Fortunately, oh, that's good. Stoplight. I'm making lunch, so don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. And everybody else who's bothering to figures, we got about. Uh, <coughs> actually, let me do a count. Five, six, by five. We got 29 people attending at the moment. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah, it's actually pretty nice. We're doing better than we usually do, and I step forward. But we also like to meet in person, of course. But we have yeah, a lot I've, of people who probably wouldn't be here otherwise. Unfortunately, where I live, uh, there's no internet service. Uh, oh, the really? Only, the only thing I can get would be satellite, and they want to charge me $80 a month or uh, throttled service and you only could get uh, yeah five and satellites satellites are really hard for an app like this epic at a situation like this because it it uh it has huge lag time the signal yeah. going back up to the satellite and back down every time um introduces quite a bit of lag that people aren't used to of course when you're given a monologue it doesn't matter that much <laughs> yeah, uh, the Appalachian Regional Commission has uh, granted my electric company, uh, I think, five million dollars to uh, build a uh, internet infrastructure in the rural counties where it, it serves that we don't have service. But yeah, uh, I was recently in in a county where I had to uh, <laughs> I I had to rent an office in town to yeah. to have this job that I have to, to you know and, and, it, and it was even hardly any better than but but the, the the connection that I had at my house was about as bad as a wired connection can be and uh so to get this job I considered going on satellite but it just I could never every single customer calling me up would be like are you still there <laughs> are you there are you gonna answer me no I would pick up the job a week, but yeah, they told uh, us it'll be five years before they have uh, uh, any internet out out towards us. Well, I could say uh, good chunks of Wisconsin are like that. Um, although most mostly Wisconsin has service, but we still have some places that are entirely off the entire set of grids. 
and uh, and they don't. But even even where I, again where I was, I I uh, I had had to had to spend an extra. I, I spent a, a, over a third of my wages commuting into town and renting an office there and paying for another connection, and it was hardly any better. But it was enough to keep me from barely enough to keep me from getting fired for it. <laughs> and that's just not right, you know. It's uh, it's hard enough to get a job in these areas nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> And to not, not only that, I mean, we, I've got a, like a five mile radius around my house where I don't even have a cell phone signal. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's rough. I uh, <coughs> I'm with my current cell phone company because uh, you could walk up onto our porch if you had Verizon and if it was a good day and you had a nice phone, you could walk all the way up on our porch. When you open the door, you lose the signal, and then in the house. <laughs> It's only Wi-Fi available. Nobody, no phone company penetrates into that trailer. And so I uh, had to get one of the first available ways to transit back and forth between Wi-Fi and, uh, and, this, and the cell. And it just plain, uh, you know, it, 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 at, least I, at least you could get to my door. <laughs> I didn't have your situation. <laughs> Well, I'll call you back in 10 minutes. That's crazy. Well, that's not even, that's probably more like 15 minutes. And uh, I don't know. It, it's rough. And, and Wisconsin keeps talking about working on that, but it's it's just kind of just a little bit at a time, you know. They never yeah. really take a chomp out of it. Hopefully now that we have a non-Republican in office, or governor, that might change. But people just don't realize. I've I mean, only, it's, sorry. I've only been to one Wisconsin one time when I was in the uh, Army Reserves. We did a uh, our uh, two weeks of training up there. Yes, sir. Yeah, I I was there uh, once myself when I was uh again in yeah, national guard and uh i think it's actually up there twice once as reservists once as a guardsman um it's it's someplace most people in wisconsin don't know anything about it's kind of like oh, somehow tucked away in a corner as big as it is and it's such your center of the state pretty much <laughs> um, i thought it was mostly a groundhog habitat Oh yeah, it's a good call. <laughs> good call. But yeah, the, uh, uh, one of the when last... I was up there, people were asking me if I was related to any of the people that own the cranberry bogs because my last name Lambert. Apparently, there's a couple oh, people who are a couple families is. that own cranberry bogs. There is, yeah, yeah, and uh, <laughs> one of the last things of note I did up there uh, was find a badger that I had suspected was in the yard for about five years. Um, you could kind of tell because they widen the uh, 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 groundhog holes, and um, almost got in a fight with my dog. <laughs> uh, but at the very last minute, when it was about to get nasty, pull him off. It's really weird to watch a badger uh, get ready to defend itself. It ends up looking like a carpet. It, it looks exactly like a, a you know, a stereotype bear carpet. Are you guys talking about Fort McCoy? Yeah, actually. Yes? Yep. Okay. Are you aware yep. that every fourth Tuesday, there's a group of people who've been going there to um, help hold a vigil against the drone training for... I did not. Years? Yeah, I haven't, I haven't been anywhere near it for uh, over a year now, and... Just to say it's not fully forgotten by everybody? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't live in Tulma or the whole area there without knowing all about it. But when I first went up there from Milwaukee at the ripe old age of early mid-20s, maybe even late mid-20s, I, I was kind of amazed that this huge thing was here in the middle of the state and nobody talks about it in Milwaukee. 
it's not really middle, but it's close enough that don't know what else to call it. Middle West. Anyways, I'm going to eat now, so my mic is going dead. Happy lunch hour, everyone.
All right, everyone, it's almost 1230. So we are almost ready to get back started up here. I'm sure some people are still having lunch, so expect people will drift back in. Um, All right, so it looks like the sign-in sheet is working now. So everyone, please make sure to sign in so we can make sure that we have everyone's info. Just let uh, Ploof in again. I forgot the real name. Who's Ploof? Okay, so we had him renamed before. Oh, it looks like they yeah. didn't actually come in. They must have been waiting too long. Let me go ahead and see if I can uh, fix that. Um, go. Oh, is that you, Jeff? Are you Ploof? Yeah, yeah. I'm. That stands for Prairie Lakes UU Fellowship. So there you go. There we go. I think I got it. Yeah. Okay. There. Can I have someone repost that link in the chat so I can try to sign in? Oh yeah, Monty, could you uh, or someone could you repost the uh, sheet in the chat? Thank you. Okay, and the bill that just joined, uh, is that Bill Bryan? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. There we go. Hmm. Oh, you renamed yourself. Thank you. All right. Well, I can hear people honking um, the no F 35 car caravan protest is happening here in Madison. Um, so that's good to hear. Um, I would definitely be there if I wasn't here. Uh, <laughs> we've been involved in the no F-35s thing and uh, man, people are not happy right now. But, um, so anyway, um, we are now posting on social media uh, the link to the live stream uh, so that people can share that around. Um, and so that folks will be able to watch on YouTube, um, the you know presidential forum in particular. Um, but also if anyone wants to, you know, participate or at least watch the meeting remotely, we've, you know, made it a, uh, try to make it a habit to live stream our state meetings uh, in recent years. Um, and while there's a huge protest against the safer at home order. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I'll just say that uh, for those of us who take science seriously, uh, <laughs> we're not having those kind of protests. Um, so, Normally, I, I would much prefer that people protest not in their cars, but in this case, you know, we have to make an exception. And at least they're making a lot of noise and annoying, uh, you know, the people who, you know, hopefully annoying the people who have made this decision um, to find, you know, making a lot of noise in poor and, uh, you know, communities of color here in our city. Uh, and poisoning our drinking water and all that. Um, so hopefully we'll get some results with that. All right, so now uh, we have some announcements to make. Um, as I mentioned, we are, um, you know, we have a live stream link up on YouTube. Uh, we've now shared that on the Wisconsin Green Party 
uh, Twitter account and Facebook page. So if folks are on Facebook and or Twitter, uh, please share those. Um, you know, particularly with any groups or, you know, any friends, allies, comrades who uh, you think would be interested in checking that out. Um, so another um, announcement that we have, uh, if anyone is, would like to uh, self-nominate themselves as a delegate to the presidential nominating convention, or if anyone would like to um, would like to nominate someone else, um, if you do want to nominate someone else, then that person would have to accept before being placed on the ballot. Um, and then, um, if folks can just put in the chat why they think they would be a you know a good delegate and you know uh, would like to do that, uh, fulfill that role. That would be helpful. Um, then, Barb, do you want to say a word about the mascot contest? Barb, are you back yet? Sure, I can say something about oh, that. Great, thank you. Um, so, we have been talking about this mascot um idea for a while and i see jennifer is holding up some a mascot that she made for us that's awesome um so for a long time i've said you know the other two parties have uh the donkey and the the elephant and we don't have an, a lively animal that um that really is our mascot in the Green Party. Um, and I thought that like this definitely should be pushed as a national thing um, eventually. But at least in the state of Wisconsin, it seems like I'm, I've been getting more and more support about getting a mascot that's an animal and particularly a turtle. And I thought that the turtle would be a, a really great representation of the Green Party in general. One, because a lot of them are green physically. Um, there are turtles all around the United States and we have some great turtles in Wisconsin. Uh, I really appreciate the snapping turtle person, personally. I, I love the snapping turtles that we can uh, see here out on our natural uh, bodies of water here. And they're also like a great representation of um, environmentalists and environmentalism. They're often a symbol of um, the environmental movement in general. And in, additionally, there's all these great metaphors um, and like this language about wisdom around turtles. Um, slow and steady wins the race. Um, it's a tortoise, but you know, people get the idea. So I've thought about this for a while and we had a proposal last year just for our state to seek out a mascot. And uh, we've been meaning to really bolster that competition and uh, get a whole bunch of entries. And so far, uh, Jennifer has her submission Nathan, uh, painted us turtles, which I, I should just put up on the website so everybody can see them. Um, but I, why don't I just commit to being the one to put up a page on our state website so that everybody can submit their turtle ideas uh, and then eventually we can vote on those as well. Um, so unless there's any questions, I think that pretty much sums it up. All right, thanks Barb. Yeah, and if anyone is interested in uh, you know participating and coming up with a with a turtle mascot for our contest, then get in touch with Barb. Um, <coughs> so then, um, next announcement. Okay, so we mentioned the national meeting, um, and uh, you know again that's been put a little bit in flux. It it now sounds like from what Dasa said. Um, that 
the plan is to um, hold a virtual meeting. Um, the Green Party website still says it's being held in Detroit. Uh, uh, so that is the weekend of July 9th through July 12th. Um, so it would be the 11th and 12th are the, uh, are the critical dates, the most critical dates, the, that Saturday and Sunday. Um, so, um, yeah, so again, if folks are interested in attending the national meeting and going as a delegate, then feel free to nominate yourself as a delegate. Feel free to, um, to nominate someone else and ask if they'll accept. Um, and we also wanted to make a little bit of space here for local meetings, announcements. Um, so typically in, uh, in Madison and Dane County, we have the Four Lakes Green Party meeting. Uh, we've been holding that the first Wednesday of the month. Uh, although we, you know, it, historically we've adjusted our meeting times based on what works best for the most uh, active members. Um, this month we actually uh, put it off a little bit as we sometimes do um, based on both the election and uh, just kind of on the you know chaos of the pandemic, um, and you know so we wanted to try to figure out how to have a virtual meeting. So our next Four Lakes Green Party meeting will be um, next Wednesday, uh, April twenty second, which just so happens to be Earth Day. Um, so I will. <coughs> uh, right now we just have a Facebook link. You know, we do also have a local email list where we send out those meeting announcements. Um, so I'll put that link, uh, at least to the Facebook event. And, you know, people who are in Madison, who are in Dane County, that area, uh, definitely please get in touch with me if you're interested in, um, you know, getting involved with our local chapter. Um, does someone from the Greater Milwaukee chapter want to make an announcement about when your next meeting will be? Uh, we meet on the second Saturday of the month. Uh, we had been meeting in libraries before the world changed. Uh, but uh, our next meeting will be probably on this very platform. Uh, again, on Saturday, uh, May 9th, uh, 1030 to 1230. Uh, we try to conduct business uh, uh, swiftly and judiciously, also uh, keeping, uh, uh, <clears throat> taking care of people's time. So, uh, and <clears throat> you can also go to uh, our Facebook page and, uh, and uh, the GMGP discussion, li uh, discussion list uh, I do not have those links handy right now, but uh, 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 drop me a line at workingwriter at prodigy.net if you need information. Great. All right, so... Um... So next up, uh, in terms of announcements, okay. And yeah, so we're almost at a quarter of one um, and we're going to try to start our presidential forum right at one so we can you know, get the full time in. Um, so um, We also wanted to make a call for volunteers, uh, committee members, and local organizers. So um, I'll just say briefly about our committees. Um, and we have a, a sign-up sheet uh, for our committees on the state party level. Um, so our committees are you know, where the work gets done. 
Um, and we have uh, a lot of people who are, you know, active members of the state party from around the state who participate in, in those committees. Um, the committees that we have currently um, are uh, elections, membership outreach, um, IT, communications, platform and policy, um, campaign training school, and finance. So I just um, posted in the chat, I should have identified what I was posting. Let me see if I can. Um, so, well, if someone can just post that and make it clear that it's the, uh, the committee sign up form. Um, and then, yeah, so if you're interested in any of those, I mean, I don't know if anyone has any questions about what they do. Hopefully it's somewhat self-explanatory from the name. Um, you know, they're all very important and, um, you know, they can all use more members. Uh, so if you would, you know, if you're interested, it doesn't even necessarily mean that you um, are committed. It just means that you're interested in hearing more. So if you, um, you know, sign up on that sheet, then we'll get in touch about, um, you know, the committee. And um, I think there's, yeah, just a little bit of space about your background, your skills, your values, why you want to join uh, the committees that you do. Um, and yeah, so, you know, we just have a relatively straightforward approval process. Um, and yeah, we would love to have people's help on those. Uh, another thing that we're looking for is local organizers. Um, so we, um, you know, are always hoping to expand our number of active locals around the state. And recently we've been talking about um, organizing parties on the congressional district level um, with the eight con different congressional districts in Wisconsin. And um, now it, it feels with the current situation and kind of travel being limited and a lot of things happening online, that sort of makes more sense even now than it did before. Um, so I know we have uh, a number of different congressional districts represented on this call. So if people are interested in, um, in organizing in their congressional district and their community, um, then yeah, please just sort of shout out in the comments, you know, raise your hand virtually and, you know, we'd love to get in touch with you and, and follow up on what the next steps can be. Um, so I know there's some questions coming in in the chat. Um, so one was about nominations. Uh, let's see, so Bill, Brian has nominated Barbara Dahlgren, Dave Schwab, Patty Ashby, and Mike McAllister. Um, so I would be willing to go, I'm planning to go to the, um, to the uh, presidential nominating convention Either way, I've gone before not as a delegate. So if someone else is interested in, uh, you know, being a delegate, then, uh, you know, I'd be happy to support that. Um, I'd also be, you know, happy to be nominated. So that's kind of where I'm at. Um, see some people are getting on the stack. Uh, so, and, and also if other folks who are named want to you know, speak to, you know, whether they accept those nominations and feel free to get on the stack too. So I have Bruce and Patty on the stack. Uh, go ahead, Bruce. Okay, normally we would uh, nominate an equal number of alternate delegates to go to the uh, presidential nominating convention. Um, I don't know if that's gonna be necessary this time around or I don't know, I'm sure they'll probably do it. But we don't have any details on that. So we might want to consider 
at least nominating a few alternates in case something happens on the date of the convention and somebody, you know, gets sick or something else happens or it doesn't hurt pass. Right, thanks, Bruce. Um, okay. So, active comments. Patty, go ahead. Uh, I'd just like to say thanks for the nomination. I really appreciate the confidence. Um, but um, I'm going to decline uh, because I really feel um, that I need to keep my focus on um, sort of refining the membership processes. So um, my time is limited. So I, I'm going to decline because I really want to focus in the next year on, on getting membership um, tightened up. But thanks. OK, great. Um, so on the stack, I've got Barb. Uh, McAllister's, Curtis, and then I'll, I'll put myself on as well. Uh, go ahead, Barb. Uh, just a couple things. The first is that um, thanks, Bill, for nominating me. Um, I'd be happy to accept. I planned to go um, to the national convention either way, so um, I, I don't mind carrying out that responsibility. I've not done it before, um, but I've been pretty impartial about the campaign so far, and I'd be happy to support whoever Wisconsin wanted me to support for, um, for that task. Um, that said, just because I'm co-chair right now, I don't want people to just vote for me because I'm co-chair already um if people are really excited about uh doing this i'd like for folks to step up even if they're a little bit anxious um that they haven't taken on such a role before um i think it's important to get new people into positions like this so that everybody can um can really learn all of the great things that they can do and build confidence in their own uh, work in the Green Party. So um, I guess that's a yes, I'll be, <laughs> I can be on the ballot, but um, don't feel like people have to vote for me as co-chair. Uh, the other thing is that um, besides local organizing, I um, am in touch with the Young Greens. The Young Greens, for all of those of you who don't know, is one of our caucuses. It serves the 35 year old and under uh, population of the Greens. So if you are 35 and under, you are capable of joining the Young Greens and organizing. Um, some of you have experience with that, working with youth organizations, uh, green youth organizations around Wisconsin. If that's the case, uh, I'd love to talk with you more about that so that we can really get that um, sector of organizing going as well. Um, and I'll pass. Thanks. Um, can I drop something right on top of that? So is, do you have a point of process or direct response or? No, but, yeah, know? I want to respond to what she just said and say that I was a member of the youth caucus because I was back in college in my thirties and forties and I actually went past 35 and so, it felt pretty ridiculous, but in retrospect, you should be there if you can. Okay, so um, we have some other folks on the stack. McAllister's, um, then, yeah, go ahead, McAllister's. Not sure which one of you it is. <laughs> Hi there. Uh, I would accept nomination uh, as, uh, as a delegate. It, it, it would be much more likely for me to, to attend uh, if it is virtual, uh, otherwise uh, traveling would be would be difficult for me. Uh, at the same time, uh, folks should know that I have endorsed and done some volunteer work for Howie Hawkins. Uh, and but uh, and would be honored to serve. I definitely want to echo everything Barb said 
about uh, if you are if if you think you would like to be a delegate, that would be wonderful. So please uh, please don't hesitate to nominate yourself. Uh, and I would not be brokenhearted if uh, if a new person or a young person uh, would step up. Pass. Thanks, Mike. Um, all right. So next we have Curtis, and let me just point out that we have five minutes until one. So so please try and be quick. Uh, Curtis, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to comment that. Oh, I just went to the Wisconsin Green Party officer nomination site. The number of people have asked to represent their district on the Common Council. I don't know if we have to vote on that or if they can just be signed on or not, but it might be a good idea to respond to these people. Yeah, that's a that's a good question. Um, so let's not get too into right now. Usually we have those elections at our fall gathering. But we can, um, you know, we can fill vacant spots uh, during the, you know, during the course of the year. But sure. it, it's a little more complicated. And we and we hadn't planned to do that today. So, so yeah, anyone who's interested in getting involved, you know, again, let us know, and you know, we'll we'll definitely follow up whatever you're interested in doing. Um, Point of correctness. Right. We are allowed to fill those spots through the coordinating council meetings. Um, so if it's a vacant spot, as some of them are, um, and you signed up for a district that is not filled right now, we can consider that at the next coordinating council meeting. Okay, yeah, thanks. So anyway, to keep things moving, because we have four minutes until the start of the forum. Um, so I was on stack and then I have one more person on stack, Jim Young, and then Bill has nominated two more people in the chat. So I just wanted to quickly say, uh, in the interest of full disclosure, as I've mentioned to the state party already, um, I just recently have started uh, doing contract work for the Howie Hawkins campaign. Um, and you know, previous to that, I was supporting Howie Hawkins um, and, you know, since I started doing that work, I have decided to recuse myself from all, you know, decisions that could be seen as affecting how our party weighs in on the uh, presidential nomination process. Um, I don't think that necessarily would uh, prevent me from being a delegate. Obviously, I would cast my vote however the state party wants. I just wanted to mention that. Um, as you know, a, a general uh, announcement today, uh, so that you know, full disclosure. Um, so uh, next we have Jim Young, and then Bill Bryan has nominated Greg Banks and Tiffany Anderson. Um, so go ahead, uh, Jim. Thank you. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, put out. Uh, you know, my support for uh, women uh, to uh, be in this position and also with new members, uh, particularly anybody that uh, speaks different languages and uh, parts of different, uh, you know, cultural backgrounds that uh, we can go back then after this process and share uh, that, you know, in a, in a wider scope of uh, community. And uh, it's really easy to be a part of the, uh, the process, and if you're, in, uh, you know, just an alternate, uh, you know, nominate yourself, and uh, and this, these are great experiences. I went to the one in Georgia years ago, and it was a wonderful experience, and met great people, and got good ideas to bring home. So thank you. All right, thank you, Jim. Um, so then we have uh, nominations on the table for. Uh, Greg Banks and Tiffany Anderson, would you would either of you like to respond to those real quick before we get to our presidential forum in a minute? Greg Stack. Go ahead. So I want to thank Bill for the nomination. Very kind. Um, 
for trusting me with that kind of responsibility. I think it's, I've been a delegate before and I, I really enjoyed doing it. I learned a lot in the process and met a lot of wonderful people. I can't accept that right now because of other responsibilities, but thank you anyway. Okay. Um, Tiffany, would you like to respond? Um, yeah, I'll accept. Thank you, Bill. Um, I've never, I've been to the National Committee uh, meeting before, but never um, as a delegate. Um, but yeah, I'd be happy to, to do that if you guys choose, um, definitely if it's digital. Great. Okay. Um, so I believe at this point uh, we have, uh, so Tiffany, Barb, Mike, and I have all said that we are willing to do it. Um, so I would say if, if anyone else would like to self-nominate, feel free to put it in the chat. Um, for now, we do have four candidates for delegate that I've accepted, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so we can move forward uh, for right now. And then, um, um, Barb, do you know if uh, Dario has called in at this point? Um, I yeah, just got a text message. Let's see if there's an there's an issue. Um, that's it's not about Dario. Uh, I did get a email like about a half an hour ago said that from their campaign saying that they got everything and um, they're excited about it. So maybe okay. taking a minute. All right. Yeah. Well, hopefully uh, they'll join us soon. Uh, so I see that Howie Hawkins has joined us. Um, so welcome, Howie. Thanks for joining us. Uh, so um, we are right now at the start of our presidential forum. So uh, you know, you and Dario both accepted our invitation to come here and speak. So thanks for that. Uh, the uh, the first segment will allow you up to 15 minutes um, to speak. And, um, you know, we'll do that for both campaigns. And uh, after that, we will start taking questions in the chat. And, uh, you know, Barb and I will uh, then be taking questions from the chat and, you know, asking them to uh, both candidates forum style. Um, so, uh, Howie, why don't you take it away and hopefully, hopefully Dario will join us soon. But again, Howie, thanks for joining us. Well, thank you, Dave. And it's good to be here. I see some familiar faces and it's good to see you again. Uh, my name's Howie Hawkins. I'm seeking the Green Party's nomination for president. I got into this because a lot of Greens around the country asked me to run. I'm a recently retired Teamster, really had other plans, but, uh, they convinced me. It was people like Bruce Dixon, the late managing editor of the Black Agenda Report. We've worked a lot on independent politics together. Uh, all the way, he was in Atlanta across the country to say Matt Gonzalez, who was the almost mayor of San Francisco, almost beat Gavin Newsom. In fact, I think he beat him, but all those paper ballots showed up after the election because Matt had won on election day. In any case, uh, they convinced me to run. I'm somebody who's been involved, you know, I'm a retired teamster before that, a construction worker, but really what I've been about is being part of social movements. I got involved in the San Francisco Bay Area in the 1960s, civil rights, anti-war, ecology. I became convinced then as a teenager that we need an independent working class party committed to participatory democracy or what we call grassroots democracy, democratic socialism and ecology. And for me, the first party was the Peace and Freedom Party in California. Peace in Vietnam, freedom was a civil rights slogan. And I supported that even though I couldn't vote for it. Back then, the voting age was 21 and I was 15, 16. Uh, supported the People's Party with uh, Dr. Benjamin Spock. 
as a part of the ticket both in 1972 and 76, and then Barry Commoner, the Citizens Party candidate in 1980. And then because I was one of the people that helped organize the Clam Cell Alliance, you know, did the big anti-nuclear occupation at Seabrook, 1,414 people arrested, kind of sparked the anti-nuclear movement there in 1977, uh, when there was a first national meeting to organize a Green Party in August 1984 in St. Paul, they asked the Clam Cell Alliance to send a couple people. And I was one of them. And my message to that meeting was, we can't build a presidential a political party out of a presidential campaign. We've got to organize local groups, get involved in local politics first, and build from the bottom up. And we proceeded to do that. For a dozen years, we organized local groups. The first Green elected was Frank Kane in Wisconsin. Walt Brissett, you know, started that party up there in, uh, near Lake Superior. And so we did that for a dozen years. And then Ralph Nader let us use the name in 1996. We got on over 30 ballots, which I think convinced Ralph and others that we were for real. And so in 2000, Ralph ran all out and we got on the national agenda and in, in the national uh, debate. So I've been involved in the Green Party ever since then. The Greens ran me uh, three times for governor of New York. We got enough ballot uh, votes each time to secure a ballot line. I got as much as 5% in 2014. Andrew Cuomo had wanted to run up his vote, get more than his daddy ever got, Mario Cuomo, get more than he got in 2010, he got less. And to compete for our votes, 5%, he had to look at what we were talking about. And we got out of that a ban on fracking, paid family leave, and a $15 minimum wage. So that's to say we can make a difference even if we don't win the office. If people vote for what they want, then we're not taken for granted. And the politicians and the political systems got to deal with us. So that's how I got to where I'm at. So if I believe we got to build a party from the bottom up, why the hell am I running for president? And the short answer to that is about party building. There's over, well, about 40 states where the vote in the presidential race determines whether we have a ballot line for the next election cycle. In most states, it's one, two, or 3% for the presidential candidate or another statewide candidate for whom the presidential candidate can provide coattails. So that's one reason. Um, so these folks that convinced me to run, we came up with two basic campaign goals. One is to put green solutions into the national debate and the other is party building. So the issues I'm leading with are three life or death issues, climate inequality and this new nuclear arms race. As far as the climate goes, I was the first candidate to campaign in the United States for a Green New Deal in 2010 running for governor. And now I'm calling for an eco-socialist Green New Deal because the Democrats took our brand and diluted the content. And I can break that down for you, but I think you probably all know. So we say eco-socialist because in order to get to our goal, which is zero to negative greenhouse gas emissions and 100% clean energy by 2030, because that's what the climate science and the carbon budgets they produce say rich countries like the United States got to do. We got to do this through the public sector with planning and public ownership, particularly in the energy sector, not just the utilities, but big oil and gas companies, uh, transportation, the railroads, the airlines, so we can build an electrified rail system for freight and passenger, high-speed bullet trains, light rail trolleys in the cities, and more uh, freight going on rail than on trucks, and in manufacturing, because we got to rebuild all our ways of producing for zero waste, because we got huge problems with toxic waste and plastics. So we got to have a zero waste manufacturing system doing things like, I'll give you one example, cement. That's 5% of the world's carbon footprint, because they throw calcium carbonate into the cement. Calcium hardens it. The carbonate evaporates into the atmosphere and heats it up. So we need to produce cement. There's other ways of doing it, but we got to phase out those old factories and put in new ones. And we can go across all the technology. So that's why we got to do it through the public sector, like we did during the World War II emergency. In order to turn industry into a dime, the federal government built or took over a quarter of the manufacturing capacity in order to build the arsenal of democracy is what they called it. It armed the US, the UK, and the Russians to defeat the fascist and Nazi Axis powers. We need to do nothing less uh, in the public sector to defeat climate change. They had an Office of War mobilization, we need an Office of Climate mobilization. So that's the climate issue. Inequality, I call that a life and death issue because inequality is killing us. Life expectancies for the working class have been declining. For the last three or four years, the uh, average life expectancy in this country has declined. The life expectancy gap between our richest and poorest counties is now 20 years. 
So people die because they have to choose between rent and going to the doctor. And then they have deaths of despair because they're having a hard time economically and they don't take care of themselves. They get on drugs. They're, they're you know, trying to cope. So we need to address that. And that's a life or death issue for at least half of Americans. So I'm calling for an economic bill of rights, a right to a job everybody, every, for everybody willing and able to work, a guaranteed income above poverty built into the tax structure, affordable housing. We need universal rent control to stop the, all the evictions and the growing homelessness, over half a million people now, and a massive increase in public housing to create affordable housing options for everybody. We need Medicare for all as a first step as national health insurance, but I want to build that out into a full national health service where the hospitals and clinics are publicly owned, the doctors, nurses, and other healthcare workers are public servants on salaries, and the whole system is democratically governed by locally elected health boards. That will make sure, that will enable us to make sure that healthcare resources are distributed in all communities fairly and rationally distributed. So we don't have too many MRIs in the city, like where I live in Syracuse, and no clinics or doctors on the whole south side where I live at, two miles from the nearest clinic, the community health center, which is the Medicaid clinic. So that's for healthcare. Uh, education, lifelong public education, tuition free from pre-K and child care through post-secondary colleges and universities, technical schools, and continuing adult education. And the sixth right is a secure retirement. And the first step is to just double social security benefits. Their pension reforms need to be made. I can talk about those because I'm a victim of changes in federal law that took 20% of my earned benefits when I retired. Um, so those are those issues. Now, let me just speak briefly to the COVID-19 thing. I'm checking my time. I can't even see my time now. But anyway, I'll try to keep uh, five minutes. Five minutes? Okay. Uh, I think immediately we got to demand, you know, federal government said no evictions till May 15th. We got to demand for the duration of this crisis, no evictions, nor foreclosures. We need a rent and mortgage moratorium combined with the federal government paying those bills, because if we don't combine it with that, we're going to have massive bankruptcies among credit unions, community banks, mom and pop landlords, all the small businesses that service those units and it'll destroy millions of jobs. So we gotta combine those. Ilhan Omar has a bill out yesterday you need to look at because it does provide for that. In addition, it gives the federal government, it sets up an affordable housing fund. So real estate properties that go on the market, uh, it has to be notified to, head, to HUD, and then nonprofits, public housing authorities, local governments have the first right of purchase so we can expand social and public housing. I think that's the way we gotta go. And then this Defense Production Act that Trump signed but isn't using, we got to demand that it be used so we can produce, you know, the PPE, the ventilators, the hospital beds that, that we need and set up a real test, contact trace, and quarantine program so we can open up the economy safely. And Trump is so damn incompetent, I'd say he's guilty of negligent mass murder. And so those, I think, are the demands we got to put forward. Uh, the other thing that keeps coming up in terms of issues is, you know, Howie, why are you spoiling the election for Biden? Bill McKibben just wrote in The New Yorker that last week, and he said, we should be for ranked choice voting. Well, guess what, Bill McKibben and all the other people saying that? If we're not in the race, that issue won't be raised. That's why we got to run. We need to replace the Electoral College with a ranked choice national popular vote. So that's the issues. And in terms of party building, I mentioned... Uh, Ballot access, I believe, at the beginning. Oh, that's why, yeah, we can get enough votes to get ballot lines. Right now, with this COVID crisis, we can't be out there petitioning. I know you need 2,000 signatures. We pulled together a team of lawyers to help state parties go to their governments and get to get relief. You guys have been on there multiple presidential election cycles. You can probably ask your government, just put us on because we've been on before, and we would be on if we could go out and petition. And we can help you do that if you want a lawyer to help you do that. Uh, we're going for matching funds, so we got some real resources. We're up to 10 states. You guys are at 64%. I hope you can be one of the next states very soon. And when we get that, it will double all contributions we got to uh, up to $250. We need 20 states to give $5,000 in contributions up to $250. So we're at 10 states, and we're making good progress on that. And then finally, 
what I've been trying to urge Greens to do, and we were hoping to set up workshops, but with this COVID lockdown, I don't know if we'll be able to do it, but Greens are good activists. We show up. They want us to come to the demos. We're mostly pissed off former Democrats. We're good activists. We mobilize, but we don't know how to organize the kind of things community and union organizers know to expand our base. If the Green Party is going to become a major party and force in American politics, we've got to engage the working class and the people of color and the youth that all vote in lower numbers. Not because they're so apathetic, as they're alienated. They don't think either party represents them. And so how do we do that? Well, an activist goes out with a leaflet and preaches, you know, join us, here's the answer. An organizer goes out and listens and builds relationships and trust, and then you can talk about the politics. So we're trying to uh, bring that kind of approach uh, to, you know, our state and local parties. And, uh, you know, hopefully that's something that's longer term than just this campaign, but I hope the Green Party uh, can make that pivot to being in understanding why we need to be organizers and not just activists. So I think I'm about at 15 minutes and I'll stop there. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Howie. Um, so uh, next we have uh, Dario Hunter. Thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, so right now you have up to 15 minutes to speak. Uh, you don't have to use that whole time, but you're free to. Uh, after that, we'll be taking questions. Um, my co-chair Barb Dahlgren and I, and uh, you know we will then pose the questions to both of you uh, for the remaining half hour. Uh, so thanks again for joining us and take it away. First of all, it's such a pleasure to be here with you virtually, Wisconsin. And I look forward to some robust questions about how we're going to solve all of the issues that we face as a country in the midst of COVID-19 and beyond COVID-19. I hope wherever you are, you are staying safe. And I hope that you and your loved ones are well. So as mentioned earlier, I'm Dario Hunter. There's some of you on this call. I'm an activist for education, against fracking, for Palestinian rights, causes. Is someone letting him know that it's cutting out? Yeah, Dario, we're having a little bit of trouble hearing you. Um, for me, yeah. but uh, I was, yes. Okay, please, okay. Please speak up and a little bit lower, slower. All right. Okay. No, no, you're cutting out. Well, you're, yeah, yeah, no, it's cutting it's, out. Right, it's not. It's you, not. Uh, sorry, Monty, let me handle it. Um, so, uh, we could hear what you were saying, but then the the video froze for a little bit, and and then the audio froze. So, um, okay. yeah. Uh, Are we good now? I I think so. Yeah, but um, I will. We, you know, Barbara, I will let you know if we have more problems. Um, Monitor, yes, sorry about if it that. continues to be a problem, I'll just call in. That, that might have a better connection, but hopefully it's okay. going to be all right for now. Sounds good. All right. So life started for me in Newark and Jersey City, and uh, life began in the projects. In a working poor family, my mother's an African American. My father is a Persian immigrant. And I basically, as a kid, knew that my ticket out was going to be focusing on education. And I worked my way through Princeton in three law degrees. But that experience informed my activism for years to come because the, the impactfulness of having a quality education in my life stressed how important it is to ensure that we have educational equality all across this country. Educational racism is very real. Environmental racism also is very real. And these are causes that are important to me. As a member of the Youngstown Board of Education, I fought a pernicious takeover that was attempting to, in effect, use the educational suffering of children in our school district, minority district, for profit. They weren't improving the scores, but they were. Oh, Dario, we've had another breakdown in the audio. The state takeover. Oh, uh, okay, we're having audio issues again. Well, now, now we can hear you again, but there, there was a little break there. Um, okay, so, I think we're gonna switch the call in then. Can someone send me the call in number? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, Monty or Tom, are you able to find um, the call in number? I don't have his contact and or know the number. 
but it's I all can good. look I'll, it up. I'll get it, and I'll be back um, in about a minute. I have right? a number it's, here. I have a number. You. Do you want me to give a number? It's area code 312-626-6799. And then do you need the – it's the same uh, passcode and ID. Do you need that, too? Just a second here. Yeah, I'll no, I think I have it here. I'll, I'll be back as quick as okay. possible. Shouldn't take more than a minute. All right. Thank okay. you. Sorry about the interruption, folks. Yeah. Hey, uh, Dave, you, you got to like, yeah, but you got to like, because like, I, I mean, I'm a little disturbed that like it took me to sign in to be like, yo, I can't hear him until someone told him. So let's try to be. I was know, about uh, to say cool. that he's just a still anyways. He might as well be okay. audio. And no, I, no, I, I mean, I but just audio, trying to give like, it I'm the best on chance. Audio. Yeah, okay. I understand. I'm all in. I'm gonna get off yeah. of this. Thank you. Hyper. Okay. Yeah, no, no, it's a, it's a very good point, and yeah, I was muted at first, and then, you know, I wanted to see if, um, you know, we could then get if he would come back. But yeah, clearly we're continuing to have problems. But um, yeah, he should be able to call back in soon hopefully um and yeah um like we said you know we're all kind of getting used to this uh new reality of virtual meetings and calling in um so it's unfortunate but you know thanks for bearing with us and um yeah, hopefully we'll have him back in just a minute. Uh, in the meantime, people have started to put in uh, questions in the chat. So please, uh, you know, feel free to put in your questions now. Um, you know, while we're waiting for Dario to rejoin us, now is a good time to Get your question in. Okay, so there's a question. There are a few others running, but could not make it. Could we have those names? So, yeah, let me share a little background here. Um, so, there are three officially recognized candidates by the National Green Party who are running. Um, and so, there, if you go to this um, page on the Nationalist Party site, um, there's information about who those candidates are and um, and their websites and everything. Um, there are a number of candidates that aren't recognized by the national party, um, which basically means, you know, there are some kind of minimum criteria in terms of gathering signatures, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, raising a small amount of money, uh, $5,000 to be able to uh, be recognized and a couple others filing with the FEC, having a website or other requirements. Um, so, okay, it looks like someone's calling back in. Hopefully that's Dario joining us. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Glad to be back. Sorry about that. Took a little while to get back on with Zoom. So, um, shall we just pick up where we left off? Um, well, we did have a little trouble hearing some of the things that you were saying before. So, uh, I think we heard most of it, but it's up to you. I mean, if you want to start from the beginning, I think we could give you a full 15 minutes. Um, or if you would prefer to pick up where you left off, um, it, it's your call. Sounds good. Technology as it is, sometimes these things happen. So basically, I started off with an introduction. Some of you out there who are listening do know me and my work in the Green Party, and some of you do not. So 
my work in terms of activism in Youngstown, Ohio, was centered around education. I was a member of the Youngstown Board of Education, and it's worth noting I'm the only person in this race who has served as an elected official. And I serve my community on issues related to environmental racism, the unfortunate abuses of a state takeover that cheated mostly children of color, and overwhelmingly African-American and Latinx districts, out of fair, equal educational opportunity for profit. They were profiteers off failure who were brought into our district, corporate contractors. And education for me is an important, an important issue because for me it was my come up. I started life in a working poor family in Newark and Jersey City, New Jersey. My mother is African American. My father is a Persian immigrant to the United States. And I studied hard. I got through Princeton, got through three law degrees, worked as an attorney, but decided that the best way to give back was to work in education. And that, that involved being an educator on a high school level, paralegal instructor in community college, and also an educational administrator at a K-8 school. So I've worn a number of different hats. In terms of my activism in my community, it's been based on education. It's also been based on opposing fracking, working at LGBTQIA rights as the chair of the Pride Center. And I'm proud for all of those causes. My personal experience as a person of color in this country, as well as in the activism I've been engaged in, informs the kind of issues that I focus on as a leader in my community, as well as in this race. And I want to underline some distinctions between my campaign and some of the other campaigns running, because I think there are some issues that we can all agree on, folks. We support the Green New Deal, as do other campaigns. We support free education, pre-K through and including college. We support guarantees for housing, for food, for water, for living wages. Of course, with community control, that's a campaign that's thinking we want to ensure that communities can set wages that are fair for their communities that it tunes cost of living. Living in South California, Southern California is not the same cost of living as Youngstown, Ohio. Okay? Even 20 bucks or 25 bucks might not cut it so well there. We want to ensure that we are providing, providing jobs through the mass mobilization the Green New Deal will offer, but also through building up housing in this country to house the unhoused. I'm presently in California, and the state of California is leading the housing crisis in the nation. The rates of homelessness are staggering, unfortunately. There are 10 cities, cities all across this state, and this should not be. So these are issues that we really, as candidates, we have some agreement on. So it's important to make the distinctions as to what we offer that other campaigns don't. I mentioned the Green New Deal. We offer the Green New Deal as a part of a larger platform, more comprehensive environmental platform that we call a Green Path Forward. Yes, we are talking about how we are going to switch to renewable energy, deal with the issue of transportation, which has overtaken energy in statistics in terms of its impact on CO2 emissions in this country, thanks in part to relaxation of auto emissions rules. We want to tackle those issues. We want the mobilization behind that that's going to make that happen. But we have to recognize that what we do within our borders as a country is not enough. It's a global climate change issue. I'm going to say it again, global climate change issue. And that means we need to have a diplomatic realignment in our relationship with countries that we have been trained to hate, but which are at the top, the top of the carbon emitters list. I'm talking countries like Russia, I'm talking countries like China, and even Iran is towards the top 20. We need to treat other nations as equals and have a diplomatic realignment in our relationship with them to ensure that we are going to achieve not just a lasting peace, a lasting global peace, but that we're going to save the planet together. We are also focusing on the plastic pollution crisis affecting our oceans, affect, affecting land, and, and, of course, affecting carbon emissions. Cradle the grave, plastic feeds into the carbon emissions. They're causing this climate change catastrophe. We can't ignore that piece. We also cannot ignore the effects of big ag. You know, some time ago, people, people were really incensed, upset by seeing the images of the Amazon burning. But there wasn't as much media conversation about how that came about, how Bolsonaro let loose, you know, rapacious ranchers to do what, they do what they will with that fragile ecosystem. And so we do have to talk about the effects, the effects of agriculture, of li livestock raising on the environment and the excesses of big ag. 
science tells us that we need to reach peak meat by 2030 in order to solve this climate change crisis. It has to be a part of our overall approach to dealing with this climate change crisis. And we are the only campaign that's really championing that issue, folks. We have to reach peak meat. And of course, we are also focusing on phosphorus and nitrogen, nitrogen pollution, phosphorus and nitrogen pollution, excuse me. So these are issues that are, these are issues that are of great import in terms of the environmental agenda. And we are taking a comprehensive approach to these issues. I also have to mention that as a person of color and as someone who has served in advocacy for issues that affect minorities in this country, it is clear to me that it should be clear to all of us that the inequalities in this country, inequalities take varied forms, but there has been deeply steeped racism pervasive throughout this system for centuries. Okay, 400 years plus of slavery, Jim Crow, discrimination, the effects of what we've done to indigenous peoples in this country. We have debts that are long overdue. And so our campaign has a very unique focus on these issues. We're not folding them underneath any other headings or putting them under any other platform plank. We have a people of color bill of rights platform approach that is designed to underline the gap between the rights that we say we have on the book as a country and the real world experience of millions of people in this country, millions of marginalized minorities. And we are tackling everything from police brutality and the genocide on our streets, addressing it with community, with, with community control of policing, not just review, but discipline and firing, power, genuine power in the hands of the community. We are addressing it with dealing with the gaps in terms of our justice system, the broken public defender system, revamping that system to ensure that we have more access to public defenders and less in dockets and a greater skill set, folks, so we don't have public defenders, in effect, railroading African-American youth, telling them after looking at their case for 30 seconds, you know what, just plead guilty. Take 30 years. Take life. It's as good as you can get. You might get the death penalty. That will not do. We are focusing on redlining pervasive across this country, the redlining of neighborhoods by race, making neighborhoods in urban areas across this country look very much the same in terms of racial, racial texture, racial context, as they did in the turn of the 20th century. We're dealing with the gaps in the banking and the finance industry, enforcing the treaties we have with indigenous sovereign nations and enforcing the sovereignty of those nations handling the immigration crisis at our border and the issue of children in cages and calling for the abolition of ICE and, of course, reparations. Reparations now, and not just cutting a check, folks, real investment in communities and community building, alongside dealing with this piece of environmental and educational racism. And so we're taking a very proactive approach to this, folks. We're also taking a very proactive, unique approach to issues of war and peace. There are some who are talking about cutting the military budget. We are ending the military budget, as you know it. We are instead bringing down the military industrial complex and investing in a department of peace, a cabinet level department of peace that will engage in purposeful peace building all across the globe, folks, helping shoulder to shoulder with other nations, helping to build up the quality of life for humanity all across the globe to lessen conflict and ensure that we have a constructive means of solving things diplomatically. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention our planning for COVID-19. You know, in the midst of this crisis that we're in, we are seeing, we are seeing all of the inequalities in this country and its capitalist, corporatist excesses. We're seeing all of them laid bare, folks. Yes, we need Medicare for all, it's clear. It's clear that we needed to have a national health care service with, of course, community buy-in and community say-so, but we also, needed to, we also needed to have public control of the medical supply so we had adequate supplies available to the public, public control of the pharmaceutical supply. We needed to have housed the unhoused already, and now we have this crisis on our street, additional crisis on our street. It's all well and good to talk about how we're going to create new housing, but the reality is the government has has facilities and resources available it needs to make available. Here in California, there are people who are taking over properties that are being retained and held by governmental agency Caltrans at this point for land speculation. 
We need to turn over those properties. Yes. We need to turn over those properties to make them available to people who need housing. We're the only campaign talking about universal basic income in the midst of this crisis. 2K per person, per month, universal basic income. We are offering telework equalization payments for those who are not able to telework in light of the, in fact, racial disparity in those who can't. 30% of white workers can telework, but only 16% of Latinx workers can. There are definite disparities in terms of the impact on the workforce in the midst of this crisis. We are talking about ending the sanctions against countries like Iran that's putting a stranglehold in the midst of this medical crisis. We are talking we are talking about ensuring that there are fair elections and ending these petition requirements and ensuring that there's the option to vote by mail. And of course, we are very clear on no rent, no mortgage, no evictions. More terms, not enough. Having the government pick up the tab, not enough. Why should we, the people, pick up the tab for the already exorbitant rent and shore up the renter class? Why are we going to give another backdoor handout to corporations and the banks? It's already discussing in the midst of this crisis, there's so much focus on giving corporate handouts instead of giving the bailout and the relief to the people who need it. We need to have student loan forgiveness, put an end to those payments in the midst of this crisis and beyond, and we need simply no rent, cancel rent in the midst of this crisis, and we need, of course, to uh, deal with the issue of the exorbitant rent all across this country. And so in this approach to this crisis, as well as beyond this crisis, what you will get from our campaign is a true full-throated people focus defense on the issues, the issues that affect everyday Americans. And we will not water down our approach to the, Amer to the needs of everyday Americans and workers who are out there in the midst of this crisis dealing with great hazards and deserve, of course, hazard pay for it. We are exploring every opportunity to ensure that we equalize the massive inequalities that have overtaken this country. We have to conquer COVID-19, but we must also conquer the viral infection America has with inequality. And I'm very proud of the team that we offer to do that. I also have a very strong woman of color on my team as our VP pick, Darlene Elias, former co-chair of the Green Party and social justice activist, activist in housing. And together, we are raising the call to build both a party and a movement, but not just faithful Greens, but disaffected Democrats who are tired of the DNC's rigging and want to break outside of the corporate duopoly and make all of those things that we mentioned to ensure an equal, a greener, a fairer America happen. And so I eagerly await your questions, and I'm looking forward to having a dialogue about how we're going to do that, how we're going to build that greener, fairer America together. Daria, thank you so much. Um, and yeah, we are, we are right on time. Um, and yeah, so again, uh, thank you, Howie. Thank you, Dario, uh, for joining us today. We have a whole bunch of questions that have come in already. Um, and there may still be time for more, so feel free to put your questions in the chat. Um, so Barb will uh, ask the first one, and then I, I will continue after that. Uh, then back to Barb, and we'll go from there. Uh, so Barb, take it away. And um, if the candidates could really try to make your answers as brief as possible, try to keep it within a minute if you can, um, because we really want to get to as many questions as we can uh, and uh, stay on time here. Um, so Barb, go ahead with the first question. Yeah, thanks, Dave, and thank you again, uh, both uh, Dario and Howie, for coming on today. It really means a lot to Wisconsin that you guys showed up for us. Um, so this question is from Bill Bryan. Um, he says, I would like the candidates to address the changes they would support in the labor law uh, and in expanding worker rights. Um, Howie, would you like to take this one first? Sure, I'll try to keep it to a minute. I'll just give you a list. There's so many things. We need to pass that card check union recognition bill. Uh, we need to repeal those provisions of Taft-Hartley, if not the whole act, that limit uh, solidarity strikes and secondary boycotts in other parts of that Taft-Hartley act and undermine organizing. We need a federal law to end 
uh, termination without just cause. Uh, we need a law against scabs. We need full collective bargaining rights for public employees, especially in Wisconsin. Um, the Hatch Act should be repealed um, so that public employees can fully participate in politics. Farm workers should be brought under the Farm Labor Standards Act like other workers. <clears throat> uh, prisoners should be paid living wages for the labor they do. <clears throat> and what they do should not be for for-profit commercial outside contractors. They should be producing public goods. So that's a start. And I think I kept it to one minute. Uh, Dario, do you want to respond to that question? <clears throat> Absolutely. We definitely agree on the issue of reforms of tap to uh, tap hardly. We want to also ensure that we protect the ability of workers uh, in terms of firings without just cause. It's mentioned in our COVID-19 plan which I encourage you to look at on our website. I have a much more expansive view on workers' rights. However, uh, I have to mention that I have a Master of Law in Labor and Employment Law, and it's all well and good to say that you're going to put in place a legal framework. However, it's apparent to me that the deck is stacked legally against workers. And so the real answer is for workers to own their labor. We have to support our unions, absolutely. But at this present time, unionization is not enough of the picture. We have to actually put the, the power of management and ownership directly in the hands of workers. So people ask me questions a lot about workplace democracy. It has to go beyond workers having more decision-making and say. It has to go towards them being able to own their labor. When we talk about these reforms that need to happen for the sake of workers and their protection, the EEOC comes to mind because I'm very familiar with the body of case law on that and how often the EEOC ducks its responsibility in terms of employment discrimination. You will more often get a right to sue letter sending you off to private suit than anything else. And so we have to beef up our ability to deal with employment discrimination in this country, and we need to completely revamp the EEOC. We also have to deal with the whole minimum wage disparity issue, and that involves workers and communities having control through boards of living wages. And there are some candidates who have pegged a specific amount. I think that that really, that undercuts the idea of communities pegging living wage to the actual community experience. And so, yes, we do want to have these reforms to specific laws, but I don't believe that a piecemeal, piece here, piece there approach is what's going to solve the issues in terms of workers' rights, because that's what's often offered to us by the Democrats and it often ends up being a hodgepodge of disappointment because we don't really have the control over our labor as workers as we ought to. So I consider myself a socialist, and that's really what we need to move towards. Publicly owned enterprise, building up community co-ops so that employment endeavors are in the context of community co-ops, publicly owned and employee owned enterprises and publicly owned enterprises, and that they have direct say and management. In, in, in terms of increasing the real experience of democratic, democratic workforces across this country. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Dario. Um, uh, so I will ask the next question. And also I'm going to um, start keeping time here. Uh, like we said, uh, you know, if uh, the, the candidates can try to keep answers to within a minute. Um, and I'll, I'll just keep, try to give 10 second warnings and uh, things like that, just so we can get a lot of questions in here. Um, so the next question, and uh, we'll start with Dario this time, is how would you attract Sanders supporters to your campaign? That's from Bruce Hankforth. Uh, and again, go right ahead. It's a great question. We already are as a campaign. And how we're doing that is not just through aggressive outreach, which is something that we have green. We have to talk about this party building piece. We need to get where people are. We need to go out into the community, connect with them in ways that undercut what the Democrats have been doing for decades and decades. They are at your local community meeting. They are at your local church. They have made these connections. And we have to do that as well as a former green local leader, something that I have worked, worked, for, worked at for some time. We have to make those direct connections with people, but we also have to recognize that what people are looking for and what they're disappointed in the wake of Sanders being cheated again, what they're disappointed about is the fact that that agenda is never going to have a place for the Democratic Party. And we all knew from the Green Party's vantage point that that was how this was going to turn out. He got Debbie Wasserman Schultz yet again. 
our campaign has the approach that appeals to Sanders supporters because we are dealing with the issues of food deserts in communities. We are dealing with the issues of ensuring that people have a just wage, ensuring that people have control over publicly owned health care, that they have a universal health care. We are ensuring that we're giving loan forgiveness for farmers as well as in terms of student loans. We have the agenda that reaches out not just to Sanders supporters, but also Gabbard supporters in terms of our foreign policy approach that doesn't buy into CIA talking points and wants to end the military industrial complex. And in terms of our full throated approach that reaches out to young people and doesn't saddle them with years and years of debt and give them a fighting chance, not just at free college, but at debt forgiveness. And so we're already making those strides and we're going to continue to do that. All right. Thank you. Um, so, uh, Howie, one minute over to you. Well, my basic message to the Sanders supporters, if you still support Medicare for All, a Green New Deal, an Economic Bill of Rights, College for All, and all those reforms that Sanders was fighting for, Joe Biden is diametrically opposed to all of those things. He said if he got Medicare for All on his desk as president, he would veto it. So. I'm saying, if you want to keep fighting, fight with us, the Green Party. And I tell him, if you think you can vote for Biden as a Sanders socialist and think anybody's going to hear you, you're badly mistaken. They won't know, know whether your vote is a Sanders socialist vote or a Biden corporatist vote. You get lost in the sauce. You disappear. Everybody knows what a Green vote stands for. We stand for the things the Sanders supporters were fighting for. So you should come to us. Ten seconds. And we've had a lot of them come. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so next question over to Barb. All right. This question is for, um, it's from Samuel Chance. Um, he had two questions, but I'll, I'll ask one and then we'll come back for a, um, another one later. Would you pr briefly discuss your views on gun control and gun ownership? And we'll start with Howie this time. One minute. I support people's rights if they're law-abiding law citizens to have rifles, shotguns, and pistols. I think we should take military assault rifles off the streets. I had an M16 in the Marine Corps. That has no purpose on the streets. It kills too many people too fast. So I support a buyback program to get them off the streets. Okay, thank you very much. And that was under 30 seconds. So um, why don't we reset for a minute and throw it over to Dario. Go ahead. You know, this is where having a legal background comes in handy because one of the things that becomes apparent to me is that we have to end we have to end this legal situation where there isn't legal liability on behalf of gun manufacturers for the carnage that come out of these products that they create. Yes, we need an assault weapons ban. We do. But we also need that legal liability piece for gun manufacturers. Jill spoke about that in the last election, and I'm proud that she did. We also have to end the loopholes for private sales and at gun shows. We have to end those loopholes. And... We have to support our local communities, folks. I believe strongly in local democracy. And when you have communities like Chicago that say, we want same gun control measures, we want same measures to protect our community, we have to support them and not allow them to be subject to state preemption. And state preemption is a very sore point for us as Greens, folks, because when I fought fracking, that was how they used to swat down efforts in Youngstown to try to ban fracking in Youngstown. No, the state is going to take over oil and gas, folks. And we are going to allow... We're going to allow massive corporate profit off of your suffering, and you don't have any say as a community. It's bad for the environment, and it's just as bad when it comes to gun control. So we as Greens and we as a campaign are going to support local communities in their efforts, and their efforts to stem the tide on this issue, folks. All right. Thank you very much. All right. So, oops. all right. That's enough of that. Uh, okay. So uh, the next question uh, that we have here uh, comes in from, where was it? Um, okay, so I already asked the, the question from Bruce. Uh, so, all right, we have one from Dotsa Zeps. Um, how will you, if selected as the national candidate, help states and locals radicalize this moment? 
so uh, I'll put that one to Dario first uh, with one minute on the clock and go right ahead. That's a great question. You know, we do have to seize this moment right now because we do have the best platform and we have to get that message out. We have to get that message out in a number of regards. Yes, we have to work to break through the media blackout. And as someone who has worked with certain media savvy in my position as an elected official, I have a certain level of knowledge of how to connect with the media and build those relationships to do that. And we need to do that, get the message out about all the things that we have that the Sanders campaign, for instance, also advocated for. We are the best campaign for dealing with issues of inequality in terms of Medicare for all, in terms of the issue of college education for all, in terms of dealing with this crisis and the economic impact, okay? So we got to get that message out. We also have to do some party building, folks, and we have something we call hashtag see Greens Lead. We are already working with state parties and locals to support the election of more green candidates because we strongly believe that those candidacies and the elections that come out of them of elected green officials will motivate communities to understand what green leadership looks like in their communities. So we're proud to have supported a number of candidates that are already raising the green banner across this country. And of course, in every local and in every community, we have to make those connections with community organizations that have common cause with the issues we support. Whether or not they are green affiliated, we're going to bring them on board and we're going to get more greens out of them. Because if we're traveling in the same direction on Green New Deal, then we need to have an interface, a connection with them that brings all these young people energized by the Green New Deal on board. So we must take a multi-pronged approach in terms of widening the net in elections and local candidacies, connecting with community organizations and organizations focused on community quality of life, and using that media savvy, which we will educate each other on, folks. We need workshops on that. Using that media savvy to break through the media blackout, as I've already successfully done in my time in public office, advocating on issues of educational racism. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so we're at time, and uh, so I'm going to put one minute on the clock for Howie to answer the same question. How will states and locals uh, radicalize this moment? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what radicalize the moment means. The moment has been radicalized by COVID-19. We got a huge health crisis. We got an economic crisis. So I think the moment's been radicalized for us, and it's an opportunity to bring forth solutions, like Medicare for all to the health crisis and a Green New Deal to, on the economic recovery. So uh, we have a big public investment to get the economy back on its feet. Um, but it's also, I think we have to have a longer term perspective because as I was talking about, rather than just mobilizing, we gotta organize, we gotta build relationships. And that won't happen in six months. It's gotta be a longer term perspective. But I think the thing, another thing I'm emphasizing to the locals is look, there's half a million offices in this, country open for election. Queens have about 150 of them. We should have thousands elected as we go into the 2000s, the 2020s, and build from there, from local to state and then Congress. We get a caucus in Congress, then our presidential ticket, nobody will be able to ignore it. Uh, thank you, Howie. All right, so uh, the next question, um, so, how will you address the violence against transsexual people in this country and LGBTQ rights in general? Uh, so, this one will go to Howie first with one minute on the clock. Go right ahead. Well, the violence has to be dealt with, uh, with uh, non-discrimination laws that we helped get one passed here in Syracuse. We need to pass the Equality Act federally to protect uh, transgender people. And uh, we need to have out of the Department of Justice guidelines and policy recommendations and training uh, so uh, local police departments deal with uh, people, sexual and gender minorities in a fair and equal basis. And uh, Justice Department needs to provide the leadership on that and we need to provide the pressure on our local police departments for dealing with that. Uh, we need prosecution of that violence. We had a guy here in Syracuse with uh, bigoted slurs, blew away a trans transgender woman That's with seconds. a shotgun. Many people saw it. That was 2012. He got uh, acquitted by a jury last year. So it's a huge problem. And at the federal level, the Department of Justice can provide leadership. All right, thank you. Okay, uh, so same question over to Dario about 
uh, addressing violence against transsexual people and LGBTQ rights in general. Uh, one man. You know, you know, this is where having some community building uh, experience in this issue matters. Yes, we need to improve the legal framework. Yes, we need to ensure that we have the Justice Department focusing squarely on this issue. But the reality is the real world on the ground situation for transgender people in terms of the issues they face being thrown out of their homes, being thrown out of their apartments, homelessness being an issue, how, being unhoused being an issue. I dealt with that firsthand as a chair of the Pride Center in Mahoning Valley and the kind of calls that I received from people who had nowhere to turn to, who had no homes. This exposes transgender people to all sorts of circumstances, including violence. And we have to underline the fact that there's a racial disparity in violence against a transgender person. Overwhelmingly, transgender persons of color are those who are subjected to these murders of transgender pe persons that we see statistically every single year. I'm sorry, does someone need to seconds. break in? Okay. So what we have to do is in addition to that, we have to Keep up the legal framework, yes, ensure the Justice Department focuses on it, yes, ensure that we have community control to get local police departments to focus on it, yes, but we need active community building folks. We have to invest in an infrastructure to uh. ensure that we don't have this unhoused crisis. We have to address the infrastructural issues and legal issues in terms of efforts in the LGBTQIA community to support what they call reparative ther therapy. We need laws against that, and we need to deal with the medical profession's issues in terms of spurning not only transgender persons, but also the claim of medical fitness of this idea of reparative therapy. And some states are engaging in legal measures to protect against this harmful abuse of children, but not, all, not everyone is on board, folks. So there's a lot more work Time. to do, a lot more community building work to do. Thank you. Okay, uh, and let me turn it over to Barb for the next question. Thanks. Um, this one is from Curtis Bolton. Uh, some people believe government is the problem. How would the candidates answer that belief? And Daria, we'll start with you this time. Well, people believe the government is a problem because the government suits the oligarchy. The government is not only engaged in efforts to make profit off of people suffering, whether feeding children through the school to prison pipeline and profiting off of them in prison through the mass incarceration system, the new plantation system, or they are waging war abroad and killing people for profit, toppling governments in bloody coups. What they did in Bolivia, what they did in Chile, what they did to my father's country, trying to topple democracy for oil money in, 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 the, in the days of most of that, decades upon decades ago in Iran. And that's why people believe government is a problem, because it has put itself in that position of being the problem. How do we solve that? We solve that by taking the corporate control out of this. We solve that by breaking the two-party duopoly. We deal with the democratic deficit. We need proportional representation, ranked choice voting, corporate money out of politics, public only financing, open debate, and an end to the racist voter ID laws, folks. That's how we'll give people real choice and real voice, and we need to beef up local say and engagement with education, protect school districts against state takeovers so they have local say in education, community uh, control of policing, community control in regards to m Medicare for all in the future, and in regards to setting a living wage. That's how we deal with it. We need to tackle the corporate control of our politics. All right, thank you. Uh, so one minute over to Howie. Well, that government is the problem narrative comes from Republicans and corporate neoliberals in the Democratic Party. And I talk to people like, look, at, look right now at this COVID-19 thing. You know, the government is guilty with Trump at the head of negligent mass murder because they haven't provided basic things we need. And government's the problem because it's not being the government. I mean, that's the argument I make to those people because, you know, a lot of times they don't realize they, they, the government is the people that, you know, pave the roads they drive on. So I try to explain to people that, you know, some things are inherently collective and we need to pay taxes so we can have those collective goods and services. And this COVID-19 thing is exposing that like nothing we've ever seen. All right. Thank you. Uh, so, the next question uh, is from Jeff Salzman, uh, and the question is, what is your position on UBI, or universal basic income? Uh, so, this will go to Howie first. One minute, go ahead. Well, I believe in a guaranteed income above poverty built into the tax structure. So, if your income is below the poverty line, the government pays you 
on a monthly basis to bring you above the poverty line. If you're above the poverty line, you pay taxes on a progressively scaled basis. I don't want to see a universal basic income where Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos and Donald Trump are getting the same amount as somebody who really needs it. I think uh, that's not a smart use of money. But I go for a guaranteed income above poverty. That was the additional economic right that Roosevelt didn't have, but the Civil Rights Movement brought into their economic bill of rights in the 1963 March on Washington, the 1966 Freedom Budget, and the 1968 Poor People's Campaign. And we should pick that demand up and make it part of our economic bill of rights. All right. Thank you. Uh, so same question about universal basic income over to Dario. One minute, go ahead. We support universal basic income, 2K per person per month, and this crisis illustrates just how needed something like that is. And to the argument that it's going to also go to the corporate billionaires, well, if we're, having, if we're engaging in real system change, then we won't have the same abusive people continuing to abuse workers and suck up profit and hoard profit. We are going to bring an end to that system, that corporatist abusive capitalist system, and put control in the hands of the workers, aren't we? I thought that was the whole point of what we're trying to do as a party, to not kowtow to the billionaires and allow them to continue to cook and continue to abuse people as they used to. So we have to have real system change alongside offering UBI. And we also have to ensure that we bring down rents under rent control. We have to ensure that we have a living wage for workers. We have to ensure that we have free college, Medicare for all, all the basic necessities of life guaranteed to everyone. We will only be able to ensure that everyone is able to prosper in this society when we have not just universal basic income, but total system change away from this current abusive hyper-capitalist system. Time. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, all right, so, so right now we are at uh, 2 p.m. Um, you know, since we had a little bit of technical difficulties earlier on, and we still have more questions to get to, um, I would move that we continue the question and answer session uh you know maybe for another 10 minutes until 2:10. um but if people want to say in the chat uh do they support or oppose extending time uh by 10 minutes uh yeah we do have more questions we're trying to get a variety okay we're seeing some support in the chat uh so we'll continue uh for a little bit we still have some good questions uh, Barb, do you want to ask the next one? Um, well, just quickly, are either of the candidates pressed for time because we want to uh, make sure we're being respectful of uh, the time that, that you guys have for us? Um, quick comments? I'm always pressed for time. Like You're the top of my list, so I'll stay. <laughs> <laughs> Daria? I'm on board as well. Let's All do right. this. Great. Cool. Thank you. Uh, Barb, go ahead. Okay, um, many people ans uh, asked uh, multiple questions, so I'm trying to get to folks who haven't gotten their, any of their questions asked yet. Um, this one is from Dennis Boyer. Um, I have a question for Howie and Dario. Have the two of you explored a joint ticket? Uh, what, if anything, have those explorations produced? And Dario, we will start with you this time. I already have a joint ticket. I have a wonderful VP pick, a strong woman of color, strong Latinx woman who has been an advocate for social justice for so many years, an advocate for housing in her town of Holyoke, Massachusetts, a, a former Green candidate, and has been engaged with the Latinx caucus, the Women's Caucus, and was a former co-chair of the party. And I'm very proud of her activism, and I'm also very proud of how our team speak to the experience of America, two people of color at, at, on a ticket that is going to speak to the massive inequalities this country faces and going to do so because we not only talk the talk, but we've walked the walk. The suffering we're dealing with, the suffering we're trying to fix in this country is what we personally experienced in our own come up. So I'm very proud of what that will represent going into 2020 and proud to advocate for the Green Party and its solutions, which are unlike any other in terms of dealing with the environment. And, and dealing with inequality in this country. Great, thank you. One minute over to Howie. Yeah, we haven't had a discussion of a joint ticket. 
it did come up in the Virginia convention and I said I wouldn't rule it out. I am talking to other people and uh, I think it's, you know, I'm not the nominee, so I think it's not time for me to choose a vice presidential candidate. I think that comes when that's clear. So um, I'm still talking to a number of people and as a general rule, I want to diversify the ticket in terms of it being demographic and in terms of the expertise of the, my running mate. And uh, that's about where it's at at this point. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay. So uh, the next question is one that has uh, come up in uh, many uh, Facebook groups where disenchanted Bernie supporters have congregated. Uh, would you briefly discuss your views on legalizing sex work? Uh, New Zealand model versus Nordic model. Um, so, Howie, uh, that will go over to you for one minute. Go ahead. I prefer decriminalization. Legalization implies some regulation. Uh, not the Nordic model because they prosecute the people paying. Uh, the New Zealand model doesn't prosecute either the people receiving pay or the people paying, although it does uh, prosecute people that are basically acting as pimps, you know, third parties to make the exchange. So I think the New Zealand model uh, is what we need uh, instead of criminalizing sex work and bringing them into the criminal justice system. You know, a free exchange between consenting adults uh, should be not the government's business. And uh, of course, children and so forth uh, would not be exempt from that, but otherwise between consenting adults, decriminalize. Okay, thank you. Uh, so Dario, same question over to you, one minute. Legalize and destigmatize. I don't see any. I don't see any negative connotation to using the term legalize whatsoever. It represents what our approach would be, and it is currently illegal. We'd be legalizing it. We also have to have strong protections, however, against sex trafficking, against against what in effect is human slavery, and this is happening in our country and many countries across the world. So we do have to have strong protections to guard against that. However transactions between consenting adults in that regard absolutely legalized okay it is your right as a human being to make choices in regards to your body it's that simple okay thank you very much uh so i'll put it over to barb for the next question next question is from mary sanderson um Government is often seen as the problem because it's controlled by private fortunes and banks. Please comment on the Green Party proposal to take control of the nation's money supply, uh, the three-part monetary reform plank. And uh, Dario, that will go to you first. Excellent question. I'm a big supporter of what we call greening the dollar. And that involves ensuring that we end this current situation with the controls that, in effect, private banks have over on money supply. We need to democratize the money supply. And we need to get rid of this current situation with, with the Fed and instead have a democratically responsible and controlled monetary authority. And what that will allow us to do is not only to have that democratic piece in terms of our money supply, but it will also allow us to have a certain level of control over the use of resources and will be a source, an opportunity in terms of resources to to devote some resources to the agenda items that we have as a party, ensuring we have health care for all, ensuring that we have educational equality, ensuring that we have all of these guarantees for society as a whole that we've discussed earlier. And so I'm a strong supporter of the Green Party plank in terms of greening the dollar and democratizing our money supply. Thank you. Uh, Howie, same question over to you. Yeah, I helped get that plank passed in the Green Party. I see it as a modern version of the old populist greenback demand, where you create debt-free dollars and spend them into the economy through the federal budget. So you have a monetary authority in the Treasury Department under the Constitution where it says we coin money instead of the Federal Reserve System. Now, MMT gets a lot of uh, attention now, modern money theory, and they basically say we can borrow as much as we want because we're the reserve currency in the world. And they're right about that. But what people don't know is that money has to be paid back. It's debt linked because the treasury sells securities. It's bought on the market. The Fed can support it by creating credits and putting them on their balance sheet. 
but in the end, we got to pay the interest in principal, and that's on the taxpayers. So the greenback monetary reform we're talking about is superior. But I would say in the emergency we're in, where we need to invest immediately in a Green New Deal, we may have to do green quantitative easing. This time, instead of bailing out the banks, we bail out the people in the planet. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, and I just wanted to echo what Bill Bryan said in the chat. Uh, we are incredibly fortunate. It is an extraordinary opportunity to have both candidates before us. This discussion is at a very high political level. Let's continue another 20 minutes, he said 10 minutes ago. Um, I think we all can agree. Awesome expertise on both sides. Uh, so, uh, yeah, thank you so much. So our next question um, is from, let's see, from Barb Eisenberg. Uh, spoiler effect is the perceived problem nationwide. How can we pass rank choice voting as quickly as possible? Uh, this will go to Howie first, one minute. Well, I'm writing an op-ed right now in response to Bill McKibben, who said we should stand down and fight for that, because if we're not in it, it won't get raised. And I'm calling it an idea whose time has come. We got it in more than 20 cities. We got it in Maine for the presidential election. And the only Republicans that have been elected in the 21st century lost the popular vote. And of course, the Democrats pick on us when it's the electric college that did that. So I think people can see that, and this is an idea whose time has come. And then people say, well, it's a constitutional amendment to get rid of the Electoral College. Well, the 27th Amendment, the last one we got, swept through in the 1980s when people got tired of Congress voting themselves raises. It was an idea whose time had come. It had been part of Madison's original 12 amendments, original Bill of Rights. It sat around for 200 years, and then its time had come. So I think we got to make the argument that instant runoff voting, including a ranked choice national popular vote for president is an idea whose time has come. Thank you. Uh, same question over to Dario. One minute. Go ahead. Uh, excellent question. I think we're all on board. I mean, it's something we support as a party ranked choice voting, but we have to talk about the practicalities of how we will make it happen. And I thank you for that question. We have to do that getting out of the box organizational effort that we discussed earlier, that I discussed earlier, of connecting with community organizations. Because the great thing is, folks, there are community uprisings, community organizations supporting ranked choice voting all across this country. I know because I have connected with them already. And we have to work on these common cause issues together, not only because working together, whether they're green affiliated or not, will ensure that we get ranked choice voting through to people-powered action, but will also show young people, many of whom are behind this cause in these organizations, show them we're the real choice and cast aside that two-party duopoly. And this issue on which we agree has been a great point upon which people have decided to choose green. Also support candidates like Lisa Savage, who has a great opportunity with ranked choice voting in Maine. We gotta show people in places that have ranked choice voting the great changes that can come out of ranked choice voting. So do support her candidacy and the candidacy of other Greens in places that have already passed ranked choice voting. Thank you. Uh, so Barb, I'll throw it over to you for the next question. Barb, I think you're muted. Let me unmute you. Or can you unmute yourself? Can you okay. hear? Okay. Yep. Go ahead. Okay. Um, next question. This one's from Patrick Ald. I hope I'm saying the last name right. How will you overcome the media blackout? And that one will go to Dario first. That's a great question. You know, I mentioned earlier having that media savvy point is important and building those connections. You know, we do have that media blackout, but somehow it didn't quite touch me as much as it might have some other candidates in my time in public office in Youngstown, Ohio. And that was because I had built up a craft of sending out press releases, putting together organized media lists, building personal connections with members of the media. And that's important. And so what needs to happen is the community building piece. We have to, in locals all across this country, build up workshops to train in media savvy in terms of building those connections. Because it is an interpersonal connection thing, folks. And I will give you an example. When I lost my position as a rabbi for fighting for BDS, 
I got a call from a member of the local media, and it wasn't about the story. It was just to say, you know, I'm sorry this happened to you. You're an honest guy, and I'm real sorry it happened, and I'm praying for you. When you build that personal connection with people above and beyond the issues you're working on together, then you can use that connection to ensure that you get the message out. And that takes time. It takes skill. It takes effort. And it's a skill we have to train and educate each other in. So I'm looking forward to the party building piece that will ensure that we can do that. And together, as we raise our profile as a party, we will break through that media blackout. Thank you. Uh, same question over to Howie. One minute. Yeah, Daryl makes a really important point. We got to have our locals be much more developed in uh, local media because we can get into local media. And I find as I go around the country, a lot of times locals don't have, even have a media list. We got to pull it together for our news advisories. So, uh, and I also find that we can get coverage in small cities. How often does a presidential candidate show up in Plattsburgh, New York? I showed up, I got a dozen news hits from, they even came across from Vermont. You know, we could go to, well, we can't right now, but you know, when we were before it. So that's important. Um, you know, I've, I've been getting a lot of coverage, particularly since Bernie uh, suspended his campaign and every step he's taken to, toward uh, endorsing Biden, really going back to his bad Super Tuesday. So Washington Post, Washington Examiner, Washington Times, The Economist, New York Post, Michael Isakoff podcast, RT, a lot of publications are covering us. Um, but we haven't broke through with the networks. And I think that's going to be a real challenge because that's what most people see. And uh, I've been talking to them. We got some nibbles from reporters and some hosts, but not producers. That's, that's where the barrier is. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so we have time for hopefully a few more questions. Uh, so here's one from Farin Hakim. One of the reasons COVID-19 is rapidly growing in Milwaukee County is because of medical racism. Black and brown skinned people receive poor quality health care and no access to tests and assessments. How have you dealt with this as an activist and how do you plan on addressing this as president? So this will go to Howie first, one minute, go ahead. Well, I think I alluded to here earlier about the problem we have in Syracuse, South Side, no doctors, no clinics. This is a mostly black neighborhood, a number of Puerto Ricans and uh, so we've been fighting over that for a long time. We do have a community health center, but it's understaffed, underfunded. For two years, they didn't do the billing. And I was covered by my Teamsters insurance. And I had some uh, things I did there, like my annual checkup. And because uh, they didn't bill in time, my Teamsters insurance, which is Blue Cross Blue Shield, said, you're too late. So now the health clinic's trying to rip us off in the community for things they didn't bill for. So I, you know, I've seen that, and we fought that. Um, and in terms of going forward, the community, national health service I'm talking about is community control with locally elected health boards so that all the communities are on the board and they can make sure their needs are taken care of, like getting clinics and doctors here onto the south side of Syracuse. Thank you. Uh, same question over to Dario. One minute, go ahead. You know, someone who's been active in issues of quality of life in Youngstown South Side, you know, affected by issues like this, an overwhelmingly majority minority neighborhood, you know, that's why we have to have that piece where we increase clinics and hospitals and their avail availability in neighborhoods like that one. And that's a big piece of ensuring we have health care for all because Medicare for all is not going to cut if we don't have the health care infrastructure, folks. But we also have to recognize that those same neighborhoods in many cases are food deserts. How are you going to have quality of life and health if you don't have access to healthy food? We must increase the access to healthy food and we must invest in community co-ops to deal with those quality of life issues. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the education piece. We need more medical leadership people in positions of medical leadership from people of color in this country. And part of the reason why that's not the case is because of the failure of educational systems in majority minority districts like Youngstown, Ohio. So we in must seconds. invest in education. And the reason why we need to invest in ensuring that we educate people to be able to pursue those paths is because science has shown that rampant racism in healthcare, including unprescribing pain medications and wow. underdiagnosed pain for people of color on the part of medical professionals. So we have to break through that by diversifying the field and having consequences for racism them in a healthcare professional legal consequences. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, so I, th I think we have time for uh, two more questions. Uh, Barb, would you like to ask the next one? Sure. Um, let's see, we've been through most of these. Um, uh, Bruce Hankforth asks, 
as our candidates, would you continue to represent the Green Party nationally and internationally as Jill Stein has after her campaigns in 2012 and 2016? And uh, Daria, we'll start with you. Absolutely. That's an easy question there. Thank you for that one. But you know, we already have as a campaign in terms of internationally. We're the only campaign that made an official campaign trip to connect with a social justice and political activist on the issue of Palestinian rights in Palestine. And I'm very proud for that meeting and for what that underlined about how, how our approach to building peace and building diplomacy and making connections is going to be so impactful in the future. And we're going to continue to make those connections now internationally and continue to do them beyond the primary, because not only does it raise the profile of the party, but it reaches our goal as a party, one of our major goals, building a sense of peaceful diplomacy and peaceful connection with countries as equals for the sake of saving the planet and for the sake of humanity. Thank you. Uh, same question over to Howie. Go ahead. Yes, yes, of course. I represent us nationally and internationally. I think that's part of the job description of being the presidential candidate. Uh, one of the things I would emphasize is solidarity with movements of workers and oppressed people around the world. And sometimes we get too caught up in the geopolitics between different nation states, and we don't center the people who are fighting most of these states, which we're in a capitalist system, there's oppression and exploitation everywhere. And we sometimes don't see the people at the grassroots who are fighting for their freedom and their bread and their land. So that would be an emphasis I would make. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, so we're gonna ask one more question uh, before we let you go. And this is another one from Bruce. He's asking a lot of good questions. So uh, do the candidates think that Green Party U.S. should become a dues-paying membership party. Uh, so this will go to Howie first. One minute. Go ahead. Yeah, I do. I actually have an ebook out that uh, makes the case for that, um, called "The Case for an Independent Left Party." You can get it from my website, HowieHawkins.us. And the reason is, if we're going to be serious, we're taking on the two biggest capitalist parties in the world. The second most enthusiastic, as one conservative called it the Democratic Party, the most enthusiastic, the Republican Party, they got all this money and we're damn broke. I mean, if you're gonna be part of this party, you should be able to be willing to put a few dollars down. That was the invention of the left in the 19th century. The workers' movement wasn't gonna get funded by you know, rich benefactors, they were fighting them just for the right to vote at first. So they paid dues like they did to their unions to fight the bosses. And so I think that's elementary. And the problem with American politics is there are no members in the Democratic or Republican Party. You tell the state what party you're in, you pick up their ballot, you vote, but you're atomized. There's no local organization. You can belong to any party, no matter what your political principles. Time. So fascists in the Republican Party and the Democratic Party sometimes. So we should have principles and a willingness to pay dues and fund this damn thing. Thank you. Uh, same question over to Dario. Go ahead. I don't think it's at all unreasonable and it's fundamentally a socialist idea that people should have to share in the expense of party building and to do so in order to be able to participate in ways such as engaging in party leadership and the other, the other functionalities of a local party, of a state party. I draw the line, however, on the necessity to pay dues in order to vote in a primary. There is something unseemly about having to pay any amount in order to vote in a primary. Uh, and that really harkens back to the sensitivities I would say I have as a person of color in terms of barriers being put in place to voting for us. So we do have to draw the line in some places, but absolutely people should have to contribute to the common effort of party building. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you both. Uh, this has been a, a really great forum um, and the, the comments are glowing with praise and appreciation for the, uh, you know, the expertise and uh, you know, passion that you've shared with us today. Uh, so yeah, uh, again, thank you both for making the time and um, we'll let you go now. If, if you'd like to uh, give us a, you know, a very uh, brief uh, close, then uh, feel free to do that. Um, and yeah, then uh, I guess um, afterwards we can unmute everyone just to uh, you know, say thank you and goodbye. Um, so the 
first. Um, so why don't we uh, say uh, a couple Ooh. of minutes just for closing, just so we can get back on track here time-wise uh, in area. Uh, if you'd like to start, go ahead. Absolutely. You know, it was such a pleasure being here with you, Wisconsin, and I look forward to the great work we're going to do together in order to build up this party and meet the challenges of 2020. I'm very excited by that. You know, it's important to know in a race with such impact as this, you know, what the differences are between candidates and what the best approach is to take in this election. And I want to underline those very briefly. We're the only campaign that has such a comprehensive plan. In addition to the Green New Deal, a deal with the environmental crisis this globe is facing, we are the campaign that wants to bring an end to the military industry complex, only campaign advocating a Department of Peace. We're the only campaign with such an ambitious plan on COVID-19, including 2K per month UBI and no rent, no mortgage, no evictions, in addition to ensuring we have a health care safety net, universal health care for all Americans and housing unhoused. We are the only campaign that's focusing on the broader issues feeding into climate change, like peak meat, and ensure that we ramp down meat production by 2030 to meet those challenges. And of course, we are a campaign that is composed of persons, myself and my running mate, Darlene Elias, who represents the struggle that Americans face every day and are strong advocates, have a history of being strong advocates in that struggle. And we're proud to be so. And we're looking forward to the opportunity to raise that green banner in 2020 and, make, and give people a sense of what real democratic choice is like. So I encourage you to learn more about our campaign at DarielHunter.com. You can learn more about our policy positions. You can also sign up to our email list. You can choose to volunteer. And we wish money wasn't a part of politics, folks. But as it happens, it is. You can also donate through our website. So thank you once again for having me. And let's get together and do some impactful work to make sure the Green Party gets those funds out of 2020, that we reach that magic number. Green love to everybody. <laughs> thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, Howie, we'll give you two minutes for a closing statement. Go right ahead. Okay, I'll clarify a couple points. I agree with Dario, you don't want people to have to vote to vote in primaries. In fact, that's not even legal in the states. But we can have dues for uh, voting in our internal processes. Um, this rent moratorium without relief, I think is a big problem. And this is where we have a difference because if you don't provide relief to the landlords and lenders, you're gonna wipe out 10 million mom and pop landlords, credit unions that have these mortgages. Uh, housing cooperatives, public housing authorities, and you'll have a string of bankruptcies with the small businesses that serve the housing market, you're gonna destroy millions of jobs. So that's why we have to have the moratorium. A third of the people ain't paying rent next month because they don't have it. That's what we know from national surveys. So we need the moratorium on rent, but we can't destroy all these businesses. Where are people gonna go back to when we reopen the economy? So we got to provide relief. That's what they did in Denmark. They pr protected the businesses so they could pay payroll and then the rents and mortgages and utility bills. There should be no utility cutoffs during this period either. So I think that needs to be part of the whole program. We got to be smart in the policies we put forward. So uh, with that said, uh, I enjoyed this conversation. It was good seeing familiar faces and new faces and uh, I'm asking for your vote in the Wisconsin primary. And uh, if you want to find out more, go to my website, howiehawkins.us. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. And so I'm going to uh, unmute everyone uh, for a second here so people can say uh, thank you. Uh, and then we'll let you both go. All right. So everyone should be unmuted now. Um, all right, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. All right, bye. All right, bye. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye. Take care. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I believe you had to respond to a prompt to unmute the mic. And all right, so now. Um, so next up, um, I want to call for just a very quick bathroom break for those who need it. Um, Good idea. <laughs> I think as many of us, but uh, within two minutes, 
we can uh, start having a, an open discussion on the uh, presidential candidates. Um, yeah, so again, uh, there's a lot of us on the call, so we'll try to keep things short. And, but you know, we wanna give everyone a chance to you know, air their, share their thoughts. And um, yeah, so why don't we take maybe, a couple of Maybe we could allocate five or 10 minutes to, uh, to, to the, uh, that, the bylaws discussion too. Sure, okay. yeah, that, that sounds good. I think, um, yeah, let's start with the, uh, with the presidential discussion, which I think, you know, right after that forum, I'm sure people are uh, burning to share their thoughts. And, you know, for, for folks who then want to continue with the bylaws discussion, uh, we can definitely make space for that too. Um, if that sounds good with everyone and there are no objections. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm going to take that bio break uh, and <laughs> uh, everyone else should feel free to take a little break and you know, we'll just, we'll get the discussion going here in a couple of minutes. Barb, you hear me? Yeah. Um, is there scholarships for people that want to be delegates? Um, and can't afford, you know, to, to go there if it's an in-person thing? Yeah, we usually set some up. Um, for those who are interested, if it's not in person, we probably won't allocate a bunch of money towards it since everybody's going to just be on their computers. Yeah, yeah, it wouldn't be necessary then, but um, mm -hmm. Jennifer has um, said that she would be willing to be a delegate too, um, so I nominated her, but um, I needed to ask the question about scholarships first because she would need, you know, she would need a scholarship, she said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have to make them available um, and have a, f a special fundraiser for that as well. So um, if it turns out that it's going to be an in-person thing, we'll definitely uh, work to do that again like we, um, we did that last year. Although the person who was uh, interested ended up deciding that they were not. But we, we do try to uh, get people there who want to go. And in addition, if it's still in Detroit, like I was, I was actually planning on getting a caravan together, driving a bunch of people there, whoever can fit in my car. And they often have scholarships so that people don't have to pay so much or pay anything at all for the meeting itself um, in case people uh, can't pay that kind of money um, to actually get into the convention. Now people still then have to figure out room and board. Um, that could be part of the scholarship, but if it's not in person, then uh, we probably won't do that, um, of course. Would we have to formally ask Jennifer, um, or are we already past that point? Or? Uh, is it uh, Jennifer Kidroski or who? Yeah, Jennifer Kidroski. Jennifer, do you accept the nomination? Uh, oh, 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 hold up, back up. I missed the comment. <laughs> she was away from her. She was away from her seat there for a minute. Uh, yeah. They do have scholarships, Jennifer. They do have scholarships. So if, if it was out of town and it is on the weekend, um, then, you know, there would be a scholarship for you to do that. Okay. So Barbara's asking if you accept the nomination to be a delegate. Like Saturday and Sunday? Um, our national meetings are usually Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and that's, it's supposed to be July 13th mm -hmm. through the 19th. 
So the actual delegate work, is that like uh, where you, you'd have to be there Thursday and Friday as well? Because um, I thought she only had to be there on Saturday and Sunday, and that's what I told her. But I was wrong, maybe, huh? Thursday, the 18th. Uh, I'm not sure what the schedule of the meeting is. Um, I know it goes for four days. I don't know. Probably most of the delegate work has to be done on Saturday, but I can't say for sure. Thursday is the 11th, Barb. The 11th? Yeah. So 11, 12, 13, 14. No. Oh, I'm sorry. So July? Sorry. You're looking at the wrong month. <laughs> 9, 10, 11, 12. That's probably what you said. Okay. Yeah, that makes more sense. <laughs> yeah, my experience has been that typically Thursday um, is mostly workshops. Uh, Friday, there is often sort of a keynote address, but Saturday is the critical day when the actual vote and nomination happens. Um, so Dave, if somebody had to work um, during the week, could they still be a delegate is the question because Jennifer yeah. has to work during the week. Um, so I, th I think so. Okay. Because again, Saturday is, is kind of the critical day when the delegates actually cast their votes. Um, so I believe so. Uh, we also, again, we can, we can nominate people as alternates, you know, delegates or alternates. Mm -hmm. And if we do elect someone as a delegate and, you know, for some reason they're not able to make it, then, you know, as long as we have alternates, then we should be okay. Mm -hmm. um, so Any questions about that, Jennifer? But you could also be a delegate alternate is what David's saying. Um, you know, if you didn't get elected as a delegate, you could get elected as a delegate alternate. Oh no. You want to think about it and decide next time or When is that election for delegates today? Well, it, we are planning to start it today. Um yeah. although uh, I think we're planning to have the voting open through Tuesday. Um, so there were also nominations proposed for um, Joan Nathan Kingfisher, uh, Angelito Tenorio, and Alex Brower. I think Angelito had to step away. I suppose I could take vacation. I was I was actually looking to like, possibly go to it, but you know, it was like, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. Thanks, David and Barbara, for answering those questions. Sure thing. Um, yeah, so it looks like Alex and Angelito uh, both left at this point, but um, but Joe Nathan is still here. So, Joe Nathan, would would you like to respond to someone uh, nominating you as a delegate to the presidential nominating convention? Looks like he's away from his desk, too. Oh, yeah. Does Jennifer need to formally respond? Well, you don't need to respond right now, but I'm just asking if uh, you'd want to. Yeah, both. Both. Oh, wow, sorry. No, no, I've never even been to a national, national event, so it's like, <clears throat> maybe I should go to one first. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, you don't have to decide right now. Um, so it's it's two thirty eight. Um, our forum went long, so we are technically a little bit behind schedule. So why don't we now get into the discussion of the of the presidential candidate race? Um, so if folks would like to get on stack uh, to share your thoughts, then. Uh, oh, and we have a self-nomination as an alternative from Nero Grot Gallagher. Um, so thank you for that. Um, 
and there's a message in the chat about that. Uh, okay, so Bill would like to get on stack. Uh, go ahead, Bill. Okay, um, Bill, you there? I'm trying, to unmute. I'm trying to unmute him. I'm unmuted now. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Um, yeah, we should be very pleased that we have two or three candidates of such high quality that understand fully the green program and can articulate it as well as at least the two that we've heard from today. I must reveal, however, that I have been a supporter of Howie Hawkins since the first day that I learned that he intended to run. And the reason primarily goes back to a couple of articles that I read from uh, four or five years ago, where he laid out a vision of what we would need to do to transform the Green Party into a mass movement a membership-based organization that could really seriously have an impact on the political direction of this country. And um, what he laid out was so comprehensive, so convincing, so thoroughgoing, that um, he pretty, won pretty much won me uh, in those couple of articles to, um, to backing his um, his run for office. And I, I, the way he tells the story, he um, was convinced by several people in leadership um, positions in the Green Party to, to run for, for president. And I'm sure it was um, a decision that he probably thought long and hard at. He uh, has run for public office any number of times in uh, New York and has done pretty well. And he's um, demonstrated um, his capability and his ability to aggressively reach the media and to think on his feet and to address um, political issues that are local, that are state, and now uh, on the national platform, I think he's doing quite well as, as well. So uh, both of these candidates are quite qualified. They are articulate. They are thoughtful. It's, it really boils down to who you feel might be the most effective advocate of our politics and our views. And I uh, have a very high level of confidence. I had a high level of confidence in Jill Stein, which was always repaid um, and then some. And I feel that same level of confidence in Howie's ability to uh, really get out there and throw some punches and and uh, get the green program um, out there before people. And uh, I think he would be an outstanding candidate. So that um, pretty much summarizes my views. Vote Thank for you. Howie. Okay. Um, so the next person I have on stack is Greg. Uh, go ahead, Greg. Yeah, I might have, I missed this, I guess, but um, how long has Dario been with the Green Party? Does anybody know? Um, does anyone have an answer for that? So I, I will attempt to answer. Maybe someone has more comprehensive. I mean, my impression is that he has been a Green for about three years. Um, But, you know, don't quote me on that. I'm not positive. His, his Wikipedia page says he's been a Green since 2018. Thanks. Okay. Um, since 2018. Uh, did you have anything else, Greg, or just the question? Just that. Thanks, Nero. Okay. Thank you. So now we have uh, a few more people on stack. Farheen. Jose, 
Bruce. Um, and then we have some comments in the chat. So go ahead, Farheen. Um, is Farheen muted? Farheen, we can't hear you right now. It doesn't look like you're muted though. Okay, um, you might have an audio issue. We'll try to come back to you. Um, yeah, so hopefully we can come back to you. Also folks can, can put their um, comments in the chat. And if you like, you can request you know, that we read your comment from the chat. Um, so we'll, we'll try to come back to you. Uh, next we have Jose. Go ahead, Jose. Hi everyone, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. As a as official as an official new due paying member of the Green Party, I think I only have like two things to say. Well, and that he could. Uh, I appreciate how he's experienced that he could uh, give some good publicity to the Green Party and good encouragement, even if it, his candidacy doesn't get very far. And uh, second, um, for those reasons, I think he's a uh, he's a candidate. Jose, your uh, your video is freezing. Got good experience, and um, and Dario, very enthusiastic. Had a lot of good ideas. Both both of them were on the same page on many things. Um, but for now, I think I'd prefer Howie. So that's all. Thanks. Um, yeah. So your video froze just at the beginning. Uh, just to clarify, were you were you speaking about Howie at the beginning? Did it cut out? It froze for a few seconds. A couple of times. Did I repeat myself? Uh, you can. Yeah. Go ahead. Just to clarify. Okay. So I really appreciated Howie's experience, and even if his uh his experience and his direction, even if his candidacy doesn't get very far, I think he's the man who can articulate the Green Party's position the best and can reach out to the most. I've got nothing bad to say about Dario. I like his enthusiasm. Um, and I think he agreed with Howie on many things, on almost everything. So, so both of them are great candidates, but I'd prefer to vote for Howie. Thanks. Um, okay, so next uh, we have Bruce, I believe. Uh, go ahead, Bruce. Yeah, Holly's been a member, well, helped to form uh, the original version of the Green Party, which was the Committee's Correspondence, after meeting in, in Minneapolis, 1984, which I knew about, but I wasn't invited. Anyway, I first met him in 1987 when he came to Milwaukee right after Rick Whaley and I helped start the first Milwaukee Greens. And I have known Holly, Holly and worked with him ever since. Uh, he's been working to build a Green Party ever since. That's been a real main focus of his. He's run for governor, I think, three times in New York. And like he said, he's gotten significant votes. Because he knows how to campaign, he knows how to organize, and that's why a lot of people, Greens from around the country, have put a lot of faith and encouraged him to run in the first place. And on top of that, one of the things, I saw him in Chicago at a, a conference of, uh, some of us went to last, last fall, and I was impressed, and I looked it up later on his west side. Not only does he address these issues, he's got a plan, he's got a budget. He can actually talk numbers about things like the Green New Deal, which is very important because right now the Democrats tout the Green New Deal. They don't know how to fund it. Fund it. They have no clue. They're just all raise taxes, blah, 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 blah. But no, Howie has a plan. He's been thinking about this stuff for a long and running on it for a long time. So uh, I appreciate Dario's efforts. Uh, 
Hopes. I hope he sticks around and gets more actively at the national level. But prior to um, just a couple of months ago, I'd never heard of him. So I'm going with Howie. I'll work. Okay, thanks, Bruce. All right, so we're going to try to go to Farheen again, and I, I see some more people have gotten back on the stack. Uh, so, Farheen, are you there? Let's see, is Farheen muted now? Farheen, it looks like you're muted now. Uh, are you able to unmute? I'm trying to unmute you, not working. It, it won't let me either. Okay. Um, so, Farheen, are you there? Can Farheen? you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Um, hi. So, I basically wanted to have an opportunity to talk a little bit about. Um, why I'm supporting Dario Hunter. Um, I know Howie Hawkins has been in the Green Party for a really long time, but um, I've had a very different vision of the Green Party um, since I joined in 2002. And um, it, it was really difficult and re I was very reluctant to come to this meeting today and join the Green Party again because I had such a horrible experience um, as a woman of color in the 2012 and 2013 and, and just years and years and years of um, putting in so much of my youth and my effort into like making the party into a direction where we would focus on the future and start looking at what America really looks like and, um, and being able to like respond to that. And I had probably been the person that was the most annoying talking about, we need to like diversify the party, bring more people of color in, be more people of color Henry, uh, friendly and getting the eye rolls and oh, there she goes again. And so um, it was a very difficult situation for me to come back. Um, but I came back for Dario because I believe in him and I believe what he is capable of doing for the party. And I believe that we need to start looking and focusing on the future of what America really looks like. And America looks like Dario, not just what he is or who he is, but what he's done. Like the fact that like, you know, he has a diverse um, amount of skill sets in terms of legally being um, having working on so many different aspects, um, education, um, being a public figure, being well spoken, being a um, elected official. These are uh, being someone who lived in the Midwest and on the West Coast. And these are all things I think are needed um, for us to as a vision as a party to move forward. And I know that um, people are like comfortable with Howie Hawkins because he's been around for years. He's one of us, you know, as, as they may say. But I know that I put in 12 years of my life, my youth, into the Green Party, and I never was told that I was one of us. I was always treated like an outsider, and I was always treated like I didn't belong. And I think it's because I'm a woman of color, but other people will say, no, 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 that's not true. And that, that's fine. That's up for debate, and that's an internal conflict that needs to happen. But don't do this to him, because... We need more people who, even if they joined the party in 2016 or 2018, like we need them to stick around and we need them to be here. And we need them, we need to believe in them. That's nothing to like, well, they're an outsider, they're an outsider, and never allow them in. Because if you're only going to let the people, if you're only going to trust the people that are the founding members of the party, you're in big trouble. We, we, there are only a few founding members that are there and they're not very diverse. And they don't, they're not in touch with so many communities. And Dario not only is great with working with different communities, he's a person that you can bring, literally bring into any community setting, into any place where he is the, you know, the quote unquote minority. And he just works so well with, with them. And I don't, I don't see that with Howie. I don't see him coming into a place where people who look like me are around and him just going with the flow. Um, and I'm saying that not just because like, I don't like him or anything. It's because really 
like this is the experience that I've had to deal with for years and years in the Green Party, where I would bring people into the mosque, into community centers, where they were the only white person there, and they get super uncomfortable. They get, you know, they, they, even though I would tell them, don't do this, don't do this, do this, do this, they make faux pas, and I would just get very frustrated, saying like we are. We're only, as America, getting more diverse. We're only getting more multicultural. Why can't you get with the program? And, and that frustration um, that's there. And, you know, I don't, I mean, I understand that, like, people might just be a little even more for bringing it up again. But, like, probably the thing that we need to get those Bernie Sanders supporters to support our Green Party is we need someone who's going to be culturally competent. And I see that with Ariel Hunter. And that's why I'm supporting him. And that's why I paid my $12 to vote because um, I'm cause my husband got his uh, uh, hours reduced and I don't have a job. Like, so we're low income now. And I paid my $12 and to do this because I really believe that, you know, we can take this chance and this opportunity, you know, and really bank on it by supporting someone who's going to bring in more people in the party and expand the party into places and ways we never may have ever imagined. So that's why I'm supporting him. Vote for Daria Hunter. Okay, thank you. And yeah, thank you for coming to this meeting and, uh, you know, giving us a chance. Um, and, you know, I see some, some comments in the chat. Uh, thank you for coming back. Um, so, uh, we're going to keep going on stack here. Um, so next, uh, on the stack, I have Jeffrey Jacobs. Uh, so Hi. Jeffrey, go ahead. Hi everybody. Um, I just wanted to weigh in on this discussion a little bit. First of all, this is my first green party meeting and it's, I'm getting a lot out of it. I thought it was excellent. Um, there's really no way I could get this close to presidential candidates and to serious people trying to solve the nation's issues, um, but to be involved in the local party. So I, I just want to appreciate you, you know, having a reasonable dues membership and letting in um, new voices. I'm a long time green voter, but, but I'm just new to the party and I um, really think it's great. <clears throat> I came into this a Howie, a Howie Hawkins voter because I sort of wanted um, to Okay, uh, Jeffrey, yeah. uh, did you have more to say? Um, yes. Okay. Yeah, because yes. I wasn't, I wasn't sure. Go ahead. No, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, I just wanted to make a point. I, I, this is about the presidential campaign. I just wanted to make a point about how difficult it is. Uh, just, and I'm, I'm generally still a Howie Hawkins voter. I, I like him. I think he speaks to the working class. Um, but um, I do want to point out how difficult it must have been for Dario Hunter to leave his local Democratic Party organization after running in a local primary with them. Um, those a lot of times are very insulated groups, just like any local political group. And um, it, it was just a very brave thing. And so I do want to have a shout out for that. I don't know that that necessarily won my vote, but it, it was much more difficult than people might give it credit for. If you've been independent for most of your political lives, <clears throat> if you were enmeshed in a local Democratic Party and you chose to, in that same community, run as a Green um, or become a Green publicly, especially in the eloquent way he probably did, it, it, it couldn't have been easy. So, and no matter how we go about it, I think we have to make sure that gentleman stays in the Green Party for the rest of his career, because he's a very, very just, I was, I was blown away by really both the candidates, but I hadn't had as much exposure to Dario Hunter. So um, I didn't expect this to be a Dario Hunter pitch, but do your best with the decision, guys. I think it's tough. Thank you. Uh, that's it. Okay. Uh, so next up, um, we have Monty. Monty, are you muted? I got it. Um, I, I, I'll try not to be long here, but this is, I've been severely humbled this season, as in that uh, my first choice changed several times. At, at first, Howie was the the technocrat, the, uh, the, 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 you know, the, 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 the long time experienced bureaucrat in the party. And, and so I wanted to vote for Terry. Um, particularly as if elected, he would be well, 10 years younger than the other main people they talk about. 
uh, he'd still be the third oldest president. Um, Dario's on the other end of the spectrum. He would definitely be well under the 55 average. And for a lot of reasons, I, I went for Dario first, and I, I wasn't really real clear on who he was yet. I didn't get around to paying that much attention, and then I changed to be a, a Bernie guy, and I got in the Bernie grinder for a while, and it was actually a fun ride in retrospect, but, you know, that's the roller coaster of my heart part. And then uh, I looked at Howie, and, and he changed... Well, he didn't change. His, his, the perception of his perception of the Russian effect uh, had changed. And while he's not entirely, and few people are in agreement with me on that issue, if you see him lately on uh, Lee Camp, for instance, you'll see, uh, or uh, Redacted Tonight, I think it was, you'll see that he, he has a pretty well nuanced actual perspective on that that's very real and a little, not entirely, again, mine, but anyways. So now I want to vote for Howie because he's the technocrat of experience. Um, but I still want to vote for a man who's 36 and not white and old. And, and so at this point, uh, I'm further embarrassed by the fact that I still don't know who I'm voting for at first. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be able to vote for them both. If I could blend them, I would. The same goes with me and Tom Rodman, but it can't be done. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Monty. Um, so next up, we have uh, Jeff Reese. Go ahead, Jeff. Okay. Um, well, I'm, my, um, my feelings are uh, I met Howie uh, several months ago in Chicago at the uh, Eco-Socialism conference and um the one thing i have to say about him is he's he's very well organized uh, i've had people tell me that he gives kind of a stem winder speech you know, it seems like he's rehearsed but i think being organized uh plus the fact that he's got a lot of experience uh right now my concern is uh with with the fact that we have got uh, we got to have somebody that can keep their eye on China, and um, and I think as as we all know by now, nothing in this world operates in a vacuum. You flush something down the toilet uh, that doesn't belong there, eventually it's going to end up in the ocean, and um, I think we're finding that out really the hard way because you know with the whole economy going in the crapper in the last, just in, in a matter of weeks. Uh, the Green Party, I think, is, is the only party that can possibly rescue us from, from this catastrophe that we've got going right now. And um, I think that Howie has, has got it on the ball here to maybe be, uh, be the one that can, can get us through this. Uh, uh, as far as Dario, I I do like uh, the way that uh, as where what ah what he uh, expresses his issues, but I think if anything, considering um, how short of a time he's been with the Green Party, he might be better off to maybe run for something a little bit uh, more localized. And uh, maybe come back in a few years, and maybe we could take another look at him. So that would be my feelings. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Um, sure. So let's see. Uh, then the next person on the stack is Nero. Go ahead, Nero. Yeah, um, I just wanted to say very simply. I think we're in a moment where we could get a lot of support from progressives and people on the left, par particularly people who are former Bernie su supporters. Um, and I think it's obvious to a lot of people that the Green Party is the alternative. But I also think that optics are an important aspect of our m movement towards the future. Um, I think if we offer an alternative of an 
old white man side by side with two other old white men, a lot of people will think that maybe we aren't going to be moving forward in a different direction. I think that particularly because Dario represents such a diverse coalition of Americans that a lot of people will see that and think this is a party that knows what's it, what it's doing. And this is a party that isn't afraid to put people forward who aren't quite as established, who aren't um, part of, who don't look like the establishment. Um, so I think that Dario is the better alternative, not only because of his identity, but also because of his experience as a rabbi, as an educator, as an activist in multiple different communities. Um, and as a young person who's been entrenched in a liberal arts school for the past three years, I, I can guarantee that a lot of young students would be much more attracted to Dario than Howie, but that's just my two cents. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, so then next uh, we have Jeanette. Uh, go ahead, Jeanette. Okay. I uh, was able to first uh, see Howie uh, in March uh, when he came to Milwaukee, and I was really impressed um, that he had come to speak to a small group of us. Uh, and I, I I've known about him. I've followed him since he was running for governor of New York. And, uh, you know, I was really uh, very much uh, in favor of him when he was doing that, supporting them, supportive of his campaign. Um, and I think that he's had so much experience with so many different organizations and parties and all his life. Uh, and as far as, you know, appealing to Sanders uh, supporters, I think, I think he does support, uh, does uh, get support from them. I've seen on Sanders, uh, you know, pages, people saying uh, that they're going to vote, going to vote for Howie. So, um, you know, I, I don't think that it would be um, difficult for for them to make the switch. And the other thing that I like about him is that uh, besides all the activism that he's been with, involved in all his life, uh, is the fact that he's a very strong union uh, person. He's been in unions all his life too, and um, so he appeals to uh, workers, and I think he would help us to build uh, toward a, a labor party. Great. Thank you, Jeanette. Um, so uh, Josh Anderson is next on stack. Hi. Um, so I wanted to speak. Um, I, I like both candidates. I, th I think both. Both of them do appeal to me, but but I I think I'm leaning Dario, and there's a few reasons. I, I I think to be realistic, what the Green Party needs to do is hit five percent. To do that, they need to appeal to Bernie Sanders supporters, and I, I believe Dario um, Dario for a lot of reasons for what he were on um, representation matters. He's um, a gay man, an openly gay man. He's um, you know, uh, black, he, he reaches out to a lot of communities. And I think he's interesting. He's a young guy, 36. And I, I think the Green Party needs to look towards building towards the future and someone it, elevating someone younger, like 36, there'll be years to come from him. He's well spoken. Um, he's educated, uh, you know, with a, a degree, legal experience. Um, so that's where I'm leaning. I, I really do like Howie. Um, but he, Howie also kind of, and just to be frank, reminds me a lot of, of a lot of the toxicity in the National Party. And seeing some of that, it doesn't appeal to me as a Green. Um, so I, Dario is kind of where I'm leaning. And I do, um, 
I, I, I just think that he, he will be more, there's going to be a media blackout of, of greens. You know, they, they're going to black us out. And I think having someone that, that I don't know, can, can be, you know, he would be, you know, first African-American, I believe um, on his mom's side, she's Iranian, you know, openly gay. I think these are things that the media really couldn't ignore. And one of the things that I, I get thrown at me a lot as a green is they say that we're um, privileged because we don't understand a lot of these communities. We don't represent a lot of these communities. And I, I think someone like Dario takes some of those arguments away and saying like, well, hey, like we're not just nominated in another, another old, rich, white guy. I mean, I'm not that how he's rich, but, you know, that's the perception. And I think that was a perception with Jill, too, being, you know, a doctor, white, that she was privileged. And I, I think I love that he's a technocrat. I, I love his experience with the party. But I think Dario should be where the future of the party goes and where we need to go. That's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. Um, so let's see. Next, um, sorry, here, there's a ton going on in the chat. So there's Josh, then um, Joe Nathan Kingfisher. Joe Nathan, go ahead. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Well, I was notified that I was nominated for um, uh, presidential nominating delegate, and I accept. So thank you um, very much. And uh, I just, uh, on the topic, uh, quickly, um, I, I find myself really liking both candidates and really appreciating their expertise. And, and I have to kind of throw my weight behind Dario. And uh, it, it just quickly, um, you know, I've been involved since 2000 with the Green Party. I, I you know, worked with uh, Winona LaDuke Duke and um, uh, Nader back in in that era, and um, continued friendship with Winona. And her dad, son, there was a very influential man. He, um, he, he, quoting from Winona, he said, "Whatever your philosophy is, it had better feed people." And it translates to food sovereignty. And for me, farm and family is is where that is at. And um, you know, I was meant, both candidates mentioned they um, sort of uh, I think fascist criminal elements in the Republican and Democratic Party, and I just I want to throw it out there not, not to be naive or gullible about the dangers. If we get five percent or better, well, uh, then they'll start throwing uh, stuff at us. And um, you know, I I found out recently Martin Luther King had specifically talked about racism, materialism, and militarism the week before he was killed. And, you know, I would really like to see um, an undercurrent of providing for people, whatever happens. I'd love to see the Green Party as a seed source, as a literal, um, you know, food source. And um, I think a lot of all these things are um, just better addressed with um, Dario and his diversity. And um, I'll end it at that. And I appreciate everybody. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. And also, uh, just to make sure that our, uh, you know, secretary notes that um, Joe Nathan accepted the nomination for delegate. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, so next on the stack, uh, I believe is Jim Young. Uh, go ahead, Jim. Thank you. Uh, so, I guess uh, what I want to do is uh, uh, put out my thoughts on why I think that Dario would be a better uh, candidate. And uh, I guess I look back at uh, when I first uh, decided to run for governor uh, in Wisconsin, and uh, I wouldn't have done that. Uh, I was hoping that Walt Brissett was going to run for us, and then uh, he passed away. And, um, you know, I was, I joined the Green Party after, you know, starting out with the uh, Witness for Nonviolence and, you know, looking at treaty rights issues, and then in working in Milwaukee with uh, 
uh, you know, my student teaching and uh, the uh, people of color and their access to food and, uh, you know, to being able to even show up in the classroom and concentrate enough to, to learn and to grow. And I look at, uh, you know, what opportunities uh, we have as a green party. You know, that's a, a color of the earth, uh, you know, along with brown. And, um, you know, the, the white is the, uh, you know, the purifying and, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the need to, uh, you know, go uh, that full spectrum of uh, people, uh, color, of uh, culture, of experience is so important to represent and to bring people in. Uh, and I love our Green Party symbol with the circle there. And we have to have a group of people uh, that support and that build uh, that uh, circle, uh, the different perspectives, and that we work together as one. And I think that somebody uh, with the experience in the, uh, unfortunately, the way our neighborhoods are uh, segregated um, and even, you know, economically, uh, the way our systems are based, we really need to have uh, a picture uh, to present uh, that is reflective of people, the world, and uh, that community. So I think Dario can do a great job with that. What I heard uh, from him today, uh, and you know, no disrespect to Howie, but uh, you know, Dario is going to uh, do a great job, and I think he's got a good team put together. And uh, I just support uh, people um, and encourage them to uh, support uh, Dario. So thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so. Next on the stack, um, I have Barb, then me, uh, then Jose, then Mike, uh, I believe is who we have right now. Um, hope I didn't miss anyone there, but go ahead, Barb. Hi, I'm just here to make everybody's decision harder. So um, last fall was really the first time that I had to work with these candidates uh, we try to get both of them to our fall meeting and uh, both of them were uh, really generous with their time uh, working with me to try and figure something out because uh, neither of them were able to come. So uh, Howie Hawkins sent, sent a surrogate for him who uh, spent quite a bit of time with us and Dario Hunter uh, put out a about a five minute piece of media. Um, we should still have the video on our YouTube or Facebook, probably both. And so that's a really good source for more information about uh, Dario for people if they're thinking about, um, well, just for anybody's information. I think that it really, uh, it was very well done and um, a great representation of what he said today in, in a shorter form and really he spoke directly to Milwaukee which was really nice it wasn't just like a clip together piece that he did for multiple states um, he really addressed Milwaukee concerns uh, another piece of media I'd like to point out for you all is that C-SPAN has the original um, interview with uh, uh, some of the co-chairs of the Green Party in 1991 when it was founded. Uh, I was born in 1991. The Green Party is about my age. And to see Howie Hawkins sitting up there in 1991, he looked a bit different back then, <laughs> um, really rooting for the Green Party back then is uh, also very uh, fascinating and and great to see. So those are a couple pieces of media that uh, I hope folks will check out and may be influential a little bit. Um, I think that 
a point towards Dario Hunter is that often people um, underestimate the kind of power and energy that newer greens have, that um, greens who have not been here for a long time often are the ones that get the most things done. Um, so just because Dario is newer, I don't think that's really a point against him. Uh, a point towards Howie is that he is the original Green New Dealer. And I think uh, he really has more of a conservative voter base um, that folks who might be disenfranchised by uh, the two other parties and are more of a um, conservative working class people will look towards a Howie Hawkins to vote for this fall. Uh, and Dario Hunter would probably turn more of those people away, but he might uh, bring in more of those uh, upper crust liberals um, who spend a lot of time talking about how it's very important to have more diversity up at the top. Um, so they're really like the two sides of the left side of the, the spectrum argument, uh, working class versus diversity. And, and I think that we have such a problem trying to pick one out of the two because they're both incredibly important and integral um, to what we are. So picking one over the other, I don't think that's like our choice forever. Um, and the other one can just like die out as a, a part of what we need as, in this party. We clearly need both of those things. Um, so I hope I've made your choice much more difficult and thanks for listening to me. <laughs> thanks, Barb. Okay, um, so I'm next up on the stack and I want to say again, although I mentioned before, just in the interest of full disclosure, uh, I am doing some contract work for the Howie Hawkins campaign. Um, that said, I wouldn't have taken that work if I didn't believe in what Howie is doing and what his campaign is doing. Um, just the same as I, you know, worked for Jill Stein because I believe 100% in what she was doing. Um, so I just want to say a few words about why I support Howie. Um, and I also, you know, I agree with many people who say, uh, we, are lucky to have uh, two candidates who are very compelling. Uh, I think Dario is a great speaker. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, we all saw on the forum today, uh, they were both very impressive. Uh, I, I do think that Howie's campaign is the one I will support um, because, uh, well, there are a number of reasons. Um, one is that a Green Party presidential campaign uh, really has to build itself. Um, as was mentioned, the National Green Party doesn't have many resources at all. Uh, we face a very hostile political establishment and hostile media establishment. Um, and even just to get on the ballot is a big challenge. Uh, and I know that the Howie Hawkins campaign has gone into this from the beginning with a very clear eyed view of what the challenges are. Um, and they've been petitioning to get uh, on the ballot, uh, you know, not just their campaign, but the Green Party in state after state, and they've been successful in many states. Um, and that is something that actually, typically the presidential campaign does for the national party is wins its ballot access in many states. Um, so that's how they have this, the organization to do that and the infrastructure to do that. Uh, and the people who are working on that team. Um, another thing is media. Uh, I remember seeing Howie Hawkins presidential, uh, sorry, his governor campaigns in New York where I lived before moving to Wisconsin and, um, they were very impressive. Uh, and again, in a hostile environment, they, they want us a lot of extra support and uh, how he's actually gotten the New York Green Party uh, one ballot status uh, three times for them running for governor. Uh, in the uh, 2014 election, when he was in the televised debates with Andrew Cuomo, um, 
he won 5% of the vote, uh, you know, and that made a big difference. Uh, you know, shortly thereafter, Cuomo said, okay, yeah, the Democrats said we were going to do fracking, but now we're going to ban fracking. Uh, and they made other concessions that they, you know, otherwise would never make uh, if, if people just vote for them on the Working Families Party or whatever. So, you know, the Green Party has uh, been a real player in New York, largely thanks to Howie's campaigns. And I also saw very impressive media coverage um, because folks on his team, they have had, you know, for many years been building those relationships and they kept at it. And I think also Howie himself is just extremely knowledgeable. He's been an activist his whole life. Um, he is extremely well read and extremely knowledgeable about all these issues. Uh, he can go toe to toe. I mean, I, I think in a debate he would um, totally shred either Trump or Biden um, or pretty much anyone else that he could. I mean, there's almost no one who I would trust more to go up in a debate or go, you know, to represent us on uh, a you know national forum uh, just because of his lifelong commitment and his depth of knowledge and experience. Um, yeah, and those, these sort of things are not a given. Um, if, if you don't have a, a campaign that is basically has the resources and has the people who can make these things happen, like ballot access, uh, like media, um, and, you know, just getting out there and organizing, then you know, it's, it's very easy just to kind of get brushed to the side. Um, and I've seen since Bernie Sanders dropped out um, uh, on social media, a, a large amount of buzz for Howie Hawkins. You know, I've seen, for example, on Twitter, his following has gone, you know, basically tripled now to um, almost 34,000. Um, and, you know, meanwhile, Dario's is at around 4,000, a uh, little over 4,000. And, you know, that, that isn't um, everything, of course, but it just kind of shows that uh, a lot of Bernie Sanders supporters, a lot of socialists, um, and, you know, from what I've seen, it looks like a very diverse group and a very young group have gravitated, toward, uh, gravitated towards uh, Howie Hawkins. Because similar with the Bernie Sanders thing, it's not so much about the identity of the candidate as it is about, you know, the values and the issues and, uh, you know, the commitment. And finally, I mean, I've seen Howie in this fight for a long time. And, you know, this is maybe the hardest year that we've ever faced uh, looking at a presidential campaign. Um, you know, in 2004, uh, after, you know, Bush had been elected in 2000 and people scapegoated Ralph Nader, uh, you know, it was, it was a very difficult year for the Green Party and, you know, lots of people didn't want us to run a candidate even within the party. Um, and, you know, it was probably the hardest time, but the party got through that and survived. Uh, I think this year we're going to see tremendous amounts of pressure. And so... Um, you know, there's no one I would trust more taking the mantle um, than someone who's been with the party since the very beginning, you know, who has put so much blood, sweat and tears into building it, um, you know, and who I know in a national debate, uh, you know, in a, in a national interview, in any setting um, is, you know, just completely reliable every time. So anyway, um, Sorry to go on so long, but I just want to throw that perspective out there. And, you know, I appreciate everyone else who shared their perspective as well. Um, so why don't we go back to the stack? Uh, I think uh, after me, we had Jose and then Mike. Um, so uh, Jose, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I think we could go ad nauseum 
arguing how good both of the candidates are. Uh, and I hope to make my contribution brief. Um, I come from a cautious point of view that I, I, I did not know the political infrastructure of both of those candidates. And I'm more inclined again to go with Howie because he does have the infrastructure. I think um, if they could combine forces and support each other, whichever candidate gets the nomination, it would be beneficial. And I hope we can, uh, you know, have that be possible when it's all said and done. And um, yeah, and I and I am torn. I am very torn. Um, but yeah, I'll still I'm still leaning towards Howie. So thank you, thank you for organizing this. That's all I have. Yeah, thank you for being here. Um, so a quick point of information about voting. Sure. Um, I think Curtis asked that um, is, are the delegates winner take all or proportional? Um, they are proportional um, so long as the candidate be ranked choice uh, candidates get over 15% of the vote. Um, otherwise that vote goes to their second um, choice task. Okay, yes, thank you. Um, Okay, so on the stack right now, um, I see uh, we have Mike McAllister, and you know, followed by Monty and Greg. Uh, did I miss anyone there? Go ahead, Mike. Okay, uh, Dario performed much better. Uh, this time than at any other time I've seen him. Uh, he's, a, he's now a very impressive candidate. I first encountered him at the Chicago Eco Socialist Conference last fall, uh, where it seemed like uh, many of his solutions and many of the things he talked about uh, were focused on, on, on legal frameworks. Uh, today he talked a lot more about community building and, and, and party building, which was very impressive. It's, clearly he's, he's learned a lot in the course of this campaign. Undoubtedly he will, he will do more of that as the year goes on. Uh, I'm for Howie for two primary reasons. I think, I think it, it, we desperately need more working people in public office. How he downplays this uh, a little bit, I, I, in introducing him uh, to, at that Milwaukee meeting uh, last month, uh, you know, he, he, he just, he said, he shrugged it off and said, well, you know, I just had to pay, I, I just was a worker because I had to pay the bills. But, I think that it, it's, it, appeal, it, it appeals to a wide range of working people uh, that one of their own could possibly be president. Yeah, he's an old white guy. Uh, but, but I think working people, that that particular message and his and his story as as a as a union person and, a, and a, as as a working person who can relate to the vast majority of, uh, of the American people uh, counts for something. And I also think that his uh, movement experience, uh, decade uh, decades long. Uh, of actual social movements dating back uh, not only the trade union movement but uh, civil rights and all uh, and, and uh, movements against war etc cetera, etc cetera. I think that counts both both as an organizing principle for the Green Party and an organizing principle for the country to tell you the truth uh, I would I, I am definitely uh, making Dario uh, a second choice, which I was not planning to do when I got here this morning. Uh, I hope that he, uh, you know, I, I, I certainly want him around. 
I want to keep I want to keep both both guys around uh, who are in active in this campaign. I don't know the third person at all, so I I, I but uh, we it is impressive that we've got more uh, a variety a, a at least two very solid candidates uh, in this race, but. I'm still voting Allie. Thanks. Uh, okay. Um, so next up we have um, let's see Monty, then Greg. Uh, go ahead, Monty. I'm surprised that I have to bring this up. Um, not really considering myself much of a socialist, but a lot of Bernie bros do. And by that, I don't mean to be sex exclusive. I don't uh, want to miss pointing out that back in October, how we got the uh, Socialist Workers Party, uh, I believe it was called, uh, NOD. I believe, uh, what is it called, uh, DSA or something like that. There's a Democratic Socialists Org that's very part of the Democratic Party almost. The other end of the spectrum, they've also supported me if my memory serves uh, very recently. And so I just wanted to point out that um, age isn't the only criteria. Um, Bernie had a lot of voters uh, up through our ages, <laughs> or the, you know, the uh, up well past the boomers. Um, but mostly down from the boomers and I know we're young boomers like myself, but uh what what really is uh, cutting across a lot of them is they're all exploring socialism or uh trying to define everybody else's socialism as theirs which makes them hard to maybe work with sometimes but uh at, they're all at different levels and they need a home and i i think howie is probably going to attract them as well as dario i'm not that I'm really saying there's going to be that much difference, but institutional socialism really is supporting Howie strongly, and there really is an inter-party alliance developing around him. That's it. Okay. Yes. Thanks, Monty. Oh, and I'm pulling uh, 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 Facebook groups, uh, Progressive, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Socialist, Bernie. Which one would attract more Bernies? I'll let them decide for me, the ones I know. Okay. Thank you. If you uh, want to know, I'll let you in on it if you contact me. Uh, well, yeah, you can share the share the results with us later. So. Yeah, well, I'm not going to really consider any results till tomorrow, so. Okay, uh, yeah. And now, um, yes. so there's something of a move in the, in the chat to um, finish up the discussion. And I think we just have one more person on stack. Um, and I think, uh, you know, it seems like everyone's gotten a chance to uh, say their piece who wants to. Um, you know, if, if anyone has any burning thoughts, particularly if you haven't spoken, but um, yeah, we do want to respect people's time. So why don't we uh, just go to Greg and then, you know, maybe we can move on. Uh, go ahead, Greg. Well past, Dave. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Greg. All right. Um, so, thank you, everyone. And uh, again, really good forum and really good discussion. Uh, I think um, next up, uh, so we had a question about the actual voting process. Um, does anyone want to speak to the next steps in terms of uh, getting the ballots to our members and people being able to vote? Either Barb, Tom. Uh, Tom, are you there? Uh, yeah, I kind of laid out the options to the, you know, our internal group. Can, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. Because <clears throat> it's not coming back in my earphones. Um, and 
so we have to make some decisions. It's a little bit like uh, talking about how to make the sausages in the sausage factory. I don't know. <laughs> I want to go into a lot of detail. Um, but yeah, I guess if I had the ideas I was throwing around was, you know, one would be kind of, in my opinion, would be kind of aggressive to start the election tonight, say at seven. Um, and the, a little bit more comfortable might be, you know, starting the election, uh, you know, like, uh, I don't know, 11 in the morning tomorrow. But I mean, we can do either one of those. And then as you understand now, because we we're using this tool called OPA vote, which says ranked choice voting, it costs us $10 per election. Um, we can, well, I don't know if you want to address the issue of the voter list and whether or not we have a complete voter list, Dave, and you know, we have a workaround, right? Pass. Uh, yes, uh, my understanding from our talk last night was that we do have um, a list of all the members, that we can email the, the voting information to, and if need be, then we can add more people. Uh, is that correct, Tom? Well, this gets to the issue of sort of the, some the grace periods and some judgment calls because we've got some very active volunteers that put in a lot of time that may not be 100% up on their dues. So that's that's an example of kind of sort of the corner cases that I think we have to discuss in terms of who's in and who's out of the list um, pass. So, so I guess for that, that reason, I think maybe um, we should reach some sort of a consensus amongst us as to what what criteria, final criteria we, we're gonna use for the voter list. The other thing people should know is the way the selection works is if you're on the list, you'll get an email announcing it. And I should probably go look up the domain because we ran a test election and I should alert. I can put it in the chat that people should be on a lookout for an email with this kind of a from address and uh, you know, it's not from Google and it's not from Facebook and it's not from Yahoo. So it's very possibly going to go right into your spam folder. Um, so I'll try to do that uh, in the next 15 minutes and put it into the chat so people know what to expect. Pass. Okay. Thanks, Tom. So, um, yeah, so it sounds like we, still need just a little bit of time in the back end to set up the election. Uh, we are using, again, this tool that allows us to do ranked choice voting in a way that allocates uh, our delegates proportionally. Um, so that is a nice feature, um, but yeah, it's, um, well, it's not super complicated, but it's, it's also not super simple. So. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to send email those out to people uh, in a few hours, like Tom was saying, hopefully by 7 p.m. Um, but it's not ready right now. And then I think, what did we discuss? Having it open in, uh, until Tuesday at midnight? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so... Our plan is to send out the, the ballots um, later today. Um, at the very latest, it would be uh, tomorrow morning, but, but we're striving for later today and it looks like we'll be able to do that. And um, then there's a question, what about people without email addresses? So I don't know if, if someone has an answer for that. Um, so, uh, yeah, then the voting will be open through Tuesday. Um, Monty wants to get on stack, I assume, about the voting issue. Go ahead, Monty. Well, at first, I just wanted to say that uh, when it comes to the actual operation of voting, there will be a column of, 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 of candidates or four choices. 
and there will be a, a, a empty box and you add those to the box if you want to vote for them if you change your mind on how, what order they're in you can drag them around once they're in the box um, in terms of if you don't have an email we're gonna have to work out some kind of custom solution because here you are in the meeting you should be able to vote uh, maybe somebody could do it for you by proxy. Tom and I each have a whole handful of emails we can give away. Uh, but one must have an email associated and open that email and click it, the link to get into the election. That is, that's our verification that you are who you are. Okay. So, um, yeah, I, I'm also seeing people asking about a break and we did have a, uh, a 10 minute break planned after the presidential discussion. Um, yeah, so after that, I, I know that we've been here for a little while now. Uh, so thanks everyone for sticking around. Um, if, if folks have to leave, then, um, you know, we certainly understand. Uh, if, if people want to stick around, we did have uh, optional, uh, discussions on the agenda about um, organizing the Green Party in Wisconsin and you know we'd be very uh, very glad for people to stick around for that um, but yeah if folks have any questions about voting or anything else definitely send them along we'll try to answer all those um, but I think right now uh, why don't we take a 10 minute break and uh, get back together at um, 3.55 uh, just for a little more discussion and, uh, you know, hopefully get to get to know each other a little bit better and, you know, what we're all hoping to accomplish with the Green Party. Um, so, yeah, but just before we break, I see that Patty is on stack. Uh, go ahead, Patty. Well, just in case people are leaving now, I just wanted to um, say thanks so much to Dave and Barb for the excellent um, presentation today and hosting and preparation. It's just been really um, interesting and enjoyable. And thank you so much for all your hard work on this. And also thanks to Tom and Monty and their teams for making this happen and, and getting the technology all in place. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much to everyone. I'll be here later, but in case anybody's leaving. Bye. Yeah. I think uh, we're all feeling that. So thanks, Patty. Um, all right. So um, let's take that 10 minute break and then uh, hopefully see a lot of you back here in 10 minutes. I'm hearing uh, something, Monty. Yeah, that's me. You're breathing, yeah. <laughs> it's like I know you're breathing. <laughs> I could have been in here for a while, but I, my headset's actually hanging on the monitor, so you wouldn't be able to hear me over anybody. No, actually, your sound now is not echoing. So what are you doing? Because every it's echoing here. If I if I put the headphones closer together, you'll notice. But every time you oh, when you unmute to zoom, then you start echo. Oh yeah, when I change anything, if I take my screen out of. Uh, out of being on my external speakers so that I can use the volume control on the screen for my headset instead of the, the built-in. I got okay. I, I get this wicked echo. And if I do the same thing and then open up, uh, I always get some interesting sound effects, let me tell you. Oh, I see. I'm, uh, so I'm hearing you through the Hangouts um, video call. That's the only reason I'm hearing you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so, tried to make that happen before, but this is the only way I can get it to work without being uh, So did so so I don't is it a problem that OPA vote has no idea that none of the above But they're getting the link from Nation Builder, right? Wait, who they? You said you would ping the uh domain. Oh uh, and uh no, I was 
I was going to look at the email that I got from Opavote. I was going to do the same for you, but I kind of got lost in this. All I can see is the nation builder. No, it would be from Opavote. I, I have to go back okay. and look. Isn't that the email that we're... Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm thinking about the wrong email. Yeah, okay. It's just so much has been going on lately. I oh, yeah. List. Yeah. Well, I, I think we've done amazingly well. Uh, so it does come from Opavote? Yeah, why wouldn't it's, why wouldn't oh, it come from I'm Opavote? Because I'm not looking at all mail. We're going to give them a heads up about that, too, I think. Let's yeah. see if I can find it in here. Uh, I, fo I found it. Um, Good, because I'm not finding it. What's how old is the latest one that you've got there? Well, uh, let me just, I'll just share with it. I found it. It's just opavote.com. Um, so, um, I already used the wrong keyboard twice and ping nation builder into the group chat. Uh oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But I've had some disastrous pace where I could have clobbered a server. It pays like, you know, hundreds of lines. And, oh, yeah, it's um, that can follow ruin your, you pretty much ruin your day. I, I tried to follow what you were doing there for a while with DB, but I, nah. oh. it's still magic to me. Right. I just did something just now that confused me. Okay. So uh, I don't know enough to tell where the one stops and the other begins. See, I'm finding ones from the group and from Nation Builder, but I don't have anything from OPA. Well, here, t I'll put it in the chat. What should, what should I yeah, say? Um, just say that's the uh, yeah. domain of the email that you promised or whatever. Right. Where's Vanilla? Oh. Opavote sent me um, my ballot. That's probably a good language, right? Um, yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Using language. this um, from address. Okay. Where's your tail? Oh, a, a like cat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I should actually, um, I should get up and go outside. I'm going to get up and go outside. These breaks you know, aren't long enough. That. Get up and just walk down there. there. No, it's a beautiful day. I know. You don't have to go out. Don't you, Vanilla? You're going to go out, too. Mm -hmm. You know what's weird is. Yeah, this is nice. All right. And windy. Windy. Uh, I don't know. This chat doesn't work so well. Man. Yeah. It's like a wait until the cold of night sets in before I move my car. I'm going to go do it now. <laughs>
All right. So it's been 10 minutes. Some people might still have uh, still be away from the computer, which is fine. Bill's pointed out that some, some folks have left, which is also fine. Uh, we have wrapped up our official business uh, for today. Um, you know, everyone who's a member in good standing will be emailed a ballot. Um, and Tom says the ballot email will probably be from no reply at opavote.com. Um, yeah. So from here on out, uh, we just have optional discussion. So if people, uh, have to leave again, that's fine. Um, but if folks are interested to stick around to talk about, uh, building the, the green party in Wisconsin, uh, you know, getting involved with your, uh, state party, you know, potentially organizing on the local level, basically, you know, however you want to get involved, then, um, we did want to make some time for that as well. And, you know, not just sort of focus on the business and the uh, presidential race, but also on, um, you know, sort of what folks were hoping to get out of this and how they were hoping to get involved. Um, so, yeah, um, I know before there was a little bit of discussion about how, you know, people wanted to get involved and, you um, things like organizing on the congressional district level, uh, stuff like that. But I, you know, do want to open up the floor if anyone has any sort of comments or questions to get the discussion rolling. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just say again that I think, uh, you know, right now we have a state party that is active. We have, um, active chapters in the greater Milwaukee area, in the Dane County area. Um, you know, we do have active members around the state, uh, but many of them don't uh, have an active local chapter. And I think, you know, particularly in this time, it, it is difficult to meet locally, but, um, you know, we still have tools to reach people who are in our state, in our areas, and organize um, over video chat and sort of other, um, you know, other online tools. So I think, you know, again, the idea of organizing chapters on the congressional district level, to me, makes a lot of sense right now particularly because in the, um, in the Wisconsin Green Party, we have space on our coordinating council, which is like the state decision-making body in between these membership meetings. Uh, we have space for congressional district representatives. So if each uh, congressional district had a chapter, then 
uh, all those chapters could elect a representative to the uh, state party. And I think that would be a great step towards getting more active organization across the state and, um, you know, also having a, uh, you know, coordinating council that's accountable to those, uh, to those congressional district chapters. So, um, those are just my two cents. Uh, would anyone else like to jump into discussion again about building the Wisconsin Green Party and, you know, getting involved on the state level or the local level? Well, I know uh, that, so uh, oh, pardon me. Um, oh, yeah, would you like to get on the stack? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, how do I do that? <laughs> uh, you can just say stack or, you know, we've been putting it into the chat. But okay. yeah, um, yeah so you haven't spoken too much today. So why don't you go ahead? I'll also have Patty on the stack after you. And, uh, all right. And, uh, here, I'll do this. Yeah, you can just go ahead, Eric. Oh, oh okay. Here, I was typing stack on the uh, chat portion here. I was uh, pretty much hoping to network with some people, you know, regarding what Green Party candidates are doing for fundraising. Um, I've taken a look at what we have to do in order to get our ballot signatures, uh, and it's not going to be easy with the COVID-19 situation. It's not as simple as going to block parties or festivals and collecting signatures from local people who live in the area. Uh, because we just can't do that. Uh, so the only practical way to do that is by mail. And that's not horrendously expensive, but it does cost a little bit. Um, to get all the registered voters, for example, in District 17, uh, to get that list would be $185 from the state of Wisconsin. They do offer that. Um, there are 31,535 registered voters in District 17. So if you think you know, how much it would cost to mail out postcards asking for signatures to that many people. That's, you know, not, again, not hugely expensive, but not tremendously cheap either. So if there are people I can network with to help me out with that, you know, that would be much appreciated. Thanks. And yeah, so another um, thing, which I totally forgot to mention before, is um, when you finish, it, it can be helpful if you say pass or over, um, okay, just to over. <laughs> let everyone know. Yeah. All that, right. Um, you know, right. so that we don't interrupt you. But uh, yeah, I should have uh, explained that before. Uh, so I have Patty on the stack. Go ahead, Patty. Hi. Uh, yeah, I would just like to. Um, say that, uh, as I mentioned in my uh, membership outreach committee report, that we do have an organizing pack that's available and that we will um, happily share with anybody who's interested in um, maybe starting a local chapter, but you're not quite sure how to go about that. We have some great resources for you. So um, please do, do not hesitate to reach out to the co-chairs or to me and um, we will, there, Jennifer's holding it up. She's prepared, thank you, Jennifer. Um, yeah, we want to help you and we need um, chapters, more chapters, local chapters across the state. So um, don't feel hesitant to just jump in there and we will help you in any way that you need. Pass. Thanks, Patty. Yeah, and also, um, Patty, if you could put your contact info uh, in the chat as well. Yeah, and the, so the membership committee, um, again, has been working on uh, materials for organizers. Um, and uh, as you know, the, the elections committee um, and Barb are very helpful for folks who are looking to, to run campaigns. Um, you know, we, we do have some resources uh, that 
we can make available to candidates who we've endorsed, um, including our database, uh, which has um, you know our our database of, of Green Party supporters. Um, yeah, and also the pandemic has made fundraising difficult across the country. Uh, you know, I know this from working with candidates and just sort of, um, you know, reading around and it's just kind of common sense that with an economic crisis, um, you know, a lot of folks are feeling less able to, to donate than usual. Um, so, you know, it, it does present some challenges, but there are also opportunities. Um, in a way, it's kind of a great equalizer. Uh, for example, some people have pointed out that it used to be uh, that sort of the, you know, corporate candidates had access to cable news and, and you know, they could look really shiny and professional up there on TV. Well, you know, we would have to make sort of more grassroots style videos. You know, now everyone is calling in to, you know, even if they're on TV, they're, you know, calling in uh, on Skype or Zoom from their house. So in a way, um, a lot of <laughs> that kind of mental barrier is being erased. And if people do take advantage of social media and do sort of get a grasp on these online organizing tools, um, then that can be a big advantage. Um, you know, in a way, having a meeting like this, for example, uh, in a way, it, for some people, it makes it more accessible. I mean, we know not everyone has the access to, um, you know, computers and internet, and that's a problem that we need to address, but, um, you know, it makes it so that you don't have to drive hours and hours to get to a meeting. Uh, and I think that's a good thing. So anyway, um, uh, I guess, yeah, the bottom line is definitely get in touch with us with, you know, whatever questions or requests you have. We'll try to help out. Uh, I see that Josh is on stack. So go ahead, Josh. Yeah, I just had a question. Uh, is that a, pro um, a proposal that you were saying to make the organization by um, congressional district, or is that just a, a thought right now? Um, I, I guess my, like, I think it's a good idea, but I, I'm also kind of concerned what would that would mean for like, you know, like a chapter like the greater Milwaukee area where we kind of are divided up into lots of congressional districts. Pass. Yeah, let me direct respond to that. Um, so uh, I think I think we can do both. And I think the Greater Milwaukee Green Party makes a lot of sense in that there are, um, you know, lots of people living close by in that area who, uh, you know, it seems like having a monthly meeting has been successful. Um, and I also think, you know, there are other parts of the state where that can be a lot more geographically spread out, where it can be hard to figure out, you know, should you organize a chapter on the county level, just on the, you know, city or town level, um, but you might have greens, you know, living an hour apart or more. And, you know, the question can be, how does it make sense to organize? So my thinking is, that for many places, um, starting with a congressional district organization makes sense because that encompasses a lot of people. And then um, as they grow, potentially they can form uh, additional chapters within that area. Uh, so you could, you could form more of like a county or city chapter once you have enough people, enough organization. Um, but I, I think congressional district is a good place to start for many people. And also um, the way that the coordinating council works, we have uh, congressional district representatives. We have representatives from each local and we have at-large representatives. So there's sort of 
a chance for representation and participation from a few different levels. Yeah, so I don't think it's like either or, or that one would cancel the other out. Um, yeah, so I, I hope that kind of goes to answer that question. Um, I can add to that too. Sure, yeah, and then we've got a couple of people on stack, but go ahead, Barb. Yeah, so the coordinating council has been talking about this organizing structure for a while, at least a way for um, the coordinating council to work on building parties, uh, local chapters and things. Um, after the fall meeting, we had our, um, usually our, we have an extra long in-person coordinating council meeting after each one of these meetings. And so we talked a lot about how to organize and how to work on that more. And this was the biggest um, way that we found that was important to us uh, to figure out how to organize. Uh, it didn't have to do with uh, taking away power from certain locals or anything like that. In fact, we hope that it would bolster locals um, and local involvement. And uh, just so folks know, if you have a group of like five people and you want to form a local, that's a good size to start a local. Um, I'd say three at, at the very least to, to work on that. But five people showing up once a month is a local chapter and that's fine to, to start with. Um, I'd like to see a lot more of those even in Milwaukee County or in Dane County. Um, and in, in some of these college towns too. So um, I'd like to see local organizing that's three to five people in a little group and then they maybe they send um, a representative to a county group or a district group. Uh, we can organize in many different ways, but we just figured we have these positions for um, the congressional districts at the coordinating council level if we could help those districts organize a little bit better, uh, that that was a good way for us to start. Um, so that's about it. Pass. All right. Thanks, Barb. Okay. So on the stack, we've got uh, Jose, Monty, and Jim. Uh, so Jose, go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, I just want to share a couple things of why I was drawn to the Green Party. It might be helpful for you, um, I don't know, uh, you know, gathering some data on what might be future effective messages. Um, uh, currently, um, I guess one of the things that I was really drawn to was the idea of ranked choice voting, uh, the idea of having your voice heard The idea that there is no such thing as a throwaway vote in a ranked choice voting system. That could be very attractive to people who feel like their ideas uh, don't mesh well with either party, that they feel disenfranchised, and that, um, you know, that there's a point of giving up. Why even, why even care about politics if, uh, if nobody's going to hear you out? Um, and... I know I'm, I'm personally not the most progressive on, on issues, but uh, I know that there are, is, there, there are things that uh, I do support in the progressive cause. So, so that is one other thing that is attractive, that the Green Party is not, uh, is not unlike people who uh, like the Democratic Party, but captures a lot of the good aspects of the Democratic Party. Um, and then perhaps another idea that if, uh, if these are really good ideas that the platform holds, there's no reason why uh, they can't be um, articulated differently to different de demographics, the same ideas, but messaged differently, delivered differently so that they can be well received. Um, that's just something to to consider, and I'm sure you've all already heard about it before. Pass. Thank you. Um, so next up we have Monty. 
I, I, I'm hardly sure where to start because uh, I've won, been wanting to see this happen more uh, in terms of the district organization. Am I coming through right, everybody? Uh, we're getting a little echo. It's not terrible, but. Let's get rid of it. Is it good? No. No. Uh, no. It's, well, it's fine. It's, it's not terrible. Just go ahead. Uh, thank you. Is the uh, point being, we have we whole districts of this state, state, and I mean congressional U.S. districts, that have one person representing them at a time sometimes, maybe if we're lucky, two or three, or it's only zero for a minute, because people usually step up as soon as they realize they're in that boat. But it's, it's uh, we need to somehow give resources to organizing at the district level, and I'm not sure which district level myself, but I, I, we got to have a way to support building locals. And even if we're not driving all to the same place, um, ultimately we're trying to organize things like door knocking and 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 petitioning, and and wow. that sometimes you know needs to be done closer to the ground. And so. Um, I, I've been a long an advocate for this, and I had no idea it was even going on. But we we need to support locals better, and forming groups of people and and keeping some continuity of membership uh, community within a district would be a really good start. And with this, it just makes it easier. It doesn't change the need. Pass. Thanks, Monty. Uh, okay. okay. Next we have Jim Young. Thank you. Uh, I guess I want to just add in that we Oh, could... we're getting more echo. Yeah. Uh, so, I don't know, Tom, do you have some solution to that? Oh, is it, is it me? I'll turn I don't out. know. I don't know if it's you. Um, here, I'll tell you what. I can mute yeah, everyone. I can echo too, so. Oh, you're better now, Jim. Go ahead. All right. Uh, so I want to just advocate for uh, trying to reconnect with some people that uh, used to be Green Party members in Wisconsin and that are still doing uh, the, you know, on uh, in the community work uh, for the issues that the Green Party uh, has been advocating for and that, you know, these local officials uh, that we uh, have uh, as members to uh, help them uh, and to uh, touch base with some of their supporters. Uh, and another way uh, to uh, look at uh, new membership and expanding that is uh, kind of scouring the, uh, the events boards at universities and uh, local communities at uh, uh, you know, some of the uh, homeless shelters at, at some of the uh, uh, places that provide community support. And, uh, and then different, you know, it's not my thing, but uh, you know, people of faith and the communities there that uh, you know, have uh, all of these uh, components of working within uh, their different communities and uh, the outreach to their members that are uh, working on the things that we're working on. So I think, uh, you know, if we can find a way to reconnect, we can get more people uh, to maybe participate uh, in our meetings. And if we move forward uh, with it, including this kind of technology for people to uh, zoom into the local meetings that, uh, you know, when we can finally get back together in person, uh, we'll have an opportunity to, uh, you know, have people join us uh, in those meetings when they can't drive. And then maybe finding some uh, coalitions of people or sources that do have the resources to, uh, to Skype in or to Zoom in uh, to meetings uh, that they share that, uh, you know, with their neighbors again. And, and you can have, you know, three or four people uh, joining in to a meeting from one site if, even if they don't have a computer. Uh, so, you know, that would be a good way to uh, work on growing uh, that participation and, uh, and giving us an opportunity to know who our neighbors are, too. Thank you. I'm done. Thanks, Jim. Okay. Um, 
So I don't see anyone else on stack right now. Um, so I guess uh, I will take the opportunity one more time just to uh, make an appeal for people to join our committees. So again, the more people we have working, doing committee work, uh, the more capacity we have to do things like offer resources for organizing. Um, so uh, I'd say, you know, particularly the membership committee and the elections committee um, can always use more people. Uh, we also have IT platform and policy, communications, uh, campaign training school and finance. So, um, so I will share that sheet one more time. Um, Yeah, and I think, you know, a lot of people have shared really good ideas, um, you know, building those types of connections, like Jim was saying, uh, you know, rank choice voting and, you know, outreach beyond uh, sort of your stereotypical green voters. Uh, I really like that idea. Um, so, uh, Jennifer says in the chat about, uh, you know, marketing. Um, so, yeah, and also, uh, again, we have the communications committee, which is, uh, you know, trying to expand our outreach and our, our message. Um, so, yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's been a long day, so if the discussion is kind of winding down, then I think, you know, that's absolutely fine. If folks have any uh, more burning thoughts that they want to get out there, feel free to get on the stack. Um, but otherwise, uh, let's see. Is, is Datsa still on the call? I see... Let's see, I see Dotsa in the participants. Dotsa, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, okay. Um, hey. <laughs> hey. Well, <laughs> um, I didn't tell you about this, but uh, since you are officially moving out of Wisconsin soon, I wanted to take some time at our meeting to honor you and all the work that you've done over the years. And, you know, you really, as co-chair and so many other things, you know, you kept our party afloat uh, this whole time. And, you know, I already miss you. And, you know, we're going to miss you a lot more. So hopefully, um, you know, we'll be seeing each other soon. Uh, but, you know, best of luck in Michigan, and, you know, thank you so much for everything that you do. Well, thank you. Um, it's so exciting to see so many people here today um, that uh, our party and our message is finally getting through to um, the people who I think can definitely turn this world around. Um, if it can be, we are the people who can do it. We're the people we've been waiting for. And uh, it, it just makes me feel so happy to see this many people um, working for a better world. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, all right. And um, so I think we're about uh, getting to the end of the day here. Um, and I know we still have some questions in the chat. So we will you know, be working to take care of all of that. Um, and uh, we have shared some contact info. Um, 
you know, just to make sure everyone gets their ballot, is able to vote, no problem. Again, voting will be open uh, through midnight Tuesday. Um, and yeah, just one more. Uh, if, Dave? Yeah, go ahead, Tom. So just to be clear on that boundary line, that means the entire day of Tuesday, people can vote. So the first second of Wednesday, the election's over, correct? That, yes, that is correct. Um, so all day, all day Tuesday, um, you know, will be the last day to vote. And then, you know, once the clock strikes midnight, at that point, we'll call it. And, um, you know, then hopefully get the results out as, as soon as we can. Okay. Um, so, and then Kurt has a question for me, but it probably would better go to Tom and Monty. What happens to the chat after the meeting closes? Do we keep the chat? Uh, yeah, it's automatic. I have that setting locked on so I don't have to do anything. It automatically saves it. And you okay. did get a choice to save it on your end, I believe. Um, um, not sure not where. where. Probably, yeah, the little three dots, uh, ellipsis. Uh, okay, well, we don't have to get into the details, but it, it seems like we'll yes, have it yes. saved. Um, the question about the final decision on delegates. And, um, yeah, I believe, you know, we have folks who self-nominated. We also have folks who accepted nominations. Um, I think that all has been recorded. Um, does someone have that list handy uh, just so we can double check uh, before we sign off here? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll go through and make sure everybody was nominated gets on the ballot. Okay, great, thank you. Just to be clear about people who were nominated, um, only those who accepted will get right. on the ballot. Um, and so by that standard also, I talked to all of the people who left and were nominated and um, Alex Brower said no and Angelito didn't get back to me. So um, we have to make up the ballot. We can't continue to wait on that. So. Uh, after this, Angelito will not be able to run any longer or be in the running for that uh, so that we, we can get to the voting part. So pretty much everybody else who either accepted or said no, uh, that was on the call. Okay, yeah. But, you know, even if someone is not chosen to delegate, they can still attend the convention. Um, so... Uh, it's, yeah, I think, um, you know, at the close of this meeting, we'll, we'll know who has accepted the nominations and that's who will go on the ballot. Um, so I've been notified there's still a couple people on stack. Sorry, I missed you. One was Barb. The other was McAllister's. Barb, did you have something else? Yeah, well... I feel like I, ha I should have some kind of a closing statement <laughs> for this long day. Uh, I really want to thank everybody again, particularly uh, all the folks who helped get this together. Um, again, I, I want to thank Dotsa myself as well. She's helped me on my journey becoming co-chair because I, I, I'm her, I'm the person who followed her in her her footsteps and her shoes were too big for for me to fill really <laughs> i think um and again because we're in, in the middle of this crisis i think it's really important for us to continue to stay very positive about what we can do and what we can change mm -hmm. a lot of folks are telling us that no this is that's just not the way the world works. We can't change uh, such and such. We can't have health care for everybody. Uh, we can't get somebody in office we actually like. 
well, that's ridiculous. It's all in the mindset. And um, to just go against the face of, just call it out for what it is and continue to move on and get the things that we need to get. Uh, that's really the important fight. And we're gonna, because we're in Wisconsin, we're in a swing state, uh, we're probably gonna get hit hard by the criticisms, uh, harder than others in New York who will vote green or in uh, California who will vote green. And we're also going to get a lot of folks um, here that are conservative who are looking for a place to go. And we should make sure that we're not denying them because they they had worn a red hat at some on some occasion or they um, or if they're uh, liberals that they wore a blue hat on some occasions. Um, we really need to make sure that we're very inclusive to those folks as well and keep an open mind to what people have to say, especially in this kind of a time when so many people are suffering, um, where there's a lot of righteous ang anger on all kinds of sides um, about how the, this crisis is handled, about uh, all kinds of stuff. Um, and a little bit of a plug, the Greater Milwaukee Green Party has set up kind of a complaint line slash um, social gathering. Uh, we had one last Wednesday for a couple of hours on a Google Hangout. A whole bunch of people showed up and had a great time talking about gardening and about all kinds of stuff, um, about how they're dealing with the crisis, about mu the music that they've started to play again since they've been picking up hobbies. So uh, we're going to continue doing those. And I'd like for anybody and everybody to join us on these calls just to stay social and connected. Um, social distancing may be okay for our health uh, physically, but it's terrible for our mental health as human beings. Um, and we need to continue to stay connected as much as possible um, until this is over and hopefully like go and get a little bit of sunshine out in your yard if you have one or out just <laughs> outside a little bit because it's very important um, just to stay healthy for ourselves. Um, like that old saying about putting your mask on before you can uh, put somebody else's oxygen mask on. So uh, I'd like for everybody to stay safe but uh, also definitely keep in touch. You all have my number and my email address and um, I can send out a message to everybody about the um, our social calls on Wednesdays. And uh, thank you all so much for coming and staying through the whole day. And with that, I pass. Thanks, Barb. Um, so let's see. We did have a couple others on stack. Um, so McAllister's and, and Monty are also on stack. I'll, I'll put myself on just to say a word of closing. Um, promise I'll keep it brief. Uh, so McAllister's, uh, go ahead. Uh, standard message from this, from this corner of, of the party. When campuses come back, we really need to start organizing them again. Uh, I'll keep, the, keep it to that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, uh, Monty, you're next. Yeah, originally I got on the stack because I didn't quite understand the topic at the very moment, but I am going to want to say anyways, just to confirm with us all, that the selections are those accepted by or for support by the Presidential Campaign Support Committee of the GPUS as follows, Holly Hawkins, Dario Hunter, David Rold, and the choice, none of the above, which actually means anybody below that on the rank. Am okay, I, I, yeah. Am, are, is that what we're gonna put into effect here? Right, yeah. All right. Uh, again, yeah, um, so none of Just the above. Just wanted everybody and me to be clear on it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so in a, in a rank choice voting situation, you can think of it as none of the below, right? So if, if you say, you know, this is my first choice, this is my second choice, but I don't want any of the other choices, I would prefer no candidate, then you can put none of the above third. Um, 
yeah. So, uh, all right. So I'm, I'm next on stack and yeah, I just wanted to, you know, echo what others said, feel very, you know, grateful and happy to join the group. Um, yeah. And also just a few special thanks, uh, <laughs> um, the, you know, the membership committee did a ton of work to organize uh, for this meeting. Um, so I wanted to in particular thank Patty, uh, Tom, Monty, Kurt, uh, and of course, Barb, uh, you know, for co-chairing and all that you do. Um, and also I just wanted to thank, you know, everyone who has run for office, you know, everyone who has volunteered, gathered signatures. Um, and I wanted to thank, you know, both people who have been around for a long time uh, and also wanted to thank all the new people who showed up, um, you know, and stuck it out with us and, you know, really added a lot to the conversation. Um, and, you know, I feel like I, I learned a lot just listening to people. Uh, yeah, so it's been a great meeting. Um, and uh, I promised I would keep my closing thoughts brief. So I'm going to keep it brief because some of you know I can go on and on. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, the Green Party has to be the party of solutions. Uh, you know, right now we're facing serious problems and we need serious solutions. Um, the two party system is a problem, not a solution. Uh, ranked choice voting is a solution and building independent politics is a solution. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, it's, it's a time to welcome people in. It's a time to be solution oriented and, uh, uh, you know, whatever we face going forward, um, I think we're on the right track. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think that's about all I want to say. Um, so if anyone else has any burning thoughts that they want to share, um, then uh, go ahead. Uh, if it's something that can sort of we can keep it between, you know, the officers and the coordinating council, just in terms of handling the vote. Uh, why don't we save that uh, for a little later? I mean, some of us can stick around and discuss those things. Um, but I think, you know, people have been generous to stick around for so long and I don't want to keep people for any longer if we don't have to. Um, so, uh, yeah, again, thank you all. Uh, I'll un unmute everyone so we can all say, you know, thank you and have a good one and enjoy the beautiful weather. Um, so thanks, everyone. Thank you. 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 I'm not going. Oh, oh what's the wow. dog? Bye, the dog. dog. <laughs> All right. Oh, on your ones. Bruce, say something. We want to see the dog. <laughs> wow. 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 What's the dog saying? Yeah. Time for a walk. This is Cooper. Cooper, say hi, everybody. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hi, Cooper. Do a lap. See you later, guys. I saw another kitty. Thanks, Bruce. <laughs> Bye, Jennifer. Thanks for thanks for hanging out all day. Yeah, I figured it was going to be a beautiful day, a first good day. And, uh, uh, <laughs> I, I think tomorrow is going to be nice too. So yeah, and, and, and we had forty. There's been forty mile an hour winds all uh, interrupting us all day. It was a day last week. It was a day last 75. It's only five four right now. Four. So you're not in this on the first good day. We already did or did already.
Yeah, it was very windy. I just went out and picked up yes. uh, my patio furniture. So <laughs> better yes. check on it because everything is blown over. Trash cans and... West Dallas has a severe thunderstorm for you, warning. Uh, 556 expires in three hours. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's just windy as far as I can tell. <laughs> I hope it stays nice. Oh, well, it's expired. I stand corrected. <laughs> so I, I'm guessing we're not going to have any none of the above. With well, wait. I mean, it's and if we feasible do, that none of the above could beat David Roll, that's my fear. If we do, uh, it's not going to simplify gonna, the math. The software is not going to handle it properly. Right now we got now we got now we, we got, need now human than the dams. The dams. <laughs> Was that Jeff? Was that Jeff? I said we, had, said we got more candidates than the dams. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> well, we also have less. We, we they started with uh, twenty um, team. Was it? I don't remember exactly. Yeah, our peak. We started, we started with seven or eight. eight. One, one promptly dropped, dropped, dropped off. off. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, he had yeah, my, my favorite, favorite approach. You know, if anything, we should probably applaud these guys because, you know, they're bold enough to get out there and absolutely, absolutely. At, at risk. And, you know, and, yeah, it's and, not easy. Yeah, I, it's I, not I easy to run for president. No. no. Although I'm glad that Kirk ran because now I can still say he's run, I think, every time since 1992. And uh, talking to him after uh, Nader smashed him good, that was, that was disheartening. Because I was like the only one talking to him. That was a disheartening part. And he said, yeah, I'll probably keep doing it. And I said, more power to you, bro. Somebody's got to give an alternative. It's, it's part of the way people look at that. That isn't as much the case anymore, but uh, at this point, he's got some uh, experience. I'm upset I can't vote for Kent. I'm upset I can't vote for Curry. Uh, I even want to vote for Chad. <laughs> yeah, so are we still live streaming? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, we should maybe stop yeah, that. We, yeah, we should probably okay. cut the live stream at this point. <laughs> <laughs> are you with us? Can you do that for us? I'll, I'll go. Oh, wait a minute. Am I muted? No. Oh, no, okay. Yeah. yeah, that's it's on a computer in the other room, but and I have not yeah. I have not babysat it, so for all I know it died an hour ago. It's no, it's still going. Uh, yeah, we're still okay. going there. I'll go yeah. stop it. Okay. Um, yeah, kill take it. me probably five minutes. I want to do it carefully. Okay. If he had done it right there, that would have been the last word to kill it. Okay. Uh we're heading out, guys. Hi. We look forward to seeing the, seeing the ballot, and uh, and we look forward to the next social. Thanks for everything. Thanks. Since I'm not working, Barb, I'll probably talk to you on Wednesday at four. So. Okay. So. Are there any other people here that are that have questions or? I don't yeah, know. we've got some silent audio only in here. Yeah, who's the 608 number again? Uh, it's, it's not for him, that's all I can tell you. 608. 669-9414. Yeah, it's not time to probably look that up in a second. Uh, yeah, that's me. Hey, hello. Hello, hello. Hey. Can you hear me? Yeah, that's, this is Reed. I'm the nine four one four number. Oh, hey Reed. I didn't even realize. Yeah, yeah I've just yeah, I've just been lurking, that? lurking and listening. I didn't have a lot to contribute today. I'm gonna been in and out. And it was good. What's your full name? What do you spell name, your Reed? name, Reed? Uh, my first name is R E A D, and my last name is Eldred E L D R E D. Sweet. Did I get it right? Oh, I don't have the computer up. I'm just oh, dialed I in. See it. Okay. We got it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh,
<clears throat> this guy's get the group mindset, I guess. Because I never trust my own mindset. It's handling too much all the yeah. time. <laughs> Yeah, you know, the only thing I was um, thinking about contributing today, but I don't want to take up the group's time on it is, um, you know, just thinking about the, the theme of the Green New Deal, you know, um, <clears throat> like, uh, it's like the Democratic Party kind of took the took the concept and um, made it grandiose and unrealistic, you know, like it'd take some sort of, you know, sweeping act of federal legislation to make it a reality. But just looking at, at Dane County in Wisconsin, you know, we have unemployment at, you know, 15, 20% places. It's probably going to get a lot worse before it gets better. And thinking, you know, just going back to the, you know, the, the, the green party, green new deal, you know, what the idea is, is to put people to work, you know, and uh, <clears throat> Lord knows we have enough work to do. And I, I keep thinking, wouldn't it be great if the green party could, you know, walk the walk and try to do kind of a localized, you know, just a real, you know, just a, a, as simple as possible, you know, have people pick up some garbage or plant some trees, you know, cash labor, you know, if we could get something like that off the ground, that was even a experimental project, <laughs> you know, even a small scale thing and just be walking the walk a little bit, you know, and show that we don't need, um, you know, the, democratic congressional delegation to rescue us you know we can we can do things on a community level you know that's what i was thinking about all day but didn't didn't have it together enough to really speak on the topic but think about it a lot actually um mike McAllister probably would have said something before he left because we just in the greater milwaukee green party voted to work on um, a Green New Deal task force for, for the Milwaukee area this year. So um, that it's definitely a really big, strong conversation that we're working on right now. Uh, and in West Dallas, where I am, I think it's really important because um, people could be, our grocery stores are full right now, but after people are out of work for a long time and the supply lines are kind of broken down, there's gonna be a lot of need for food um, that needs to be local food. Um, so working on planting those gardens this summer and making us a little bit more food secure um, and, and get that local, um, really that local economy back is gonna be vitally important to our community. So, um, I, I totally get what you're saying that it's not just the national thing that we ought to walk the walk about um, setting up these parallel structures while the government's figuring out that it's the best way to go. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's what it's all coming. Yeah. Just we got to plant trees. we got to pick up garbage, you know, that, and, and when people see us doing that kind of work, that's how we build a, a movement. You know, I, I agreed with the speakers that were saying, Again, like we've got to learn our lesson. We can't, we can't build this party running a presidential campaign every four years. I mean, if we should be disabused from that concept just by, you know, we thought there were going to be so many um, disaffected Bernie supporters jumping ship to the Green Party. And that, I mean, did that, I mean, I, you know, I, didn't, I don't have visibility on our nation builder account or anything, but I mean, I really did, did that play out at all. I mean, where, did our party substantially increase in membership through the, disaffected Bernie vote. I mean, we, you know, we, we got to build it locally and we got to do it with, with work too, you know, gardens, trees, garbage, you know, it's gotta be, we gotta be, you know, walking the walk in the dirt. That's how I look at it. I'd love to get um, in on those emails that, um, you know, the Milwaukee greens and Mike McAllister are sending out. I'd really like to follow that maybe contribute in, in so, Dane County. Yeah, I think there's, there's an uptick in, in everything. Unfortunately, when you look at something like uh, signing up on the website, it's kind of still a trickle, but it's a faster trickle. Um, and I, so I think a lot of the earning of the earning support comes from giving and offering, finding a way to give people something to do. And right now that's a little rough. Um, 
outside of this right here. But yes, we certainly, uh, the picture behind me is supposed to reflect the opportunity that we should not miss. Uh, Tom Stack. So, yeah, so Reed, um, I don't know if you're asking to be added. You know, we, we, we do have a uh, statewide discussion list, but it has different uh, policies. Uh, the Milwaukee one, um, we do what is, we do more direct ads. I can add you to the Milwaukee mailing list. We have people from all over the state on that if you want to. Or, or are you on it already? I don't think I'm. I, I don't think I am. I'm. I'm I get uh, emails, emails from Dave, Dave all the time, all the time. but that's, that's it. That's it. Do you wanna uh, give me? Is your email address easy enough to read over? Say over the phone, or do you wanna? Um, I don't know how. What the other way to do it would be uh, to let's see. Like, can we text back and forth? Why don't you just put it in chat? No, he's he can't chat because he's. Uh, oh right, 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 right. Hey, um, why don't I shoot it to Dave? Is this Mike? Mike, Mike. Oh, this is Tom uh, from Milwaukee. Oh, Tom, Tom Yeah. Yeah, Tom. I have your email anyway. I'll just send you my email again. Okay. Yeah. Make some really obvious subject line, and if you, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. I I just really like to see some work days. You know, plant trees, pick up garbage, all that stuff. I'd love to get involved in that kind of thing because I think that's where how we really get some visibility. You know, call the papers and you know, get dirty. <laughs> well, and we, we could we could do it with extra strong distancing. You know, like stay ten feet apart and still get it done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey guys, I gotta go. I got kind of a bad echo on the line, but it's nice seeing all you again and have a have a good spring stay safe we'll uh, catch you later eh? yeah, thanks Reed. thanks you too yep see you, see you later you, Reed. bye okay. was there anybody else on the line who had questions for folks who are still here uh keevan If it's the same, if Kevin, trying to remember, I think we, Curtis, we had somebody join really early, and I thought it was Kevin with one E. It it had two E's. Uh, I'm not sure how the how the name is properly pronounced. I I said Kevin before, but I don't know if uh, if that is accurate. Okay. Well, if, yeah, I mean, we have the, it, it, are, is there some concern? This might be an interesting, uh, we could do a breakout room or we could, um, are we trying to get kind of a powwow going? Is that the point? Uh, well, it's almost five o'clock and I'd like to get going myself. So unless there's any other questions, um, I'm, I'm about ready to leave. Yeah, I just wanted to be social for a moment since I was going to be here anyway. You know, like, uh, but yeah, I'm not looking to stretch out any business and get started on anything. Well, then, yeah, election's not going to, I'm not going to, if everyone wants to quit, then I'll. All we have to do I'll, at this point, Tom, is upload the list. Okay, so I'm just going to, we'll just go with what I decided, huh? I mean. I guess I pretty much trust you to be as meticulous as any of us can be. Well, except I, I, I was somewhat liberal on my yeah, well, discretion. <laughs> I think that's fine. I still okay. trust you to be more meticulous than I. All right. Okay. Fair enough. So, uh, the other yeah. issues we have is the is there a bylaws question? And if so, I need all the language. And you know, how many contests are they? And I mean, there is work. <laughs> Uh, and I'm sort of thinking maybe could we just have a working meeting tomorrow morning and uh, 
get this well, and we also have to well, set up a an election for the delegates now too right we have more delegates to be selected than than we have positions of fill am i right so i'm i'm willing right now just to kind of because you had asked to write some text for the for the voting page and the email great i'm willing to crank that out right now cool um My because i i do think it would be ideal if we could send ballots out today i, um, I titled this one 2020, 2020 green party united states, united states primary for wisconsin description the ranking of candidates for the nomination to apportion the delegates to nominate our candidate for POTUS, we can add another line and add uh, a, another section to the election and, and have them both be in one or they can be two separate elections. Well, actually that'll cost ten, Tom another 10 bucks, so I shouldn't be volunteering it. So I actually, I took the link that you had. I'm getting I'm some echo now. Um, yeah, me too. Maybe it's me. So I took the link that you had sent. Yeah, it's better now. Um, and I'm now in OPA vote. It says election management editing, uh, presidential. Yeah, it won't let me save my edit till it gets a list. Sorry. So I Are, set up the. I set it up, but it it won't let me save it until we put a voter in. You don't know that it. it I, I just think try. It, <laughs> that. Well, it doesn't let you start the election. No, but it, it wouldn't let me save it. I saved my initial settings, but when I went in and, and filled out all the settings, it won't let me save it till we upload. Well, the, the real test would be oh, the log my out. My voting date stop date is wrong. Log Sorry. out, log back in, and see if it saved it. All right, so I tell you what. what? I can in the G chat. I can share what I've written so far. Sure. Okay. Who do you stop date must be before the expiration date of nineteen April. You can extend that expiration date with another ten bucks. So if we start it today, it's over tomorrow. And oh, that's, well, that's not good. I mean, we already yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's what's stopping me from saving this edit. Holy cow. They charge you? This place is... That'll be another 20 bucks. Oh, my God. Well, actually, no. Okay, so the stop date... It has to be before... It's just... I guess if you don't fill it in, it's tomorrow. I'm not well, cool with that. Well, if we have to pay 20 bucks and we have to pay 20 bucks, I mean, we already told people Tuesday, so. Yeah, but Tuesday is actually 30. So how do you want to deal with that, Tom? I can reimburse well, you. Guys. Well, you're not going to, uh, it doesn't charge you until you start the election. I. I've, well, that's supposed to be any minute, though. <laughs> I thought. Well, I'm just telling you, it didn't charge my charge card. Uh, oh, I oh, think. Oh, I think no. I think it asked. It asked me for all my charge information, but it did not. It it was pending, and then when I started the election, it said you will now be charged. Oh, I see what you're saying. Did we commit to it starting today? Well, yeah, I think we just have to go ahead and spend the money. They snookered okay. us. Um, yeah, it is kind of an the, ugly surprise, thinking that you can put whatever you want in there. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, I think it's important to, to work through the details. So I see what Dave pasted, so we have that, but I'm still unclear on whether or not there's a referendum in this election. Is it just what? Oh. So the delegates? We, we need to be clear. So, so the, yeah, I mean, the, the delegate thing is another ballot. Mm -hmm. No, well, it, they call well, it a It's contest. better if we put them together. We can bundle the two elections, and then we can throw in a third one in for the uh, referendum as well. 
Yeah, if we if we can do that, that would be ideal. Like all in one email, one link, you know. Yeah, well, and it would come in three separate sections, so it would be clear what was going on. It's all one ballot with three sections. Yeah. Pages to be more clear. Okay, so so we got a list of delegates, and are we supposed to rank choice vote the delegates too, or? Yes. And and what? Might as well. Okay. And what total number of delegates? Uh, Um, we have six choices, and um, so we can have four winning and two um, alternates, pretty much. Okay. So that's interesting. I don't know how we handle the alternates. Well, they'd just be ranked, and then, like, if unless none of the above wins a spot okay. and then we just wouldn't have an alternate, I guess. <laughs> we haven't tested a, like a four winner um, election, unfortunately. Um, I think it'll be fine. Well, I think in the worst case, we'll have all the ballots so we can figure it out, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, wouldn't they have to rank choice four of them? And then whoever's left is going to be the alternates? Six. There's six of them. Um, right. But they if could you rank, rank choice, choice four votes. They could rank choice all six. If they, you know, if they want to. Or they could rank choice one and then put none of the above. Or they could rank choice three and don't put none of the above. There's all kinds of combinations. Mm. Um, so, can someone give a little introduction to what a delegate is? You know, because each little section um, has a, a head or a description. Here's a good introduction. The delegates will represent Wisconsin's vote for president in the July convention. Okay. Oh, I was going to get so much more wordy, so thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I'm signing off now, so I'll talk to you guys later. All right. Bye, Jeff. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Bye, bye Jeff. Jeff. Bye, Here. Jeff. And we can let people know that we have four delegates as well. Is there any kind of a term for the delegates? Is does it last for a year? Or? Oh, it's till Saturday, uh, July, whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh, so it expires after July. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, if we just select the top six, they all win. But we that's how we find out who gets to be the alts. Okay. Yeah, we don't yeah. want it to kick anybody out and take their vote. Oh, it's perfect. I I almost want to be on the list, but I don't want to bump anybody on it, so I'm not. So Monte, can you share your screen in Hangouts, and I can? I assume your law, your. Uh, uh, which part of my screen are we looking at? Are you are you doing anything with Opa Vault right now? Oh, uh, that's on my. That, that, that machine's only in the Google Hangout. Right. That's why I'm hearing I'm hearing even more. Echoes. Yeah, there's probably the ministry mic on my probably on my monitor that I can't use when I want to. That's causing the problem again. And I can't turn it off because I can't turn it on. I know. I'm just saying that I could be watching. If you could um, change the screen sharing on Hangouts, then I could be watching your OPA vote work. Yes, you could. Okay. Let me do that. Because while up there, I don't even have to pick which screen. <laughs> oh, on. I still have to pick it. <laughs> uh, are there any questions for me before I? Yeah, yeah we got the um, uh, referendum.
question. We need all the wording. Do we do that in an email somewhere or? Dave's got that. Are you, are you getting all this extra I'm, weight? Yeah, I'm sort of working. Um, let's see. So I'm, I'm almost finished with the text for the presidential or the text for the email. Um, whose contact info should I put there if they have any problems? Oh, with the with the ball with the ballots themselves. So yeah, yeah I mean, you, you can, have any you problems can, voting? Yeah, you can just put my phone number in there, um, and or email. You can use the yeah any email of mine, the Greens email, or the Gmail, the T S R O D M. I think it might be be good to have Monte in there too. Oh no, he's working, so, okay. All right, well, I'm sending all this text over to you anyway, so you can, you know, put any fish right. yeah, on yeah. it. That makes sense. What's your phone number again, real quick? 414-678-9200. Uh, and you're putting this into the chat? I'm just about to, yeah. Okay. Oh, I've got it saved. I think I'm um, just deleting that date. I think um, uh, was the name Nero also self-nominated uh, as an alternate. Oh. I just realized I got to tell you something. Um, I have not stopped the recording of this meeting, so I probably should do that right now, correct? Sure, yeah, I mean, we yeah. don't really need to record any, any further. Okay, so let me click on stop. <laughs> 